I'm recording. And I don't know where the recording even goes. This is my first lab that I'm holding for myself. I've jumped into some people's over the weekend and they were fucking boring. So I thought the Moxie Entrepreneur ladies can do better than that. Oh, yes, we can. So um, I don't know if it's just going onto my hard drive. And if it is, my hard drive's pretty stacked. So it's not going to stay there for very long. Now, I, my first, I'm going to have guests all day. And my first guest this morning um, can't make it. So I'm not going to sit here wishing on by myself for half an hour until my next guest arrives. So I need somebody to jump in the hot seat so we can banter. Come on, ladies. I can see you. Christian, Joy, Naomi, and who's this random person that has just joined? They are invisible. They are incognito. They're not even saying who they are. Is it Austin? Austin, do you want to jump in? Come on. Come on. Mindfulness, mindfulness meditation. That's actually why I'm not prepared this morning, because I lay in bed doing meditations. Yeah. Because who doesn't want to do that? Okay. Talk to me in the comments, people. Is anybody there? Hello, hello? <laughs> I'm going to stop recording in a minute, because it's just me, like, talking shit. Hello, anybody? Right, I'm going to have to sing to you guys. Is there anybody out there? <laughs> well, I run the Moxie Entrepreneur Facebook group, and you guys know you're all in there, but for anyone else. And uh, if this is how today's going, I put a dub smash video on um on before saying that I was going to have to sing if this didn't go well and I can't sing for shit. So hopefully somebody's going to jump into that seat because you know the thing with social media platforms, right? Everyone has their own has their own sort of thing and Periscope, which I tried to love, but it didn't really work. And that's just you sort of sitting there and getting hearts fed to you. And it's just weird. Austin's gone, I'm talking shit, and he's just like, yeah, out of here. Hi, Stephen, digital cat herder. Do you want to come jump in, Stephen? Because my um, I'm doing a massive blab all day, and my first guest has bailed on my ass and isn't coming in. Oh, hi. You know what? I've got four other people here that I know. No one else is talking to me but you. Maybe they're off making coffee. Do you want to jump in the seat and have a chat? I've got coffee. It's Australia and it's early morning here. So, and this is my first blab. First blab. Come and tell me about your digital cat herding, Stephen. Just here to watch and listen. Oh, okay. I'm trying to rope people in. Alison, I see you arriving. Hi, Alison. Come on in. I know it's not your turn to talk yet, but do you want to come on in? Because my first guest bailed on me. Hi. Jump in, sweet cheeks. Now, because this is my first blab, I, I was watching some on the weekend, and they were just so boring. And I was like, yeah, we can do better than that as Moxie Entrepreneurs. Um, I actually don't know how to drive this properly, so apologies to anybody if I um, – screw up. I don't know how to get you into the seat, Ellie, if you want to come into the seat, but it would be nice to have you in there. Oh, short sale with Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Homes for sale. Real estate success. Okay. Yes, we have lift off. Jen, Jen, come and jump into one of the seats. You know you want to. I'm not quite sure why it's taking so long for you to join, Wendy. I don't know if that's normal because this isn't, none of this is normal for me. I'm not quite sure what's happening. Oh, Alison, yes. Oh, this is making me feel better that I've actually got some people. I'm like, right, now that we make my day. Way too loud. Oh, oh, you know what? 
I've got to put my headset in. I forgot because oh yeah, yeah. Important. feedback. Yeah. Hi. Welcome. It's so funny. I saw that you guys were doing this, and I was like, I want to go, but I didn't know if I had time. And I'm at Starbucks, and is it too loud? Is it okay? I'm by the street right now. You're in the. St what are you doing? Hear me? Okay, it's not too bad. No, no, you're good. Oh, good. Yeah. Hi. Good, good. Oh my gosh! So Thank nice you so much. You. I almost forgot my sunglasses. Aww. I know how you doing. You changed my world. Oh my god. God, Bronwyn, I'm so in love with you. You're like one of my biggest heroes. I'm all like, oh, I want to try your calculator soon, too. I'm all excited. I've been too busy, uh, yeah. like, marketing, and I've been, like, so busy recently. So I'm like, it's like a totally new world with, um, now that I have a course done, you know? So it's great. Oh, uh, yeah. So for anyone not, um, who doesn't know who we are, um, right. I'm Bron from the Moxie Entrepreneur and Brand Moxie. And I run a course called So You Think You Can Launch. Um, and Ellie's on my course. And Ellie, your course, tell everyone about what your course was. So I, um, I'm a psychic healer and intuitive life coach and and I basically created a course for people who want to go on Periscope and use their, um, uh, you know, beautiful healing skills to teach the world and put it out in, into the world through Periscope and um, with Periscope too. So, yeah, it's been going pretty good. Uh, excellent. You could add a black course now that, that this has come out as well. I'm super excited to start using Blab too. I, I think I want to start doing like weekly classes on Blab. Yeah. I would say use like Google. It's kind of cool because people can still come find you too. So it's kind of awesome. Yeah, that's the thing. I think for me, it's um, it's opening it like Google Hangouts are a bit annoying, but for me, this is opening up a to a new group of people as well that um, that wouldn't normally find you. So that's what I like totally. about it. And it's just so random, but I was watching some on the weekend to get across the platform before today, and people were having like, I mean, it was for social stuff. It wasn't for business building. This is a business blab. I haven't done any hashtags, actually, I realized, but I'll fix that. Um, and people were doing like 48-hour blabathons, but sleeping on the camera and just Whoa. like just going over. And then by the end of it, they had nothing to say. And it was just so weird. Right. I'm like, why would you even do that? I don't know whether they're looking to pick up and trying to be cute in bed or something. But I was just like, it's just so weird to me because for me, I use it to connect with people. And when I did, um, when I did the timetable for today, I did it so I'm uh, doing five hours, which is mental anyway. And then um, having people on because that's what Blab is. It's about having other people on and sharing. It's not just a monologue. It's not just somebody um, spoiking their shit, basically. Buy my shit. It's about, yeah. you know, community and sharing. Yeah. And if you happen to have something that you can plug, then that's great if it's contextual. So, yeah, that's why I like it. I did my first blab last Wednesday, and it was yeah. with two other psychics we had one person coming into the the last seat and we were each giving a little reading and it was crazy oh, nice. there was like 50 people on there and it was like all these different people it was, there was so much energy but it was really oh, yeah I love so there's a lot of different ways to use it you know and really so many people i, I think i got booked when i you know when i did that because there's so many people on there oh that's so, amazing yeah. yeah it's a really good it's just like periscope you know you can really utilize it in a way where you're getting that whole no like trust like super so, yeah yeah awesome. exactly exactly yeah. so what is the best thing for us to do when I'm doing well oh I think I've got <laughs> hello <laughs> hello are you in there I can't Someone. see you in as a seat who is in there someone's up oh Tanya's coming in Tanya's in but it's not showing me that I can I, I can't see you basically think, Tanya. Oh, so. really? Oh, sometimes that happens if their reception's bad. Cause yeah, I learned a lot when I did that first. Um, Deb's here. Hi Deb. Hi, Come beautiful. on in Deb. Oh. Yeah. I want to see you. Hey, yeah, my uh, Australia basically has third world internet. So you guys might have rubbish internet on your, I mean, it's the same. 
yeah, crazy. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Um, so what do you think, like, because you've done a Periscope course now, Ellie, and um, what do you think now that you've used Blab, <laughs> this is putting you on the spot, but what do you like better? Yeah. What do I like better about Blab? Well, it's just totally different. I feel like this is more of a, um, for the people that really, because I've met some people that they don't like Periscope because they're so, they're not attached, but they're just, the way some people are wired, they really like that more webinar, like having your list and coming up with what you want to do. Oh, can they not hear us? Yeah, I don't know why. But that's probably, because um, I keep saying to Joy, so I don't know if, if the text shows on the recording, but I just said to Joy before, um, come on in, and if she couldn't hear me, that is probably why I, she didn't. I think it does show on the recording. Pretty sure it does. Okay. Um, I would use Blab more as like a forum. So, so Periscope's more like, one. I'm going to control this. I, basically, Periscope's more like the, uh, the, I'm going to just give you a little tidbit of what I do and kind of market it a little bit and be like, kind of just like, hey, hey, this is what I do. Okay, bye. Yeah. So like, I just promote and um, give little, like, little bits of value. But for this, oh, here comes Deb. Yay. Yay, Deb. <laughs> so Deb's also like, on my course. Yeah, I know. And, I love um, that. Hi. She's. She's got a Facebook course. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Good, how are you? Good. Yeah. Deb, do you have a a headpiece? Do you have headphones Uh, or like a little mic? It might help with the feedback. Yeah. yeah, She's got like a big kick-ass mic. I want to get a lapel mic so I don't have to like wear the headphones because they're not the best fashion accessory, are they? Yeah, Uh I know. But I hear with with that sort of a coming out blah 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 yeah. what did you say what's coming out with blab so basically be careful with your mics because if it's coming out of your speakers instead of into headphones with like a headpiece um then you're going to get major feedback all right so that was thing because our lap it was our first blab ever last week and we had yeah. just like this we had three people just like this and um, this guy comes in typing, being like, I can help you. I'm a Blab expert. So we like, we, we welcome him in the seat. And it was so funny. He just like taught us all this stuff. Like, you know, make sure you have this because there was a big echo. And I think it was just Blab that day. But, you know, he taught us basically everything we need to know. And it was because we were like, I don't know. <laughs> and he just was like, okay, here we go. This is what you do. Yeah, his name was Craig. He's super funny. So I think you can like go under each of our um little like um profiles and see the recorded blabs I, I yes you can i've seen that it's I think under it, replays so you can so feel free to go in there what, and find mine oh, yeah, we're going to have a look. <laughs> want to see yeah he might I'll have just, some good tips in there i don't really remember all of them but i yeah, just pieces and uh what else did he say make sure you don't have another tab open that has blab on it or something like that a couple things that could have cause feedback but oh uh, yeah yeah so that's some little couple tips nice some blab tips. thank you mm-hmm. that's excellent so i just realized i wasn't following you so now i've followed your ass and deb oh, yeah. am i following you so yeah. everyone that's on here so if you click on our um links and you can follow us and there's also a thing to click and you give can follow props. on twitter as Yay. well Give props, give props, give props. So I've just followed both of you. Cool. And um, for anyone that's new to, because I mean most people are new, you can click to give props, yeah. which is what I'm just doing to Deb there. But you know what? <laughs> I don't know. That thing just makes me feel weird. It's like um, I know, it's like a periscope. Measuring. I'm like, hey, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yeah. So, so you can you go? Girls- you loser down there, Ellie. I'm going to give you some. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Good. I haven't got my other mic on. I'm just using my computer mic because I'm lazy today because I'm procrastinating because we're moving. Oh. Yeah. So you're moving oh. to Napier, are you? Yeah. Well, Havelock North, <laughs> Napier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Like it's 20 minutes from Napier, but I don't, I don't like sort of Napier hasties. I shouldn't say that. It's a horse day. <laughs> But there's so many nice vineyards there. That's what I did when I went there. I just drank loads of wine. <laughs> well, actually, we've been talking about having some business retreats down there. Some of the girls from up here want to go down there. So 
I'm quite excited uh-huh. about that because I'm going to have actually, I'm finally going to have like my own area, my own office, my own recording area. I'm so excited. Nice. And a nice. swimming pool. Is it your puppy's job that's taken you down? No, my job, really, I, which is my job. business. Well, because I can work from wherever I want. So, <laughs> so, so, so you decide to live there because you want you could work from anywhere. You just like yeah. right, we're moving. Yeah, so we, we've always loved the Hawks Bay. So we've just like, okay, we're going to go down there and we're going to live. And because he's got like his law degree, he's got some connections with law firms down there. So he's going to try and you know get into one of those, which would be really good. So yeah. yeah, but because I can support us, so we'll we'll just live off me for a while. I'll retire him for a couple of months. <laughs> oh, lovely! That's so, so nice. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice having a business that you can do from anywhere. I just love that. I just yeah. love it. Yeah, I, you know what? One one thing is when I started my business and when it got to the stage where it could actually bring in an income. I was. I just got to the point where I was like, you know what? I couldn't work for anyone else again. I just, you know, I, I've like I've thought about it and I've considered it sometimes. You know, when it gets a little much sometimes. And yeah. I've, I've just thought to myself, <laughs> once every couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, Look at and I'm like, she's so pretty. Hi, Tanya. Hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> but yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't go back to the nine to five, and I couldn't go back to being told to be at certain plays at a certain time and yeah no could you work for anyone else again no i'm actually unemployable i've been fired from my last couple of jobs because i'm such a shit employee i (laughs) am i hate it no way you're kidding yeah Really, your way, and it was the best thing that could have happened to me and um yeah because it set me off on my entrepreneurial journey but sometimes when times are tough or, you know, when things are just like, oh, it'd be quite nice to have a steady income. But then um, when it's raining on a Monday morning and I'm lying in bed and thinking of everyone else on the crowded, stinky train, I'm like, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. I love about being an entrepreneur is um, being able to set my own work agenda based on my body clock which is really what screwed me up as an employee because if you're a bit hungover and you don't feel like working then you still have to work (laughs) yeah and now if I'm tired or if I can just stop and take a break and then I can work till three in the morning and that just so works for me just love being able to be my own boss I I can't do hours like that with kids but you know (laughs) yeah (laughs) when I first when I first started I ended up doing the night shift and was just working through till seven in the morning. And then I was like, this is so antisocial. So I've stopped doing that. But sometimes I work till two or three. Yeah. 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 Tanya. Hi. Hi. How are you guys? How are you? <laughs> I'm dressed up for you. Oh, you, um, you look so pretty. Although my, boobs, my boobs want to say hi more than anything. but. <laughs> 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 it's I'm not like, that kind of show, Tanya. <laughs> okay, there we go. Hi, guys. <laughs> it's like when those um, olden day movies where they had to have like a modesty thing or something. Exactly. Just make that up, maybe. Right here. <laughs> you want to tell us what we're doing? Work. I'm not safe for work. NSFW. Yeah. But, but Tanya, it's hot there, right? Eh? It must be really hot. <laughs> Did you right? say before? Oh my god! Have you got a margarita? It's martini, martini. darling. Oh, martini. martini. It's seven thirty at night. Seven thirty. So oh yeah. Time. You look so sophisticated. This is this sophistication is simply for our talk. I am never. Yes. Just- as a matter of fact, yeah. here's what I threw off in order to come on your talk. Oh, there you go. I got those sweatpants. My this mom is what I'm wearing on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to see mine then. I know. I'm like, I'm gonna... My okay, mom's like, I'm going to wear it. You shave your oh, legs. Nice. And I, go, I go, shave my legs? Are you sure that's what I need to shave, mom? <laughs> it's a weird interview. I'm gonna go ahead and shave my legs then. <laughs> Do it. Oh, uh, Allison, we see you now. You couldn't oh, see me before. 
I've never seen you before. Maybe it's because of my uh, Wi-Fi. Now you see me all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see you. Maybe my internet's going to crap out as well. Well, I'm in the middle of the Pacific. You guys are in the middle of the ocean too. So probably just start. Hey, you, you got, so Tanya and Alison, you're in summer right now, right? Or the end of? Yeah. yeah the end of. Fall time. Yeah. Well, well we're going to steal it from you now, okay? Yeah, you can yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I know. She's like, no, <laughs> no, do it. We have like the year round <laughs> guards and we've got, you know, snow. All right. We got pumpkin okay. spice. I we won't fall for pumpkin spice. Yeah, we don't get pumpkin spice shit down here. So funny. <laughs> but you I do actually, get um, so, yeah, There's that. There's that yeasty spread. Yeah. So um, I have a feeling that today's um, blab is going to go off on tangents because um, hello, ladies online. Um, I know. And so we've got some, we want to pull some gems out of today as well. I look like I've got bloody, um, talking about a tangent, what do you call it? Where those babies get it? Like. That orange thing. Okay. Oh, you're a mother. Deb, what's that thing they get? Jaundice. Jaundice? Yes, I look like I've got jaundice. Or no, you look green. <laughs> you look, is it a green like facade? Green. <laughs> you know what? If anyone has solved this today, I will humpy hug them until they die. My freaking camera is just on my Mac camera and I can't switch it for some reason to my Logitech camera, which makes me look way prettier. So that's why I wanted to change it. And I'm like, I can't, I can't work out how to do it on Blab. I'm so so are you telling me, do, does the camera make a difference? Yeah. Like seriously? Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, if I could okay, I, right I need now. to get a new camera. That's You're the problem. It's my like damn camera. It doesn't make it's a difference in how you look, Ron. It makes a difference in the quality of the video, though. But yeah, you're which makes me pretty. No <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, is, is my quality of mine okay? Can you guys yeah. see me clearly? Yeah, <laughs> and your natural sunlight as well, which is, it, yeah, you look, you look pretty. I know. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> and now I've got to get um, Ali some because she's losing. There, now you can see me. I know. There we go. Oh. Oh. And I, I can't see you. I just gave you so many ways. Now, what? Did, okay. The question of the day is: Why the fuck are you an egghead? Why have you not got a picture? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got a picture. I know you do. I see a picture, but it comes up as an egg. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you have got a picture. Why is it not coming up? I don't know. Maybe it's the wrong size. I only just did it. I only just did it when I set it up. Oh, okay, just now. Okay. Hey, look, I've got three followers. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> As you can tell, I just created my Twitter account. <laughs> so feel free to follow me. <laughs> oh, oh, you know. I think now hey, Jim. that um, I think that uh, – this is going to revive Twitter. Like, that's the only reason I'm going to use Twitter because you know, Twitter just fits me, oh. really. Oh, who's this nice guy? Jaren, like, Jaren, we love you because you're giving us props. Yeah, I've seen you. Yeah, and he's so really so fear about it, too. I like that. This is such right. a nice so procrastination. What's the topic for today? What's our topic? Today is, uh, other than me being an egghead up the top there. <laughs> Which is very important to mention. Um, <laughs> how, to grow, yeah. how to grow your business without losing your mind like that? Wow. Um. <laughs> I've already lost it. <laughs> I think I think you have to have lost it a bit to be an entrepreneur. You can't be sane and an entrepreneur at the same time. It's you awesome. really can't. It really is one of those things that you've got to be crazy to work here, and here is home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Come on, and take a seat in Crazy Town. Yeah, I agree. I think um, if you knew everything that you know now and you know how hard the hard times are going to be, would all of you still have set up your own businesses? Yes. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. because it's that freedom. Well, actually, at the end of the day, is it freedom? Is it freedom that we've got? I think if you, you know what, when I first started, it, I was trading the hours for dollars kinds of things. So it was like being in another job, right? Yeah. I, I was, except I had a whole lot of different bosses and, you know, you had, still had to do crap, right? We do. Yeah. But now I think I've just learned over the past sort of year is that in order to change that and in order to up my game a lot, I've got to start putting my knowledge into courses because that's where your revenue is going to start coming in uh, in a in a more effective um, way. So yeah, I'm I'm um she's just left us. Well, clearly, you're rather rude, rude Ronald. <laughs> turn the light on. You're rather rude. I'm talking and <laughs> being <are> walking up. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I couldn't see. That's okay. That's okay. Courses. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, so I think, um, or even like, like I'm running a workshop at the end of this month, which is rather scary but exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I think doing that when you're teaching sort of one to many and teaching what you know, that's where you're going to change your lifestyle rather than literally just have a job where you work for yourself yeah definitely definitely yeah, and time freedom is the big thing like and you know what it's really weird though because it's breaking past um blocks like I still like being really hands-on in my courses and eventually well that's not why you do courses but eventually that will slow down a little bit I suppose I don't know but then I'm sort of like it's still way more freedom than doing dollars for hours but then you know how some people sell the utopian view, you make a course and then it's really all hands off and it's just passive income? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I just think that sometimes we're sold a dream, which is what Tanya and I are going to talk yeah. about soon as well. And it's just bullshit. Like most, like the guy that does the four hour work week, for instance, he doesn't work four hours. Shut up. You know, like he works <laughs> so freaking hard, but he just doesn't think it's work because you're enjoying what you do. So, I've never worked so hard as working for myself, like pulling ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous hours and probably getting paid minimum wage or less than minimum wage at some point if I was going to like, you know, extrapolate yeah. out my revenue. But I wouldn't exchange that for the world. And it's just, I think when, when you first start coming into entrepreneurship, the, what you think it's going to be and, and the dream that you kind of sold or the dream that you just think it's going to be is totally different. But even though it's totally different, it's still amazing and I wouldn't change it for the world. I think if you put the work in, then it's going to pay off. But yeah. you've, got a whole lot of, you've got a whole lot of learning curves before it does. Sarah's here. Hi, bitches. Hi, Biatch. Oh. Yeah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. Oh, there's Ellie back again. Really? I feel like I should just leave if I'm just not even being seen. I can just watch you guys. <laughs> no, you don't know. Allison, can you know. come back in? Yeah, let me just try that real quick and then I'm going to get going. Let me try. Hang on. Okay. Um, this is, I've only got one cup of coffee and I'm on for hours, so I am actually going to have to. Um, I am actually going to have to leave and make another cup of coffee. I'll just mute myself and let everyone talk by themselves. <laughs> can you see, see me now? Works, there you I can you see are. you clearly now. I can see you. Yay. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we've got a question down there. Where are you ladies from? I'm from New Zealand. I'm from right. New Zealand, but I live in Melbourne. And we're going to steal. What? <laughs> are you from New Zealand? Where's but Tanya? I'm from, from, from New Zealand. I'm from New York. No. Okay. I'm originally from upstate New York, but I'm in Sorry? Hawaii. I You're thought you were Aussie. Me? Yes. Oh, my God. I'm about as Kiwi as they come. Oh. <laughs> but you know, you know what oh. would have screwed you up? My 10 years in London. Oh, no, you don't have a London accent. You sound like an Aussie. Sorry, you just do. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a fight oh, word. For, for you Americans, that's like us telling you you're Canadian. You sound like a Canadian. No, right? no, no, it's no, like telling like a Canadian, Canadian they're, they're American. American. <laughs> <laughs> a New Yorker, it'd be like you telling me I was from New Jersey. 
or like Boston or something. Ah, <laughs> Boston. Yeah. I'm I'm literally from the Jersey. island of Manhattan. There's nothing more disgusting than New Jersey. So <laughs> when somebody goes, oh, I used to live in New York. I lived in Hoboken. I'm like, that's a whole other state, and it's New Jersey. Go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even speak to me. Do not speak to me. So true. So true. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> well, originally, I'm, originally I'm from, um, I was born in Zurich, and then I'm in Hawaii now. You were born Alaska. in Zurich? Syracuse. Oh! <laughs> like, Almost the same. I'm, yeah. Fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Just a posh. New York. Oh, you're an orange man. You're an orange man. Right. One of those. Cool. Oh, I can hear my when you're speaking. I'm like, eh, I want a martini. Awesome. Sorry, guys. Awkward. I really want a martini. Oh, I'm going to get off so Sarah can hop on. She wants to give her Boston accent. I've got Coke. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so Eva. Eva. Be amazing. Yeah. See you later. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye. So, Sarah, do you want to jump on now and give us your Boston accent? I don't even know what a Boston accent sounds like. Oh, and then we're going to. Don't they all sound the same? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to talk about fakery and douchebaggery and entrepreneurship or something like that with Tanya because it's got to stop. It's just got to stop. Fuck, like I'm really getting water. Give me one are minute. You talking about, are you talking about those people that, like, promote the certain – way of life how entrepreneurship is like oh you only have to work an hour a day or yeah. four hours yeah. a week and, like a, and the million dollar lifestyle that they all have in, in under you know a week and a half and yeah um and you know can, can i get started can i yes can i, can I let it you go kick it you kick it off because i am lots the same about that too <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so as i told bronwyn there's, there's a certain amount of trust in the groups that we're all in, so I'm not going to mention any names. I'm not going to point fingers. But there are several people in several of the groups that I have belonged to, and I've left a bunch of groups and I've joined new ones, so nobody will ever know who I'm talking about, um, who, when I first subscribed to them two years ago, were touting the millionaire you know, lifestyle that they had that they had just graduated from college, and since then they've been making you know, six figures a week. And then this past fall, they were in one of the groups and they were saying that they couldn't figure out how to get their business off the ground. Mm -hmm. And now they're back to offering this millionaire mindset thing again. And I feel like, you know, there is absolutely nothing wrong with being broke as an entrepreneur. You're supposed to be broke. You're either starting from a place of broke or about to invest a whole shit ton of your money and lose it or, you know, whatever. That is entrepreneurship. It is a risk. It is a, it's, it's a spending frenzy, even though everybody's like, keep a budget, keep a budget. There's so much stuff coming at us at all times and we don't know what we need and we don't need in the beginning that we're investing our money in our futures, essentially. Why would I give you my, why would I go into debt for your fake story. Why should yeah. I go into debt for your fake story? Yeah. And why, moreover, what kind of greedy bastard are you that that's what you want? But you, you know, know what it is? It's like, you know, the big thing is how low do they think about themselves? Like, if you have to concoct a story because you don't have anything to say, because no matter at what stage you are, at, in your entrepreneurial journey, you've got something to teach somebody, and yeah. it, they they don't have to be you don't have to be like Muhammad on the mountain, like getting all this massive thing. But you can teach people along the way. Like I'm not a massive raging raging success, but I've got a strong background and strong um, skills that I can teach people. So <laughs> these people, if they don't back themselves enough to know their worth, that they actually have to invent something, that's the fucked up thing. That's yeah. and, you know, I saw this really well-written copy the other day. And I actually had a bit of copy envy, and I was just like, because I'm being very <laughs> open about the, my disdain of the six-figure marketing. It's just fucking lazy, and it's not creative at all. 
And somebody said, if you're um, in this copy, I actually wanted to find out who wrote it because it was really good copy. And they said, are you giving people the stink eye because they're succeeding and you're not? And I actually really examined my motives. And I was just like, are you just jealous? And I was just like, I thought about it. And I was like, I'm pretty honest with myself. Once I realized things, I was like, nah, I'm not. It just fucks me off. So it's just knowing the knowing your worth and putting that out to the market, not having to create a story because it's just crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, you there's know, something to be said about having a brand story. You know, there are people who brought themselves up from nothing who mm -hmm. were you know earning six figures lost their six figures and picked themselves up by the bootstraps and are now massive successes that's a great brand story i was yeah. bored at work and i created you know these little dolls that's a great brand story <laughs> my child is i don't have children i have cats because i'm a spinster but okay my cat <laughs> spinsters for the I, win my, <laughs> <laughs> You know, my cats were throwing up all over the place, so I invented, you know, removable floors. Things like, you know, yeah. great brand stories are all around. I graduated mm -hmm. from college with a, a marketing degree, and now I'm a seamstress. Any of these things are great, but the I went from, you know, homelessness to six figures in, you know, mm -hmm. five hours, you know, in, a, in the back of a Mickey D's bathroom on my cell phone. It's just ridiculous. Stop it. I don't. Yeah. And the thing is, can I just? No, go ahead. Sorry. Can I just say I've actually seen people. Oh, hi, Kevin from Ireland. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've just seen people um, actually promoting. I told Bronwyn this the other week that there are people out there that are teaching you as entrepreneurs. If you go into their coaching, and they're saying to you, "Hey." If you're still working your full-time job, that's okay. Just snap photos on the weekend, post them during the week and pretend like, oh, you've got this lifestyle. I'm like, I just could not believe. And, and yet here they are, these same people preaching authenticity, be your authentic self. And I'm so sick of the word be authentic and be genuine when it, it's so overused. Yet, like I consider myself very authentic I just hate to say it because it's so cliche and so many people are saying that yet this fake lifestyle has been promoted and and I know someone that's gone through a course with a well-known person never got that they don't even know what they've they've, they've signed up for really she's she's so confused and I'm just like man I just want to take you under my wing but she's invested so much money in this other person that now she's got nothing to actually get her course going and I could have so helped with the whole funnel of that but yeah you know it's just, anyone who yeah. says that they are authentic is like anyone who says that they are honest they're fucking liars you're authentic you don't need to say I'm um, authentic just like yeah somebody yeah. who says I have integrity does not if you do have integrity that's not something that you need to like say yeah. yeah but you're not gonna or vulnerable you know like there's things go around it's like um because we all are in the same facebook groups and and you see stuff and, and people see something work for that person and then they all start doing it like um excuse me i'm going to be vulnerable now it's just like oh fuck off you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> or, this is a really vulnerable post for me just do it and people can judge whether you're being vulnerable or not and i think that <laughs> it's just yeah one one are you scared to just do it like I'm pretty open I mean, my life is like you know if I'm doing well I tell people if I'm not I tell people and um you know I think it's just being yourself and I know that sounds so trite and so cliche but you don't need to label yourself before you put yourself out to other people because if you are being your shining yourself that comes through they can make their own judgment on that I found yeah, I agree. That there's something going on in these groups, and I don't know if it's the 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 women of the world uniteness of it or what, but I've noticed that a lot of the women who come out and say, you know, I'm really vulnerable right now, and um, I'm having this terrible time, and I've done this thing, and I've done this thing, and you know, I've given up my job, and I've put my children into, you know, I put my children with my parents so that I can concentrate full job full time on this job, blah 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 they actually wind up doing really, really well. And yeah. I'm thinking to myself, okay, 
part of it is because a good deal of us are are you know bleeding hearts and it's oh my gosh if you've done all of this to get to where you need to be for your family then let's support you mm -hmm. but on the other mm -hmm. hand it's like mm -hmm. maybe i'm just putting this out there and i'm not judging you but maybe you need to get things in order first before you launch into entrepreneurship maybe you need to have yeah. a day job i don't know about that actually <laughs> because I think for me, entrepreneurship is the fastest way to develop your. Oh, you still. Oh, I think there's a lag. Sorry, I, I don't know if I just cut you off then. No, no, you didn't. Oh, <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that that it's not worth the risk. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is that when you start stripping yourself naked, not just in front of people, but literally. I sold my house, I sold all my belongings, I put my children in care, I did this, I did this, and I did this so that I could launch this thing. You know, it really does scream, not necessarily, um, not dedication, it screams desperation. It's oh, that to me is desperation, yeah, yeah. Right. I think it also I depends on what happens. Stuff, I need you to buy my stuff so I can get my kids out of, you know, out of care. How dare you? Oh, I've actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that actually. Yeah, I have seen something quite mm. similar to that, and it repulsed me. I was just like, yeah. And there's there's this chick that put on. Um, I broke my laptop this morning. I spilt water on it, and I'm doing a Kickstarter to do my laptop. And I was like, I need a new laptop as well. Like, <laughs> don't beg for things. Don't my beg online. Two hundred dollars. I mm. literally, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I went through my house and sold things off at one dollar in order to buy a new laptop when my MacBook Pro fell face down. Okay, it didn't fall face down. Wow. One of the things I just that cannot I just, I just cannot believe I, I can't say I've seen anyone doing that. I I just can't believe that anyone I mean it's like I did. I saw somebody do it because they needed rent money. And so they did it so they they were um a co-founder in a group and so they put up a like a, a gofundme account and <laughs> for rent yeah for rent because they need to move or something because they were having a hard time with their roommate and something so the whole thing and then all these people donated money um that not speak. that's a totally huh? different thing i think i think that that really does draw on the power of the communities that we're all creating and we're all a part of to say to somebody, we're all in this together, and frankly, I am, you know, at the end of my capacities, and I need some help. That's a different thing than I'm at the end of my capacities, and if you don't buy my course right now, I'm going to get evicted. You I know? don't know. I should, I should try it. I just... <laughs> I, I just see Kevin says he's going to try that. I, I think we should all, all give it a go and let's see what happens, yeah. eh? <laughs> buy my course because I need to buy food for my kids. <laughs> I've seen it happen. I I have been, in the past year and a half, I have been watching so, and you guys will notice that I have never pitched a product in any of these groups. And that's on purpose. I'm watching everybody because this is a part of what I teach and I don't want to fall into, I, I don't have, I don't have a tangible product. I am my product. And so I don't, I can't go into the groups and just say, you know, Hey, buy me, but I am watching what is working for other people and I am watching what other people are doing. And it's really really important to me that people are not getting taken advantage of and there's so much conversation happening behind the scenes with me and other people because i'm not going to blow you out of the water i'm not going to you know i'm not going to embarrass you in front of people i will offer you help for free and i will pull you out of your hole if i can but i'm not going to do it in front of other people and i'm not going to say you know i'm living in a box mm -hmm. and i just had to you know i just maxed out my credit cards so that i can continue lurking in these groups you know? well, yeah. if, if you did that though those people that do say oh can you buy my course because I need to feed my kids I mean does do you not then think to yourself well what kind of course is it I mean what's the quality if no one else is buying it, it I mean it's kind of like the whole social proof thing that we need right mm -hmm. I mean if you've got no one doing that and yeah. no one buying it from you then those that you're asking to buy it you know 
They're not kind of. <laughs> Kevin just said it's a child care <laughs> course. <laughs> so true yeah. you know what it is I think I think it's um people have no idea about business and you can't build a brand on pity you just can't you cannot you can't build. not at all not a strong yeah. brand anyway no no like no. You, women, you watch, women in that, but they have come out as powerhouses they have not come out with their pity story their pity story is a part of their brand story this is right. where that I was, and this story. is where I am. Yeah. Let me but you know what I the difference is, Tanya? It's not a pity story. It's a triumph victory story. Right. There's a massive difference. Right. And you can right. be vulnerable while you're in the middle of something. Like, I've come out in smaller groups that I'm a part of just saying I'm just not coping at the moment. Like, rah, rah, rah. But I'm not. I haven't got my hand out saying, but I can't pay rent. Like, you no know, way. you just don't do that. Right. And no. I think when you come out and you talk about your backstory of, and it's the hero's journey right. and I overcame adversity to get to this point that I am in now. And I'm fucking proud of myself. I just did this and I can help you do it as well. Like I can understand that. But the reason why people go on about their pity stories and their selling is because there's actually been studies done at universities. And if you have, um, if you do your pity story and then you go into your spiel, spiel, spiel about yeah. your product, you're more likely to get sales. They've done they've done studies on it. So Absolutely. that's why people so, do it. I, I, I use my story. I mean, I was $85,000 in debt. I was a freaking financial wreck. And I figured out how to get my way out of it. And now I teach people how to do that. So I don't think that, like, I was on a blab last week. And I said something about, you know, dyeing my hair blue so that I could make eight hundred thousand dollars like Kim or Luna and somebody was like did you know she was on food stamps I was like you know so Who like so many that? times <laughs> that story been told it's been told a lot of times yeah okay People remember Can I that? Say about that since we're naming names in this particular sense and I'm not I'm not talking out of school at all Kim or yeah. Luna the thing that I love about Kim or Luna is that she is a success story you know mm, I yeah. love that about her but yeah. the thing that I did not appreciate that she that she sort of did recently is she came out with the entire story. And I didn't appreciate that she didn't give the entire story from the beginning. So the entire story so is that she did actually start a group before and she did have a product and she did sell product before. And she had been a part of the MLM groups before and she sold, right. you know, right. multi-level marketing. She'd sold things before. And she had a certain amount of money to be able to start to do her Facebook sales and things uh, like that. Yeah. It also cost yeah. her almost a hundred thousand dollars to make that eight hundred thousand dollars between the advertising and the affiliate marketing and all of this other stuff. She spent money to make money. It wasn't simply. I mean, she is a fabulous, fabulous Facebook marketer, and she runs an amazing yeah. group, and she really is. A part of she, she she I really do believe that she walks her talk. I really really do. Yeah. But I think that a lot of people bought into her story before she came out and said she did a she did a webinar a few weeks ago where she said, okay, do you want to know my entire thing? And she opened up her books and she showed everybody this is how much I spent mm -hmm. on advertising. This is how much I had to give to affiliates. This is how much I spent on copywriters. Wow. This is how much I spent yeah. on web designers. So the entire thing she did, she was like a queen, you know, comes out and looks beautiful in full regalia, but you don't see how many people dressed her, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. understand yeah. I give her props for being open about that as well, though, because you know what? She she could have just kept that story and not come out with it. But for me, yeah. even though she didn't come out with it at the start, which, you know, actually opening up your books like that I've got two schools of thought on it one is I'm sick of hearing about how much life coaches make so I actually don't give a shit but the other thing is opening up to that because the purpose behind it wasn't to sell was it it wasn't she wasn't selling anything at the time it was to um to say hey if you're struggling then just keep going you know what I mean like that to me makes yes, that an no. exercise worth doing I don't mean to be cynical at all. And again, I really, really, really do like and respect her. 
And this is not something that I wouldn't say to her face. So I, I really don't feel like I'm speaking out of school here. But I think also yeah. a little bit of getting ahead of the curve. You as a public figure will never be able to hide everything. And when you have to start hiring people, those people will start talking about being hired by you because your name is a big thing for them. So it may mm -hmm. also have been her getting ahead of the criticism and saying, Here, here's my books. But the thing is, yeah. opening up her books also shows you what kind of work it takes to get there. So it's, yeah. you know, people could see it as her trying to get ahead of the story and you know doing damage control. Or you can know that it was damage control and just say, but she did just give us the entire recipe. So this is great. Yeah. Do you know what? It, I, I don't think anyone should have to open their books to prove anything at all. In yeah. fact, you know, even when I get to six figures, which I will, by the way, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and say, I'm a six figure business. Let me show you how to do this because yeah. it's, it's not me to, to do that. Why does it become okay to just oh. money like that? Everyone I does it because I do were, it, but I that's what I do. But you're so, a yeah. that's different. I, it's, it's different, like, yeah. Your yeah. credibility, yeah. Like, 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 your ability to make right, and also like I, it, it makes people more comfortable. Like, if yeah. I can say this is what yeah. I made last year, and then I was talking to someone today, and she's like, Well, what do you put aside for taxes? I'm like, Well, this is what I did. You know, you know yeah. like, Texas. actually, actually <laughs> Texas. Sarah, Sarah, that's a really valid point. Is because you're teaching money, you kind of need to be there yourself. And it's kind of like I saw this video the other week of this lady. Now, she teaches you how to reach your dreams and, and make your goals happen and, and your dreams come true kind of thing. Yet here she was <laughs> in this video in this dark, stony room. And, you know, and she, I'm sorry, but she looks so miserable herself. Yeah. I would not be attracted to work with someone like that because I'm thinking – if you're going to teach me how to reach my dreams and goals, how, why aren't you doing that for you? Because I'm sure that's not where you're at right now. You know, so well, so you do need something. You know, you you do need to have done it yourself. For example, like with me, I mean, I wouldn't be teaching people how to, you know, do what I, I teach them if I hadn't already made myself a full-time business, which was only ever meant to be part-time, by the way, but yeah. just grew um you know and I wouldn't be teaching people that than myself if I hadn't done it because you you know you got to have that credibility behind you before you start out on that right and um, but yeah back to the sorry back back to the opening books thing um I don't think anyone should have to do that because I don't think I'd ever do that I sh I would never even discuss you know the money I'm not going to say hey I earned eight hundred thousand dollars yeah but you might yeah. say this is what I spent on Facebook ads and this yeah, is what yeah, I mean. I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I don't mean that she showed us and everything and how much she did, you know, how much she deducted for her husband being an employee or anything like that. That was not what she did, but she did. Right. She, 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 um, she enumerated her costs in order to right. yeah. arrive. And at, I, would I would do a launch. I would do a launch reveal, um, and I'm going to do a big launch soon. And I will do a launch reveal. Um, I'm not quite sure if out to everybody, but I'll do it definitely to my group. And that yeah. will be, this is how much I put into it because it's about the launch, which is different. But I'm certainly not going to say, and people can work out how much you've made on a launch just from working, working out what your launch cost is and how many people come on board. But for me, that's a totally different thing because that's, yeah, that's not my income. That's not my money. It's not my yearly income. It's not my thing, which like if you, if you went to a dinner party, right, and you sat next to somebody and they just sat down, they were like, because they do this because they're wankers, like, <laughs> <laughs> made six figures last month you'd move you know what I mean like you wouldn't right. sit there you'd be like jerk so why is it okay <laughs> online like why do people do that online it's just crazy and especially I not still, I can understand totally if you're a business coach and again it's still a little bit gauche not not a financial coach present company but, accepted yeah. of course Sarah yeah but yeah if you're a business coach if you're a financial coach if you are even even if you're a lifestyle coach a certain amount of, of, you know, of dropping numbers is to be expected mm -hmm. and is necessary for your marketing. As a life yeah. coach, I do not want to hear shit about your money because you're saying to me, your life is money to me. Yeah. Not your life yeah. is important. Not how can I help you. 
it's how can I make money off of you? And let me show you how to make money off of other people's misery, other, off of other people's lives. My life is not monetizable. So can you guys say what? Six figures giving and giving and giving. You didn't. You took, you took, yeah. you took. Now stop gloating about being a taker. Yeah, and, and you know what say, it is? Um, oh, sorry. I, I was <laughs> just going to say, I just see what Jill's um, put there, and she said that money has always been a taboo topic, so there's good reasons for disclosure, but it isn't always genuine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree exactly. with that. I think like, kind of like Tanya's saying, there, there are time, there's a time and a place to, um, you know, to, to talk about y- your income and, you know, like with Sarah and, um, but I also totally get what you're saying, Tanya, that there are people out there and, and they're promoting this big lifestyle at the same time they're taking trying to take thousands off others, you know, to get to, well, to aid that lifestyle, mm-hmm. isn't it, effectively? But I do, in saying that, I do believe there are some out there that do, you know, that, that do give you the return if yeah. you, mm-hmm. right. do you know what I mean? But I'm also with bronze and the parties I'd be out of there. And that's the thing, it's, it's <laughs> genuineness. But it's also, um, it's the outright lies which gets me. And and there are well-known people that uh, spout figures and then they're in another group and they're talking about different figures. And that to me just, it just ratchets me off. I've left so many Facebook groups now and I've got about five or six that um, I'm still a part of. I just... I couldn't deal. I've left some big ones, and I just better not leave mine, or I'll hunt your ass and <laughs> punch you in the face. Right. Um, I didn't even know you were Sarah. Why would not you me? Why are you the around me? I'll put it up right now. Yeah, put it up in the thing. So, and if anybody has got an opt-in as you come on board um, to have a little chat, if you've got an opt-in, or if you've got a group, or if you've got anything like that, <laughs> haven't tried to live without oxygen. Try to live without money. Yeah, it's hard to live without yeah. money or oxygen. Um, yes, but, but Kevin, you don't talk about breathing, do you? <laughs> I just breathe. I'm during this conversation. It's true. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> just, you know, I, just, I breathe more than you do. I'm the breathing coach. I'm the six figure breath coach. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a lab, coach. lab coach and I charge $5,000. <laughs> Because I'm an expert so, I've been using it for I, I didn't realize exactly how this was going to go, but I did um, only come to the realization that Bronwyn meant for me to be here today and not tomorrow. Oh. Because it's still <laughs> Tuesday for us. And she asked me to be here tomorrow, this morning, which was last <laughs> night for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bronwyn and I are in the future. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys what I'm – the power of perception. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, I was not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me oh you're wearing God, like the worst shorts ever, or something like painter shorts. Um, this dress does not fit. Oh. It's not even close. <laughs> this is my sofa. My luxurious space. <laughs> you see the paint chips on it? Freaking oh, awesome. Nice. nice. <laughs> Tanya, I love you. I think you're freaking <laughs> awesome. And this is water. Is it water? Water. These pearls are costume. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. And my nails look That's like I just came film. home from a hooker fight. So <laughs> you came home from where? A hooker fight. I had I had a hooker fight. <laughs> I was like, bitch, I will scratch your eyes out, yeah. bitches. <laughs> so when hey, people Jill, are presenting, Jill, I think it was actually their perfect yeah. lifestyle and their perfect props and their perfect videos and their perfect la la la. Just know. That their shit is undone because they can't fit into it. <laughs> that is, that is, their hair so still has the tag on it. <laughs> and they water out of my Are you kidding me, it? That they got for free because it was a promo. Friggin' <laughs> awesome. So in the future, when I sell you something, 
or I, I tell you something, you should know that I'm authentic and I have integrity. <laughs> <laughs> or that I'm wearing a wig. It could happen. It could happen. Oh it was my the God, wig. That, that, that wig. That, yeah. That one. That's that brilliant. Awesome. Brilliant, brilliant. Hey, brilliant. you're normal, <laughs> Tanya. You're actually normal, just like us. You know what it is? I think there's going to be a backlash against the perfect glossy hair and the photos on, you know, plastered all over a website. It's just, hey, hey, hey. You no? Know? Hold up on the nice I'm, glossy hair stuff, you know? <laughs> I'm going for that. <laughs> but it's just, it's so many. My hair was glossy for a second there. Yeah, it was I, beautiful. Oh, God. Jill's like, Jill's like, you spoiled it. I didn't, Jill. I didn't. Because next week, I'll have different hair, a different glass. <laughs> And a different dress that still doesn't fit me because I gained 25 pounds. Yeah, I quite often. Don't you worry, honey. I will always, always have something to surprise you with. If you, if you look like that and you put on 25 pounds, holy shit. <laughs> I look like the side of my house. Again, remember, you're only seeing me from here. Ah. So the rest of the dress and gave myself some breathing room. My boobs and my knees are together right now. <laughs> They're making out. That's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, Ke Kevin, this is Come the funniest thing. We've got to read it, Tanya, with that part. What's that? <laughs> oh, Kevin, this is, a, this is going, this is an eight hour blab. So we're just in the first hour. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> we're not drunk yet. I've got groceries. I've got groceries being delivered halfway, halfway between. Um, Hi, Lisa. And there's wine coming. Hi, Lisa. Hey, oh, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Is... Hi, Lisa. Yeah. Wait. Uh, yeah, I can't even spell that. Wait, wait, wait. Drink it tonight. Oh, you should drink another one. Drink it, and it spells out better. It doesn't. Look, it, it pronounces what? itself. Better. I can't even have a drink because it's what Wednesday lunchtime, and that would just be inappropriate. Okay. So. Oh, oh, I'm not if you were a financial person, isn't it cocktail time at all times, Sarah? <laughs> I don't know. I'm drinking, more, I'm drinking ice water with lemon because I ate too much frosting last night, and um, I need to cleanse my my body. <laughs> lemon, <laughs> I ate my lemon melts fat, so you'll be fine. Just melt it. <laughs> yeah, lemon. ice water with lemon. You if I drink forty glasses, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa agrees. She agrees that, that will totally cleanse all the frosting <laughs> guilt away. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, and that's the most important part. As long as it clears the guilt, right? We yeah, who yeah. cares about the actual stuff. It's just the guilt we want oh, to get rid of. I still do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, maybe we do, but you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I know frosting. I'm gonna go get a real drink now. Hold on, I'll be back. Okay. Oh, Here's my card. What, what, I think I'm on. Am I supposed to like talk about something at eight? I think that's the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. You, it's your time now. What, what was um, I going to talk about? Something about money, but I can't remember what the topic was. Make my money. Oh yeah, oh, I know. Kevin, we, do, we do have topics, Kevin. Um, the Roman, we do have topics. Do you have topics for us. Yeah. What, um, I just I tell you what's happening. Okay. Yeah. So what's happening now is Sarah is talking about how to make more and stress less, but that actually wasn't what you told me. I couldn't remember what it was. So I just put that in there. Um, and then <laughs> Christian is talking about how storytelling can grow your business. And we've got Joy talking about get the skinny on your feminine personality type for business success. Adrienne is talking about sell like you mean it, and that's probably enough. So I'm going to two. What did I say two for? Oh, so I'm not I'm even meant to two. be here, right? No, you are. You're perfect. Everything's <laughs> going to unfold perfectly today. It's just fine. Right. It's just great. As it should be. Um, so what issues do people have um, with money that I can help them with? Is there anyone who wants to jump in with their questions? Does Maybe anyone want to jump in the hot seat? Yeah, let's do that. I got, who wants to jump in? No matter what I do, why do I look down? It's so aggravating. I, no matter what I do with this camera, I'm looking down. But I really am looking at you. So don't think that I'm like smoking joint. <laughs> <laughs> what I look like. My eyes are like down. How to make more money. Stop smoking weed. Yeah, <laughs> stop <laughs> spending all your money on weed. <laughs> 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 
Um, <laughs> so maybe, maybe talk about, um, okay, I'm going to be totally honest. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I, I haven't done oh. my taxes ever. <laughs> ever? I've been in business. No. So what yeah. happens if you don't? Like, I don't know. Because I, don't know. I think you have to go to jail or something. Yeah, but we don't want to be in jail. So do your taxes. Yeah. I'll have to do that. I'm going to get a yeah. bookkeeper because you know what happened? I So I got a um, I got a bookkeeper. I've got an accountant and they charge me money and I've met, I've got zero. And people are like, what accounting system do you use? And I'm like, zero. It's amazing yeah. Yeah. if I used it. Um, yeah. So I put in – I went – because I just hate my accounts. I'm, just, I'm not that great with money. And so I went to my accountant and I was just like going to the girl. I had to go back twice and they were charging me money. And then mm -hmm. they were like, so this is how you do it. And by the time I got home and then months passed and then I'd be like, oh, I can't remember how to do it. So I'd have to go back. And then I was like, can't you just do it all for me? And she was like, no. So um, now I've got 18 months worth of accounts that I've never done. <gasps> right. Do you know that you could get like massive penalties, eh? Well, yes. It depends on where you are. Like here, the penalties um, actually aren't as much as you would think. It's kind of weird, but it's not about that. It's how much energy is being used um, on that in your. <laughs> yeah, no. Sarah, Sarah Wesley Snipes went to jail for not paying his taxes. Well, no, I mean, I'm not saying I want you to go to jail. <laughs> like, your shit up. What I'm saying is that so much of your energy is going to that that you don't realize and it's yeah. causing you to not be able to make more money it, it, yes it's there what, you know it's there it's, it's yeah lurking it's like it's like having a black cloud over your head and even though you're going out in the sunshine it's still right over your head is raining on you yeah it's a money block it's definitely right. a money block and i think you know, like it's like if you don't know, if you haven't done your budget and things, well, I, I right. set budgets and then I don't stick to them. But and like if you don't, if you don't know what you're making, what you're spending, and what you owe, guess what? It's still happening. Yeah, it's still fucking happening. So you can hide yeah. your sand and pretend that it's not happening, but it's still happening. Uh, Lisa just said use spending plans. You know what? I make budgets and then. Yeah, I don't really <laughs> stick to them. And then I got this um, automatic thing, and then I don't know what I did with it. And it was like, and because it, I actually find it quite interesting because you use payments for everything, and it right. does like it shows you everything that happens um, and what you've spent your money on. It's quite mm -hmm. interesting. A lot of mine goes on food and booze. That's where my money disappears to. So what, eating out and drinking. What What would really be eye opening for you is to look at what you made in the last three months and what you spent. Yeah, everything. <laughs> like do Plus it. Plus a little bit more. Yeah. I need to, you know what? I'm going to just get a bookkeeper. I'm just going to say, mm. come in. Because you know, I can't do it by myself. And I keep saying, right, I'm going to do my accounts. And then I was like, yeah. I don't even know what And I'm if you're 18 long. months behind, there's no way. And you know what? It will take you a long time. And you can get somebody who's really fast, who's not yeah. that much money, and just have them, like, do the 18 months. And, yeah. and then you'll know what you owe. You file, you know what you owe. You you will have to pay interest and penalties, but you can make a payment plan. At least you know. At least it's not yeah. like this, oh, my God, I might owe $40,000. You don't know. Do you yeah. know if you owe forty or ten? You have You don't know. You have no, you have no fucking idea, right? No. Right. No, no idea at all. But you know what? Like, and the, okay, I could get arrested for saying this. So if anyone on here hates me, you can just dob me in. I haven't paid GST either. <laughs> but are you GST registered? Yes. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, Kevin's like, I'm, I'm recording this. Kevin, <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to, you going to blackmail her? <laughs> yeah, it's really bad. He's recording it. So, I, yeah, I need to get it sorted. And I was like, right, I'm going to get a bookkeeper. And then, because if I just go, I don't think you can just go, oh, I didn't know. I don't think oh, they'll believe me. Uh, There's no excuse no. for that. Yeah, no. they, they say that ignorance is no excuse for breaking the law. Especially when it comes to that, taxes. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, honey, yeah. you're going to have to pay up. I mean, I know. <laughs> trust me. I had to pay $55,000 of taxes last year. Wow. Oh, my God. Hey, hey Bron, you know what did I say? The, I've actually got like the sugars now. 
Bron, the, the day I hired a bookkeeper to take care of everything for me, because I hate accounts, um, that it just changed my life because yeah. I'm just like, can you just reconcile all that? She does that once a month. She goes and does the reconciliations, does the GST. All I need to do is send it off, and that's the easy part. So, yeah, oh. she, she does everything. It just it 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 will change your world, and just takes that. Yeah, and it's, it's not just, a lot. You know, like it, it's probably only. I mean, because you have everything automated. Like you, you all your money mostly comes in through PayPal. So it's not yeah. that it's not that complicated. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like um I think I'll I get my own stuff because well. <laughs> I know how to do it. So I can't I have a hard time justifying paying somebody when I know how to do it. But um my VA has someone do her stuff and it's like a hundred dollars a month. But wow. yeah, but get a bookkeeper, don't use an accountant. They'll charge like right, right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean they charge me ridiculous <laughs> amounts, and I'm just like, well, what did you actually do? You don't even do anything. I haven't done anything. Yeah. Um, get a kid. <laughs> Child labor is much less expensive. Yeah. I'll get like I'll go to the school and say, "Who's your brightest kid at accounting? Come with me. <laughs> okay. I will feed you." Okay. <laughs> so what else? Yeah. I actually hate talking about taxes. It's not my favorite thing. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not my favorite thing either. Let me tell you that for free. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like I don't like talking about taxes. That's why I don't do taxes. Okay, but, so what's that? What, what are we talking about? PM. Isn't your PM on the way out? Just tell them that you paid the Thompson or whatever the onion eating guy. The what? What? Tell them that you paid the last PM. Isn't your new prime minister? Aren't you? Isn't your prime minister getting kicked out? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I paid him, and he kept it. <laughs> yeah, guy, man. He stole my tax money. Guy. <laughs> I like that. There's a hashtag and it's put your onions out. Hashtag put your onions out because he's such a fucking freak that he went to an onion farm, picked up an onion and ate the whole thing with the skin on it. <laughs> the guy is gorgeous, a freak. There's, there's I don't, there's I don't eat many Georgia people, but I actively dislike him. There's what? There's a place in Georgia, in the States, the state above Florida, and it's yeah. called Vidalia. And in Vidalia, they, they sell Vidalia onions, which are actually sweet onions. And every year, yeah. people walk around chewing on Vidalia onions like they're apples. And you that know is what? Like, they're not going to have good bread. Not meeting anybody from there. No. Or your <laughs> but those are the only yeah. reasons. Budgie yeah. smuggling, onion eating freak. <laughs> Kind of like Hashtag sweet thief. though. <laughs> Why would you eat an onion? Why? Yeah. Why? Because you're mental. There's no reason. <laughs> Don't eat onions, people. Oh, Jill said Stop. she didn't understand. Her niece put the hashtag. Uh, I had to look it up because I saw the hashtag as well. It's like put your onions out, and the whole put your thing out was because there was a cricketer that got killed, and everyone said put your bats out. And then there was a whole domestic <laughs> violence thing, <laughs> which sounds wrong. Um, then there was a domestic violence thing, and it was like, put, um, put your dresses out. And then people would putting, women were hanging their wedding dresses put on their onions onions out. <laughs> Put your onions out. Put your onions uh, out. Yes, they do make out. you cry. I'm bad for women who are menstruating, so I'm going to put my tampons out. <laughs> We need to make an end to menstruation. We need to end this shit now. Put your tampons out. Yeah. Ruining the world. Exactly. Hashtag, Hashtag. Right. <laughs> I'm against all menstruation. Yes, yeah, same. I don't believe in it. I don't do it. Woman yeah. Why is it not womanstration? <laughs> it's a very sexist it's a necessary thing. evil. I say no. I say no to menstruation. <laughs> It's a necessary evil, guys. Jill says, menopause. I know, I'm so looking forward to it. The worm says, no, I've already gone through menopause. It's brilliant. No. She's lying. She's no, lying. No, no, I swear to God, I'm not lying. First time I've been early for anything in my entire life. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, true. true story. No, I don't know. Sorry. Hashtag true story. Like, I don't believe it, and you can't prove it to us, so. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. I don't miss blood coming out of my vagina, that's for sure. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Is that where 
working. <laughs> have we still got me and like your Beyonce wig coming out of your <laughs> underpants? We've yeah, got me and Beyonce wig, ladies. <laughs> I said, um, yesterday I jumped on Lisa's and cleared the room within about 20 minutes. Everyone <laughs> left. <laughs> what did you do? I came out with a wig on. She put her <laughs> no, I, on the Beyonce wig and then she explained, tell them what you did with it. I had a dinner party and people were over. This is like years ago. And um, I went to my room and I had a wig and I went to my room and I was wearing jeans and I put Show the wig. Show the wig. Oh, hold on. Is it your disco wig? I'm going to say this wig. I love that thing. Yeah. Right, let's, let's, here's hoping she doesn't clear the room with the wig. <laughs> she might clear the room. Everyone stay. It, it, yeah. It'll be worth it. Let's support Bronwyn. <laughs> I take your wig <laughs> and I raise you a wig. It's so pretty. Can you call that a wig, Tanya? <laughs> <laughs> no, you still have to come on. <laughs> Yesterday I came on and I was like, I was being a hipster. I'm a hipster. Beard. <laughs> hipster with a beard. Yeah. yeah, and then I had a dinner party and I um outside Lonnie. She keeps wanting to be my friend. I'm like, we're not friends at the moment. Um Yeah, and I was I went to have a dinner party and I had jeans on and I went to my bedroom and put underpants over my jeans and then I put a big wig, not as big as that, down my pants. <laughs> And came out and was just walking around and people are like <laughs> it's fucking hilarious I didn't make myself laugh Bobby do you shop online Bobby you trying to sell this shit <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bobby do you shop online what do you think yes we buy Only wigs online that's what we buy online we buy wigs it's true we're in the market yep. we have one too yeah. yep well, I make online shops, Bobby. Yeah. If you want one. <laughs> <laughs> I make Merkins. We're in the market for a Merkin. <laughs> oh my gosh. I totally have one. You have what? a Merkin. I don't. A what? A Merkin. What is it called? <laughs> Actually, there was a film last year that came out, a short film called Foxy Merkin. And so my friend sent it to me because my last name is Fox. And, um, yeah. And so I decided that I was going to start sending pictures of what a Foxy Merkin would look like. And I just had like, I had a blue wig at home and I had this red wig at home. And so I just started basically what Bronwyn did, except, you know, grosser. And so just, <laughs> what, what, what the fuck is a like, I don't even know what it is. Let the, let the wig come out both sides of the underwear as I was actually wearing them. So that's a Foxy Merkin. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a great business coach by my shit. I <laughs> yeah, oh, totally. Shit. You can trust me oh. with the brand story because you know I'll I'll show up in, in underwear with the red wig poking out of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about dyeing my hair red. <laughs> what do you think? I'm gonna dye my hair red. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, dye it red. It'd be amazing. Huh. I think that yeah. looked really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Especially yeah. since I'm really clean all the time. So I'm like, and plus Bronwyn had some creeper in yesterday that was like, I like gingers and gave her like 800 props. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm dying my hair red. Yeah. Good totally. night. Good night, Kevin. Yeah. It's Kevin's the only gone. time. Um, Bye, Kevin. See you, Kevin. Bye. Have a good sleep. To be sure, to be sure. He's from Ireland. That's a shocking Irish accent. <laughs> um, I used to work with this Irish guy and I'd come in in the morning, I'd be like, tough for the morning to you. And then he was like, if you do that again, I'm going to punch you in the face. I was like, okay, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Dan. <laughs> My best friend is from Ireland and I, and I tell him that he's magically disisgusting because <laughs> he's my best friend and if he were magically delicious, that would just be gross. Oh, Bobby, my, um, Bobby, Bobby, go away with your shopping thing. We don't want to know. Bobby, Fuck off. Let me ask. Bobby, stop Can you pick him out? Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I thought I had, to be honest, because I clicked on the, um, hi, Dan loves pipes. Smoke my pipe. Um, I think there's a little <laughs> bit earlier. Dan. We need to talk about what kind of pipes Dan likes. Dan, are you a plumber? Yeah. Are you a plumber? <laughs> are you yeah. a plumber? Hey, 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 hey. Sorry. Speaking of plumbers, I'm sorry. I just have to tell you this little not real, real true joke. That there's yeah, this no. guy my husband knows, and his name was Mr. Pipe. It's a true story, and he's a plumber. And guess what he named his son? What? Wayne. Wayne. What Pipe. did he name him? 
Swing. Oh, I like oh, this. I have, a, <laughs> I have a joke. Swing. I have a joke. Knock knock. Knock knock. Who's there? Dwayne. Dwayne who? <laughs> Dwayne the bathtub. I'm drowning. <laughs> You're a mum, aren't you? That's a mum joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I went to school with anymore. this guy. I've lost my whole, my whole uh, being. That's all I am as yeah. a mom now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to school with this guy and his name was Wayne and his last name was Kingham. No lies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I went to school with a guy and his name was, is still Brian O'Brien. Brian O'Brien. Who does that? Like who does Why? that to their yeah. kid? Some Wayne, Wayne, I'm sorry, I can't get over the Wayne Kingham. Yeah, Wayne Kingham oh, is God. bad. So Wayne. we've got on at 10.30. I'm going to have to kick somebody off the call because I have to get Christian in soon because you can, um, you today. You, can, you can kick me off if you want. Okay, so well, you were in last time, yes, I'll kick Deb off first. And then Christian, do you want to come in? See you, Deb. You've been See you later. Bye. Bye. Come Bye. back in later. Come back later. Oh, yeah, when? Uh, whenever you like. I'm going to... Have a look at the timetable. I put it up in the Moxie Entrepreneur. Okay, yeah. Just let me know because I'll be here. I've just got some work to do, so I better get that done. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, Bye. so just let me know when. Bye. Bye. Okay, Christian, come on in. And for anybody that's joined, I'm just going to put in the Moxie Entrepreneur. Uh, Moxie. Oh, so they can. Entrepreneur. Now, this is a Facebook group. It's only for ladies. Um, so come on over and join us because we are amazing. You think this is good? <laughs> um, Kevin's oh. trying to get us to speak Irish. And he wants us to say... Hi. Hi, Christian. Hi. Am I saying your name right, Christian? Name. Perfect. Perfectly. Perfect. Perfect. Hi, Christian. Hi. Hey. So um, we've just been talking about very important, like you were on, so you sort of, saw what we were doing um and also about taxes and money and i didn't really get give sarah a chance to talk about money so much um <laughs> so on your whiteboard behind you sarah you've got more money mentoring.com yeah i have a question though is it backwards do i have no, no i can read it you read it front words yeah 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 because for me it's backwards each mic means good night <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Kevin. M I think M H is a B and T H is a V. I think or M H is a V. I, I don't know. Gosh, I have no idea. But it shows forward, right? Okay, that's good. Because yeah. for me, looking at it, it shows backwards. So it's like, do I have to learn how to write backwards? No, no, you do not. No, no, no. you should write it. Good. Um, it, it should be heavier because I didn't notice it until Bronwyn pointed it out. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I, I know. I couldn't see it. Was it was really tiny before, and then I made it bigger. But then I, I have this little skinny marker. So now I need to use one of these, I think. Yeah, yeah you, you need, need to, to upgrade it. Ads, definitely. Yeah, so you can yeah. see it. I love your website, anyway. by the way. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. Did you see my new page? My new page? I'll put it in so yeah. people want to see it. Put it in and also put it in your um, Facebook group because Sarah's also got a Facebook group. So stick that in as well because, you know, we all unite and shit. Um, who else have we got on here? Christian. Oh, I'm not following you. Christian, I'm not following you. I'm going to follow you now. So uh, anybody that's just joined, uh, we are from the Moxie Entrepreneur Facebook group and we're talking about how to grow a business without moving. Oh. Losing your mind. I've already lost my mind. I've only an hour in. Bloody hell. Um, I do need another cup of coffee shortly. Um, and how else have we got on here? Hi, Adrian. Hi, hi. Inner soul development, personal development, wealth, happiness, and get results. Nice. Welcome. Um, yeah, cool. Okay. So let's kick this bad boy off. And then I'm just going to make a quick another cup of coffee because. It's 10.30, and I've been going actually an hour and a half, and I've, I'm going till 2. So what's that, like three and a half more hours, and I can't cope that long without coffee. So um, <laughs> do you want to tell us so a bit about – the platform? Is, is this your first day on? <coughs> it's my – how long have I been on? I've been on. 
four days. I, I sussed it out over the weekend mm-hmm. and was not impressed with the level that I saw, to be honest. Um, and now that I'm doing my own, I don't know if it's that much better. <laughs> but, you know, well, we're not here. four white guys. Yeah, yeah, boring fucking old dudes. That's, that's what it was, just boring. Um, so, yeah, we are bringing the moxie to... Hi, Adrian. Oh, they're saying hi to each other, not to me. Okay, fine. Be like that. Um, Christian, do you want to talk to us a bit about what you do and how you use storytelling to tell stories to build businesses? Sure, I'd love to. So my name is Christian Marie Heron, and I'm a storyteller and brand strategist. And what I do is I work with entrepreneurs. Basically, I help them uncover the value in their story um, so that they can really stand out amongst all the noise in, the, in, in marketing and things like that. Um, I really love the work that I do. It's more than just words on a page that I help them with um, or the strategy even. It's really about teaching them to be really confident and owning the value of everything that they do. Did you hear our um, conversation before about bullshit brand stories or bullshit personal stories? A little bit, a little bit. I, you know, to be honest, I didn't hear the whole thing. <laughs> So what's what's your um, what's your take on how you see the majority of entrepreneurs telling their brand story? Um, I don't know if I could say the majority. I know that a lot of people struggle in this space to come across really authentic, and yeah. they sort of feel confused about how to start, how to even navigate that space. Um, and it's it's really about for me, storytelling is really about, you know, conveying the connection points in your own story that really reveals why you do the work that you do. Because as women, you know, and the few men that are on too, we're a collection of our experiences, we're a collection of our job titles and credentials and all of those things. And it's it's really hard to, you know, embrace all of those things and and convey it in a way that's cohesive and makes sense. Now, so when you say bullshit brand story to me, what that means to me is, you know, probably the, the worst case that I've ever seen is when someone got in, got on camera and made themselves cry because they were just going to lose it if you didn't sign up for their program. To me, that was like a bullshit brand story. That's probably the worst of it that I've seen. So I don't know if that's been covered or not before, but you know, there's definitely a way to do it. And I don't believe there's a right way or a wrong way. I just think there's a way that you need to be able to embrace the concept of storytelling, especially me as an introvert, right? I you know, struggled for years to find my voice, especially in the corporate environment where I came from. And I had to learn to find my voice, otherwise I'd get squashed in meetings. And then later on when I started my business, then you know, I would you know, feel scared to have conversations with clients. And you know, storytelling is more than just telling your story, it's being really confident about what you do. And it's not at all arrogance, it's really about um, showing people that you're passionate about what you do, that you love what you do, and then connecting back to your life experiences, why that all, why it all makes sense, why you're here now, why you're working with people, why you have clients or you want to have clients. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know what, like I'm a copywriter and sometimes I lose my own voice and I lose my own story. And I think, when, especially when you're starting out, your story is that you've left corporate and that's a lot of people's story when they first start out as an entrepreneur. So it's it's bringing more depth and more of you into that. So now my story is, and, and, and you sort of like a little onion that's been bitten by Tony Abbott, you um, you reveal bits of yourself. And to me now, I've just told everyone that I've got fired from my last couple of jobs. And now that that's that okay with me, then I'm going to introduce it into my brand story. <laughs> I'm basically unemployable and that will make me stick out. Forget fucking food stamps. I've been fired. I am, I'm an unemployable person and that makes me an excellent entrepreneur well it's, it doesn't it wouldn't make just anyone but and then that's part of your story so I think knowing for entrepreneurs knowing that from day one it's not that it's nailed it's like your website it's like everything it's a garden and you have to just keep tending to it and it's going to evolve over time it is evolutionary because we're having experience new experiences all the time and there's a time and a place to introduce those stories when it feels right right yeah so there's not the one brand story that you have to have. I think that you can be really intentional and really strategic about how you introduce yourself to people and how you um, talk about the work that you do in a way that makes sense and people you know, really get it. Um, I personally think that introverts are really good at doing it because we're really 
we have a tendency to be really introspective and we can naturally see sort of the connection points and patterns and metaphors. At least that's my specialty in people's story in a way that, you know, to, to make a story memorable, people need anchor points to remember like, oh, that makes sense. That makes total sense. If you, you know, talk about or, or put your story in context of a, a metaphor. I'm not a big hero's journey kind of story person um, because I think that we're so much more complex than that. And I think that the purpose of story is really to connect, you know, you know, your heart and your mind to the heart and minds of your clients and doing it in a way that is like, you know, I'm here. This is what I've gone through. I totally get what you're feeling and what you've gone through. Here's how I've overcome certain obstacles. It may not be right for you, but here's how it worked for me. How do you find that different to the hero's journey? Because that basically you've just outlined the hero's journey there. Yeah, I mean, I think that when we hear the connotation of hero's journey, I think of sort of like a templated approach to telling a story. Like there's there's sort of a, a natural evolution when we talk about the, the hero's journey and that kind of thing. So there's definitely some similarities there. But when we tell our story, it doesn't necessarily have to be like this one big obstacle that we overcame or this gigantic epiphany. It could be the yeah. series of epiphanies that we've had or a series of, you know, mindset shifts that we've had over time. Because I know for me, the, the, the most profound experiences for me tend to, like you said, are, are like, like an onion. You're peeling away an onion and you get closer and closer to the truth. Like, oh, I get it. Especially doing yeah. this work now, I see the patterns in my own life. I'm like, how come I didn't see that before? You know, yeah. it's just that thing. So that's why yeah. I think it's a little bit different. Can I ask? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to come back in one. Okay. So can I ask if um, one of the things that we were discussing before when, when we were speaking about the bullshit stories is yeah. that we've got a lot of these people out there who are yelling about the amounts of money that they're making, whether it's true or not, is sort of, you know, academic at this point, but they're all screaming about their money. They're all screaming about, you know, how they can do this for you. And if you just give them your, I mean, this is essentially what it is. If you give me your money, I will teach you how to get other people to give you their money. Right. Yeah. And so how do, how would people who are in that, realm turn that around because i believe that some of them are doing it because that's what they're seeing other people doing and it's right. working for them and it, it's in my opinion I, I find it i find it hardly gauche i think that you know the whole idea of coming out and saying i'm making six figures is right. a disgusting thing to do but for people like sarah as we were discussing before for people like sarah it's important for you to know that yeah. as a financial advisor, she is financially secure. She has come back from, you know, financial ruin and right. he can help you do this. For a life mm -hmm. coach, yeah. that is not a necessity. So how do they get around the idea of I'm selling you a lifestyle idea right? without telling you that six figures is what you need? Yeah, so, I, so a couple things can't come to mind. I say, first of all, the, the people who take the, that approach to me, aren't really telling their story. It's more akin to someone standing on a corner with a bullhorn and sort of shouting, you know, the results and, hey, you know, sign up with me. You'll get the exact same results are very similar. Um, I think it, it, you have to, it strikes a fine balance between showing people what's possible um, and really, but you have to ha come in behind, right behind that with, you know, the reality of what it takes to get there. Mm -hmm. That it's, you know, the, the overnight successes are rare. It's ext extremely rare. And I'm all for positive mindset and making positive, you know, shifts in the, in the way we think and that kind of thing. But it's, it's a hard climb for most people. I know it's, it's been a hard climb for me in terms of, you know, my money issues and, and that kind of thing. I come from a corporate background. I didn't come from an entrepreneurial family. I had to bootstrap my way up to, you know, through my business. So that's totally like my mindset. So I always take those posts with a grain of salt. And I think to answer your question about how to kind of turn that around is to get back to the basics of, of telling stories. And that's the way I market. I call it unmarketing. But my approach is the people who know me will see my posts on Facebook and certain groups where I'll say what it's like to work with a star storyteller, part one. And I'll do part two. And then I go into my little bit of, of my own biography. And what I do in the part one and part two is I give examples of many case studies of how I help people 
and how I sort of, you know, get them to tell their story in a way that's authentic and compelling and makes them feel good. So it's not, I don't put money in any of my posts or anything like that. Not that I'm dead set against it, but for me, what feels good is to really, like I said before, connect with the, the hearts and minds of the people that I'm trying to reach. Like this is what's possible for you. I also post free guides and, and free resources. And if they want to do it themselves, that kind of thing, I don't, set myself up to be this guru. Like if you don't sign up with me, you know, your story time is going to suck. <laughs> I, don't, I never position myself like that. It's, it's always, you know, trying to come from a place where I'm going back to old school, you know, storytelling, making connections, you know, with the women that I help my own story and how they, they can make the connections with themselves and their life and their business. I don't know if that answers that for you. No, it absolutely does. One of the other things that we were discussing and you, you sort of touched on it. I don't think you were, um, I don't think that it's the same thing, but did you hear us talking about the Kimra Luna reveal? Uh, the the, the Kimra Luna review? Reveal. Reveal, no. No, I didn't Kimra Luna, um, a few months ago, a couple of months ago, basically, what what was the term that I, I ultimately wound up using, Sarah? Not opened her books. She Yeah, um, I mean, basically showed um, the back end of her business and what she made, you know, because... Um, she's become quite well known for um, doing a launch and making $800,000 in revenue and that she showed that she had um, $100,000 in costs, right? The, the, again, I would take 800,000 with a hundred thousand in costs, but the, the problem is that um, if you don't have a hundred thousand to spend, then what are you, right? Like, what are you going to do? You have to, you have to, as you said, bootstrap your way up and, and, mm -hmm. you know, do that over time where she yeah. had a very successful first launch. So I think she reinvested some of that money. Yeah. Right. And that's, that was the thing, the story, the Kimra Luna story. And again, I want to make this clear that I am not saying anything disparaging about Kimra Luna. I like and respect her both personally yeah. and professionally. So I want to make that very clear. This is not about bashing her at all. And I hope that right. it doesn't right. excite any bashing. But what Kimra Luna did over the past year was to basically ride this wave of the $800,000 launch. And she sold this story of being, a, you know, a welfare mom that she and her husband, and I think the two kids that they had at the time were living in their uh, in-law's basement. And she went from, you know, being on welfare to being able to retire her husband and have this $800,000 launch. And for months, this was the story that was being told. This was the story that was being repeated. And a couple mm -hmm. of months ago, she comes back and she says, um, well, this is how I did it. And she admitted that she had been in MLM before. She admitted that she had copywriters and she had, you know, um, she had VA, uh, VAs and she had all of these people behind the scenes and that it wound up costing her upwards of, you know, $100,000 to make that $800,000. And then okay. again, it's still not $800,000 per se in revenue because she's still having to pay other people. So, you know, so there's this, yeah. this story that's being told, but not really being told. And you've got these people buying into this idea rather than buying into the truth. And the truth is sometimes, you know, for, to make $800,000, it would be shocking for you to do that with no investment. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know her full story. I didn't look at her reveal. I know of her. I sort of know her story about being on welfare and that kind of thing. I totally hear what you're saying. One of my favorite stories I think that um, I've read is Joe Gifford's story. I don't know if you know Joe Gifford. Um, she, her team is doing an opt-in for me right now, but I love her story because she said, you know, I, you know, I have a successful business, but it took me nine years. People don't realize how long it took me. It took me nine years freaking years to get to where I am now. And so I think that's much more of a realistic story. I, I think that as much as I, as I hope that, you know, some of the success stories, the bigger names that we're seeing that, that are, are, are killing it, you know, until I, I see evidence otherwise, I, you know, I think that they are really truly doing it, but I don't see it being sustainable long-term. That's just me. And I think if you really truly want to scale long-term, then um, we have to get out of sort of this fishbowl that we're in of seeing like these different coaches. It's almost like a pyramid scheme where if you invest with one and you invest with another and that kind of thing. Um, 
and again, to my earlier point, mindset is a is a really tough, tough thing to try and overcome. That's probably that's my been my number one challenge is trying to um, work on my mindset. And you know, there's this um, astrologer that I love um, who Teresa Reed, if anybody knows her, and I've I've worked with her a little bit. And she said, you know what? I'm always going to work on my money story, no matter how successful I become or how much I bring in in revenue. I'm always going to be working on that money story. So I think that. It's great to have these success stories, but with a, a, you know, a healthy dose of reality and what it takes to, to really bring in those numbers. Um, but at the same time, really you know, um, reinforcing the need to work on mindset and that kind of stuff. Because so many people give up. They give up if they don't, oh, I'll never be in so-and-so because I'm, you know, I'm not making five figures a month now or I, I didn't make $100,000 in six months or something like that. But um, you know, I think it's important for, for women to see both ends of the spectrum. What people, what can happen if you're really, you know, do the work, you can be successful. And what can happen if, um, you know, you have a great couple of months and then you lose it all. And, you know, those are all stories too that are part of the collective. I think if they're, they all have value mm -hmm. in some form or another because we can all learn from them. Well, and I think like for me, one of the things that I realized is when I, you know, I've been in business for like four and a half years. And when I was early on in business, I was sort of following the wrong people. And, um, you know, a, a mentor of mine that I the, I made $20,000 my first year in business and I spent 10000 on coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my net income was $250 in the first year. So I made no money. And yeah. And so... Um, I had this mentor that I followed and then um, uh, I recently backed away from uh, that toxic situation, but um, he sent an email out um, last week about that he was getting married and, um, and that if you bought a certain number of his product, you, which was about $10,000 worth, you um there was one seat at the invite to his wedding <laughs> what you mean you didn't yeah. oh. huh you didn't sign up that? That? <laughs> so what is that yeah that's like fucking insane who's gonna do that first of all it's gonna be like stalker material like who's gonna do that but I mean, really, like, what are you doing? You're inviting a stalker to kill your new wife because that's what. <laughs> no I love how you mind went to that. I'd be like thinking, okay, I'm going to take a bag and shove as much food in as that I can to get my 10 grand worth. Yeah, well, in like one <laughs> ticket. It's not even so you're going by yourself, right? But like, I feel like that there is an extreme, you know, um, where yes, we want to talk about our personal stories and we want to integrate that into our storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's like going too far. To me, that's going too far. I mean, that, what? yeah, why would you want to go to his wedding? I don't know. He I don't want to go to some weddings yeah. with people I know, let alone people I don't. Yeah, I, you know, I was involved in some discussions earlier today about this whole, um, this whole concept of manipulation, you know, manipulative marketing, scarcity mentality, sign up now, otherwise you're not. And I've fallen into that same trap where I, you know, integrated that in my own marketing. It doesn't feel good. What feels good to me is to adopt more of an invitational approach to say, here's what I've got going on. These are the people that would really benefit from. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're interested, have a look, you know, here's a guide or, or some, some other way to introduce them to my world, but not this, you know, there's five seats left and, Again, I've been guilty of it, and I, a lot of us have because a lot of us have been taught that 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 it works. You know why we taught it though, and yeah. you know why I teach it? It's because it works. Yeah, I think fake scarcity is bullshit. But like in terms of a launch, urgency and scarcity. I've got a fly buzzing around my head. Um, urgency and scarcity is what it works. That's yeah. why we use it. And if you haven't got a compelling reason now for somebody to take action, like that's why just before your cart closes you're going to get the bulk of your sales. It's because it's it works. Last minute. Yeah. So, but it's the fake stuff. You know what I see happening, and it's ridiculous. Haven't I got a hat with corks on, Bron? <laughs> yeah, I need one. Um, yeah, so it's oh, – what was I going to say? 
you're talking about fake groups. Yeah. Yeah. So people are like, yeah, I've got this place, all oh, only two places left. And I'm just like, honestly, you just it doesn't ring true. And people can smell a bullshit a mile off. So if that's your entire thing that you're, you know, counting down and I don't know, it just doesn't it doesn't ring true. And I think people can see that. Well, I totally yeah, lost my train of thought there because I'm just like. No, that's I think, and I think people that are newer in entrepreneurship see that and feel like, well, other people are doing it, and so if if I say that, then it'll work for me. You know that. Yeah, Adrian just said people are procrastinators. I like to use bonuses for scarcity and time scarcity, not slots of if, if it isn't real. That's exactly yeah. right. Oh, and Jill, you didn't put me off. I shouldn't have been reading that thing. You're totally fine. Keep, keep commenting, Jill. Keep going. Yeah, you know, but, you know, as a business owner, I think that, you know, depending on the type of work that you do, I, I, you know, my sense is that most of us on here participating are some kind of service provider. I know from a capacity perspective, there's, you know, a certain, a maximum number of people that, that I like to work with a month. Yeah. A lot of writing. And I just, I can't, you know, I can't have, you know, tons of people on a monthly yeah. basis in time of programs. But, but, but still, I think it's, it's that fake scarcity that, that people um, are just tired of. They're tired of seeing it. They're tired of, you know, being, they feel like they're, they're getting yelled at in some of the, you know, the, the marketing tactics and things like that. Let's talk about that. And I think that is a very, very valid point. And I brought it up um, in a group the other day. As entrepreneurs and as life coaches and as people that know shit, we get really super passionate about our products, about our services, about things that we see happening. But what happens is that we end up going on a bit of a rant and we like send these, and I've, I do it occasionally, but you do these ranty um, things and it's just like, rah, 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 and screaming in your face. Like, it's just like, take a Xanax, bitch, and just back <laughs> off because, you, you know, you're not, it's like you're, it's like you're not, connecting at all you're putting mm -hmm. yourself up here and like you losers listen to this because you don't know but if you did it in a more um hey i've been thinking about this how do you think about this as well and that's it's a major difference in how you approach it and it's it's that heart connection of actually talking to people not screaming in their face it's and you know as we are all passionate and i can see and i get on rants as well but I'm, I'm really conscious how I'm speaking to people because people aren't idiots. And so when we are talking to them, yeah, truth with compassion without its brutality. And yeah. So I shouldn't say own. pay your fucking taxes? No, you can say that. <laughs> I pay my fucking taxes. <laughs> yeah. And if it's like a rant that, um, you know, well, I try not to rant in that way. I do get on one <laughs> um but I'm like I've discovered this or you know it's just yeah note to self avoid live conversation with Sarah <laughs> no, I'm just a taxi head in the sand I, kind I, of girl come yeah. in the hot seat come in the hot seat <laughs> okay who am I picking out okay Actually, Tanya I'm gonna, yeah I'm gonna kick you out now <laughs> I've got to pop out but I just wanted to say one thing before I left yeah. My mom gave me a really, really lovely piece of advice today. And well, actually, it's not advice. It's sort of a parable, but whatever. Um, and I think that it's something that we all need to keep in mind. And she had a broker who was, you know, he made millions for millions of people. He himself lived very modestly by comparison. And my mom said to him, if you know all of this stuff, why don't you have millions of dollars? And he said, I was able to let my I was able to afford to allow to enable my wife to work for Oxfam. We have a beautiful house. Our children will never have to worry about how they're going to pay for college. And we take vacations when we plan them. We're successful. I don't need millions. And I think that that's something that we as 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 in in these groups need to sort of come back to the the, the redefining success. Right. Yes. And it is not necessarily monetary. Sure, we all want to be comfortable, and sure, we all want a more easy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But six figures is not necessarily going to make your life better. Figure out how to make your life better now, and the money will come. <laughs> yeah, you know what you need to make to support the lifestyle you want will come when you define the lifestyle you want.
And I'm not yeah. talking about putting it out there and, and you know, meditating on it. But stop yeah, chasing success. Chase your success and chase your happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? They, yeah. they did a um, study and uh, in America, your level of success over 75,000 is negligible um, compared to if you made a couple of hundred thousand. Your happiness levels aren't higher. And there was this guy, I can't remember where it was, I never remember um, to reference things, but I read it recently, and he it was mega successful. And somebody said to him, I think it was Brian Tracy, actually, and they said, what would you do if you could go back? And he said, I wouldn't have gotten so big. Because we're all, like, chasing this big, massive success, but with that becomes a whole lot of responsibility. And I don't want that. <laughs> I, I want my company and my bank balance and everything to grow to a certain amount that is going to give me the lifestyle that I want, but without all of that responsibility. So it's really seeing what's your end game. And it's not, you know, it's just to, if it's just to chase the money, like you just said, then that's not an end game. Well, like you've got to look at everything. I do want that life. I want, I want to be the person who's out there touching lives. I want to do TED Talks. I want to be that person. I want to be the person that people say, you know, because of you, I was able to do this. Mm -hmm. If I could give this away, I would. If I didn't yeah. have rent to pay, that's exactly how I would live. I would just be on YouTube and on, on Twitter all day long telling people how to run their business and how to, you know, cut corners but not, you know, but not cut corners, you know, make things easier. I would do it for free. Yeah. yeah. But my landlord would not let me do that. <laughs> so, but if you're if you get a certain level of success, if you make a certain amount of money, how many more people can you help? I mean, if you're about helping people and changing the world, well, if you change your world, then guess what? You change the fucking world. Like, what? Well, my you level of money, my level, of, my my income level is not directly related to my ability to help people. So as long as I'm getting my bills paid and I can, you know, pay for my mom to come with me places and stuff like that, I'm really, really happy. Right. No, you know, it is though, Tanya. I think you know what? Because the more money you have the more you can invest in getting your message out to a wider audience. So if you made more money, then you could reach more people for sure. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, for me, it's about helping yeah. more people. So if I'm able to get to a certain income level and I can do things like travel so that I can give a speech mm -hmm. to a exactly. charity, I yeah. can't do that. You know, I can't do that now and pay my bills and to raise my children and all that. but. But if I'm making $5 million a year, then if I decide that, you know, Bronwyn's crying on her birthday and I need to take a flight over to cheer her up <laughs> and have a fake martini with her, then I, I'll do that. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, those are the kinds of things, right? <laughs> 10, 40 every year, I tell you that. <laughs> those are the kinds of things that just, everything changes, you know? Like, the ability for you to do those kinds of things that really do impact people. I mean, I would love to just be like, see someone on the side of the road, like walking with their kids that's homeless and be like, hey, here's a car. I, 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 I think it, it really, um, I think it's really important as far as, you know, tr you know attaching a certain value. I remember my, my first year of business, I'm not embarrassed to admit, and this is before I started storytelling and a completely different Focus. I made I think four hundred and fifty dollars the whole entire year. But when I got that check for four hundred and fifty dollars, I was so excited. I felt so proud because it was the first money I made outside of like a regular job. And so yeah. from there, it just grew and grew. And so early on, I've just been so grateful for you know the money that I've earned. And and the probably the best piece of advice I got when I first started was make sure you stay in your own lane. Don't look at what anybody else is doing. And it's hard. But I've really taken that advice to heart, you know, and take a look at my life. And for me, success means am I able to help pay for vacations for my family? Not necessarily to finance this big lifestyle, but really, um, you know, putting my money towards things that 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 make me feel good and make me feel valued as a business owner. Because um, that's what I've just been grateful for early on. And, and maybe I'm a little unique like that. I think that we're, you know, I'm in good company as far as, you know, the, the thought process, but I'm incredibly grateful every single day, even just to be able to go to the grocery store. And maybe that's a little bit limiting, but 
I think out of gratitude grows so much more. I think that the universe prepares you for so much more if you express gratitude for every little thing that you have. I agree. And on that note, I, totally agree. I have been absolutely blessed to be in this with you guys. I'm grateful for, for knowing you. Can and, you uh, love to have you your here. dress one more time? Before Can you leave, we, the dress, like the dress, the... <laughs> Last I, I've back done a rest. costume change, so I can, but I can, I can, I can give you the rig again. Oh, and I can show you Did that you it still has a costume change. change. That's brilliant. <laughs> huh? oh, I need another costume. You see that it still has the tag on? It does still have the tag on it. <laughs> Most brilliant. of my clothes still have tags on them until like I've actually worn them out of the house. <laughs> and then I'll still forget. So I'll, I'll walk out with like a tag on a really nice dress. <laughs> like I have a kid to wear nice dresses, please. <laughs> bye, ladies. Bye, people watching, bye. ladies and gentlemen. Bye bye. 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 Who was uh, who was trying to get in? It, so, oh, it was who, uh, Naomi. Who's in now? Um, let me tell you. It is Joy Barma if she's here. Um, and then Boy. Adrian can jump in. Adrian's taking um, her dog on a walk. Okay, so is Joy's in Joy, here. What's it? Joy's in here. I'm not leaving. I'm just camping out in my seat. So. You're all right. Joy. Oh, Joy's. Joy's trying Joy's to get in. in. Here. <laughs> Hi, Hello. Joy. Come on in. Yeah, there you go. I just want to talk about um, gratitude for money. Um, even though I, I've got to stop saying I'm shit with money because that's not an empowering affirmation, is it? But um, I do appreciate my money. And I've got a whiteboard that I set up on my um, – on my hi joy uh, that i set up and i have my days planned out and because i have little uh bits of money that come in all the time and i love 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 writing it up on my whiteboard and i do a little victory dance and i'm like Woo! i'm like thank you thank you thank you and i think that is yeah i like that painting as well joy it's nice. yeah it's really nice yeah what? and i think that's really amazing <laughs> Beautiful. What happened? Talking about things that are behind you, what happened to your sign? That looks mental now. Morum. Oh, well, I was trying to see if I made it thicker, if it could be seen. But then I yeah, got to it. I think, so you, I I think you should it. finish it. Yeah, it's, I'm too late. <laughs> it's 9 o'clock at night. It's practically bedtime. Oh, yeah. Fair play. Hey, um, just before we um, go off, Christian, have you got in it like um, an opt-in or anything that you'd like to share with anybody? I do. I have a, a storytelling guide that I can share with, with folks. Yeah, it's yeah. if you just put it in the, in the text box down there and then people can download it. I will do that. Okay, cool. Right, um, and stick around. Um, uh, yeah, so Joy, are we on to you? Yeah, I think we are, aren't we? Hi. Miss Organized 11. Yes, you're right on time. Oh, my God, this is running like – German precision clockwork, or this is <laughs> clockwork, whatever it is. Um, hi, thanks for coming on. I, I need to give you some props because you look like a loser down there with nothing happening on your face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so for people that don't know, when you're watching, you can just um, click click your screen. Click the, yeah, right. click here. On oh, I'm pointing, but like you can't see. My 10. Yeah, let's give the new people some props to say, hey, come on board. Yeah. It's, you know, what? that's the biggest part about Periscope that I hated, though, was people giving you hearts. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I feel like a monkey, like, performing from well, hearts. I actually like this better because it shows who's giving it. I think Periscope, oh, Periscope does the uh, colored hearts, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and then I'm and I'm a different color heart. And then, like, I like green hearts, money, right? And I like purple hearts because I like purple <laughs> But then when I get other colors, I'm like, oh, this sucks. I don't want to do this. Yeah, I've got to log off. This is ridiculous. <laughs> um, Lisa, Lisa likes that. Brown is oh, yeah, chocolate. Yeah, brown is chocolate. And then people are, like, eating them. Oh, oh, oh. That, that did not make me think of chocolate as the first thing, to be totally honest. <laughs> oh, right. That makes it a bit That's gross, my, yeah. My don't use brown on your website because brown is the color of poop. Yeah, it is gross. Um. So, Joy, tell us a bit about rocking your feminine type. Yeah, you know, I um, first of all, I love this conversation. It is so juicy, 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 <laughs> juicy. All about women and power and money and business. And I wrote a book. It's called Rock Your Feminine Type to Rock Your Business. Yeah. yeah. And it's all about helping women find their patterns, their power, and their potential. Because, you know, we are our greatest asset and our greatest liability in 
our business. So it's really a system that I created to help you see yourself clearly because, you know, it's kind of like we're busy being ourselves, right? So we can't really see ourselves, right? You know, our patterns yeah. play out in slow motion. Yeah, so this you is run out a book. Not a You're right. So this kind of slows everything down and it's kind of like a book of you and it helps you to uh, determine your personality type, your business type, your superpowers, your shadow, what you might not be able to see about yourself. Yeah, and then I have an academy where I teach people um, how to use this. I was this wondering that because I saw somebody was offering to do this. So Tina. they must have been trained by you, right? Yes, Tina, Tina. 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 And by the way, talk about, um, I had said, uh, I only take five uh, women and I, I really personally mentor them in this system. And she was the last one to get in that uh, training. And it was, I had said, there's only you know one spot left. And uh, she grabbed it. And so, you know, sometimes that scares me. Works, but it was the truth, too. So, who was it? Tina, Tina Benton. Benton. Oh, that's who it was. Yeah. I was like, I know yeah. I just saw this like yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, because she's on my yeah. course. It was today. It was today. Yeah. Yes, and she's phenomenal. She's trained in my my at my uh, Rock Your Feminine Type Branding Academy. I got it. Got and, it. And yeah, so it helps women really own their power too. You know, uh, I think that women are still struggling with that around money, around um, business. Uh, you know, there are a lot of mixed messages that women get. I some of them are like um, focusing on money isn't spiritual, right. or focusing on money isn't even feminine. It makes you masculine. Mm -hmm. uh, being powerful is masculine. Um, speak up, tell the truth, but don't be a bitch. You know, we still get a oh, lot yeah. of mixed messages. Mm -hmm. So if you see a woman really speaking up, you can think, oh, she's that confidence makes her a bitch, right? So we can get confused. Uh, mm -hmm. Be successful, but um, and make money, but don't be greedy. That's so there's a always big a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were talking a lot about that earlier. It's like, wow, people, women are talking about money and uh, it can really, you know, tweak our shadow mm -hmm. about money, our consciousness about money. When we see other women, hey, I make six figures, you know, in a way, I love what you said, Bronwyn, which was, um, you know, it just isn't, it, 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 what did you say? This isn't really creative marketing. It's, not, it's just say. lazy marketing. It's just, lazy. yeah. I love that. Creative. And that's really what you feel. Um, and at the same time, I, I like to see women owning their money space because yes. we're so shamed, uh, for bragging. Okay. Let's even talk about the topic of bragging. Uh, it's like a big no, no, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and yet, yeah. And I, I think, you know, this, this taboo of not talking about it, I mean, men are much more apt to talk about money right and um I'll, what's interesting to me is well first of all in our country women really weren't working until you know not that long ago and right. did, um and, uh, and i actually um went on a field trip a couple years ago with my son's class and it was um of the shoe factories in uh lowell in uh, Massachusetts, which is like where they first started um, having young girls and young women. And it showed like where they stayed and it was showing how much just that working and having that income had empowered those, those women. Like they now were able to buy things and they had on display like these dresses that these women had made from the money they bought. It was so interesting to me to realize like how recent that was that women yeah. had that empowerment to be earning their own money and the thing that i see now that's happening that's really interesting to me is that now women are starting to start businesses at a higher rate than men and yeah. are starting to come into this world that was uh really dominated by men i actually struggled a lot because i worked in corporate finance in, in the manufacturing industry which it was all men i mean men men and more men and um, the last job of three that I got fired from was quite entertaining. Um, at, in corporate finance, they brought a woman supervisor in when they fired me 
because she, and they said this to me, she is the closest woman in leadership to you. She was, she was a, a manufacturing supervisor and I was the corporate controller. So I was like, Oh my God. Of management above her, but there was no other woman. And they, some, I don't know, they thought I was going to like, like claim that they were discriminating. So they had her sit in on firing me. Did you? And, and it was so <laughs> hilarious just to like, see, like how fucked up is that? But anyway, the, my point is that being in that world, I started to act like more like a guy. That was the only way I could survive. Yeah. And, and so it's interesting to me, like when you're talking about your, your feminine type, like I've been working for five years in my own business, trying to even embrace that, trying to, you know, like I paint my fingernails now when I feel like it, because you know what, like I can, I'm a woman. And it's just interesting to me, like how long I subverted that in or, and it was sheer survival just so I could make it through the day. Right. And I subverted that for a long time. And now, now I like, I can wear nail polish and say, fuck, like I can do both. Yeah. And you can brag. I am more than just one thing. We are in the, we are in a feminine a business renaissance and the people that are on this call, uh, the people that are in the Moxie group on all these Facebook groups, we are creating it. We are creating a new feminine way of doing business and we're still struggling with it uh as we were talking about earlier you know should we talk about money should we not talk about money what's genuine what's authentic we're still hammering it out what is you know because we want and then uh you were also talking about how uh you know we want a lifestyle that's really meaningful you know is, is it really money and so we get to think about all those things where you know even you know in a corporate job we don't have any of that uh, opportunity well and i know for me in, in looking at this coming from a place of, because um, my background was, I was an art major 100 years ago and did corporate design, web design, that kind of thing. I moved into the fitness realm and became a personal trainer. It doesn't get a whole lot more masculine than that. And I know for myself, there was this huge collapse between and, and sort of this misconception of what feminine actually was. To me, that was weak and god bless my mom but she was your very stereotypical stay at home housewife you know good christian midwestern woman and you know oh ask your father well the man is the head of the household and so to me being feminine that was my model so to me that's right. weak there's nothing strong yeah. and powerful about that that's that was my collapse and so for me, it's been an interesting challenge and journey to get to the point where I now understand that to be in business doesn't mean balls to the wall doesn't mean you have to have balls. Balls to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> that is so I talk, okay. Hashtag in that. I talk about it in my book about being a nurturer, feminine type. Okay. There are, I had talked about four biz types, business types, nurturer, creative, expert, and leader. And uh, you're talking about, you know, your mother was a classic nurturer and she was playing out all the challenges of that type of just giving your power away, not being able to speak up and not having any boundaries or uh, a voice. And so, yeah, but you can still be a nurturer and be very, very powerful. And I, I teach people how to do that because a lot of women are nurturers and they need to own their voice and their money, but they can still bank on the strengths of being um, and there's two feminine types I talk about. One is called the sweetheart and one is called the saint. Those are the nurturers and they're very powerful. And so it's really about banking on what's, um, what's uh, unique about you. What are your special gifts that you offer other people? I talk about the saint as intuition and compassion and the sweetheart has uh, acceptance and kindness. And so I think that uh, women run away from the whole nurturer, like you're talking about, Naomi. You know, they run away from being a nurturer. Uh, but I, there's a lot of power in that mm -hmm. as well. And so it's all about balance and knowing when we we our strengths are turning into our weakness. And that's what my book in my academy um, teaches. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think especially, you know, you guys were talking earlier about the whole 
I made a billion dollars in four days kind of marketing. And I think that's one of the pieces that sometimes I see is missing is bringing out that balance of, of the feminine and the masculine. Now, even as a personal trainer, I got my yoga instructor certification. So let me tell you, I've got one foot way over on this side and one foot way over on this side and had to bring them back. That's because of yoga, right? Yes, exactly. That's how you were able to do that? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to have to read your book because that's a, such a beautiful blend that you're talking about, bringing that together, the, the masculine, the feminine, owning that feminine power that it's not weak. It's, it's tapping into those gifts that I think we as women naturally have. We may not all be, you know, Pollyanna. I'm not going to talk all breathy. That's not me. But that doesn't mean that I can't be feminine. And I've had to learn that. And I think that's true for a lot of other women as well, especially ones who are sassy pants, like those of us in the Moxie Entrepreneur. Hey. Yep. I'm with you. Well, I, I, the other thing I talk about in my book is finding your shadow, because that's the, the key to, to balance and to our true empowerment. Because what we do also as women is we give up things that may be Oh, like I was talking earlier, like, don't be, you know, don't focus on money because then you're not ladylike. And that's what I discovered in my life. I had a women's wellness center for 15 years. And uh, in my system, I am a nurturer creative and I was giving up my shadow, which was the leader. And, and the leader focuses on money unabashedly. You know, they don't apologize for ambition or uh, wanting to be successful uh, and, and, what I discovered for myself is those are things that I was not really, uh, that was my shadow. And I was so focused on giving as a nurturer uh, that I wasn't bringing money into the equation enough. I'd done so much work trying to understand this. So I finally had to develop my own system just for women. My book in my system is, is just for women to see their power, where, they're, where they hid it away. And they need to just, the book can just very easily, you can find it. You, It's easy. Uh, I'm just looking easy. up at book actually. makes it really easy. Sorry to interrupt yeah, you then. I'm you just looking it, up your, Can you type yeah. it in the... Yeah, Joy, I'm just looking it up on... I'm looking it up on sure. Amazon.co.uk. You, you guys keep talking because I'm looking it up on Amazon.co.uk and Amazon.com and I'll put the links in there for you. So how so do we you, figure out like what our type is? I mean... You know, on page 32, I have a questionnaire. It's like a little workbook that I have. You, you it. And it's, um, this is not, this is a book that clips along really quickly. You you read a section, you take a little quiz, you fill in the blank. It's like a workbook. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you read about your type. You read about your shadow. Uh, it's 200 pages. You can finish it in a couple hours. Most people do. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have, you're just full of, information to take you to the next level people have told me it's absolutely changed their life uh because they didn't realize wow i i had left that behind i, I didn't or some women actually reject their nurturer self mm -hmm. yeah and they need to go back and find that which is really how to be present with people and um into feelings and intuition and so, sometimes women give up that part of themselves as well um, we've got a couple very of questions. Important. Oh, sorry. There's a bit of a lag. Um, we've got a couple of questions for you, Joy. Uh, does your book talk about selling as women? As a woman, sorry. Yes, it does. It it it, it doesn't talk directly so much. Um, what it does is it talks about your style, your superpowers. Like you can find your unique quality but you also want to find out where your shadow is and the shadow is going to tell you what like for myself i'm a nurturer creative and i was leaving out my uh my leader uh and the leader is all about having a, a you know a voice uh focusing on money and somehow this gives women a permission slip when they when they firmly understand their type it's like oh yeah i'm why why can't i focus on that what kind of breaks down some mindsets that they had um it's like a big permission slip to understand yourself and where you left your power and i say it in my subtitle is discovering a unique feminine power with the feminine type success system it's about women and how we've hidden our power to be acceptable and accommodating uh i talk also in this my academy actually i help 
women figure out if they are intuitive, logical, rebel, or accommodating. And those are four different qualities and perspectives on the world. So that's a little bit more my advanced uh, training. But So can you be more than one of those? Like, could I be an intuitive rebel? Yes, yes, you are, actually. You, you just said it. Right. Uh, you take your scores from my whole system and you, you add it up. And you say, oh, these are my two highest scores. Everything is a two in this because we are a combination of energies. We're not just one thing. Got it. So, uh, yeah, you can be a rebel, logical, or an accommodating, intuitive, mm -hmm. or uh, or an intuitive rebel. I'm an intuitive rebel. Right. Uh, so I've got one foot in, you know, one and one in the other. Right. It, it's just, the thing is, we are our greatest asset and our greatest liability in our business. And so what this is really think, a system like being like something like this, where we're all, all of us able to communicate and talk. What do you think that will do, you know, for us as women entrepreneurs and in like really embracing that feminine type that we are? Well, I think we're in the middle of just the most phenomenal uh, experiment ever. You know, women are just, we have taken this online world by storm, you know, all the Facebook groups and we're learning about ourselves. We're learning, uh, and, and if we're all honest, this is a great experiment in self-discovery and self-growth. If we're smart and we know that our business is an opportunity for our own evolution of consciousness, it isn't just making money. I mean, let's be honest, it's, it, there's something greater going on here. It's personal growth, it's personal development. Um, it's growing as a person, it's evolving, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, this this great experiment where we're talking to each other, we're, um, we're talking about what's important and we're talking about, hey, we're not gonna put up with this anymore. Uh, we don't have to, What what is the feminine voice? What is a balance? Because I think women are still struggling to find a balanced feminine voice. They've either thrown out the nurturer and they've gone to the, you know, the leader expert side, uh, or they've, you know, they've, everyone has to find their balance. So I think this is the, the conversations we're having are a work right. in progress. No, I definitely agree. And, you know, I think one of the things I like about this format and what I was able to do is I have a client that was really scared to go like do any videos. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be on Blab. Come on. And I think it helps. Um, some of us uh, like that are more introverted or more nervous about being on video to have this kind of a supportive environment, like to support each other as women business owners is the thing that I see really being powerful. I love what you said, because I think that um, for myself and my feminine type, I don't like it to be all about me. Okay. That's just, I know that's, an issue I have to, you know, it's been a struggle for me to just be the, the face of my business and be put myself out in yeah. front, you know, and I think that a, a lot of women must deal with that too. It's like, I it just, I don't want it to be about me. I don't want to feel like, you know, um, and so I love what you said, because I, I think that there's so many women that need to come forward with their voice and with what I call their their healing alchemy that they offer people, but they're afraid. They're afraid of being judged. They're afraid of being inadequate. They're afraid of being at, um, you know, they don't have the big Kim or Luna, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> troop right. that's putting you together. Like, um, I think everyone's just various levels of feeling inadequate with putting themselves out there. So I love what you said. I think you're spot on is that this joint, conversation is, is is about the collective the feminine collective right yeah and i mean i think also like this whole rotating seats is is another thing that's really helpful so like i'm gonna jump off now and let somebody else take my seat and then it's a ongoing conversation it's not like one person um dominating the conversation right i think there's some other people that want to jump in so i'm going to jump out and i'll keep watching i have to get some more water because i'm parched but i really appreciate it and i'll read your book thanks sarah okay. Bye. thank you give me give me more props before i leave come on Hook me up. Woo! No, <laughs> woo, 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 woo.
Thank you. Oh. Okay, so Adrian, do you want to jump in now? I agree that Blab is awesome, Tiffany. Um, so Adrian, so we can keep talking. So Adrian's going to talk to us about I can't remember what. I'm selling. I, I don't know. So what are, this what would does be, it matter? <laughs> have you, have you, so what does it matter? Have you been exactly. on topic yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is probably the most. Well, the storytelling was Christian, and and this is probably the most we've been on topic. But what what it would be great to do is I Lisa know said that you can't leave now. <laughs> we can't leave, <laughs> Lisa. Now I'm here. Just exactly. Forget your group, Lisa. They'll be fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so with um, with selling, and we've got Joy here talking about rocking your feminine type, it'd be a really nice uh, mix to have Joy stay on and to give your um, sort of input about how you, you know, coach women with selling. And I think that's a huge thing of people, women balancing the masculine and the feminine when they're trying to sell is a really tough thing to do. And, and a lot think that they're being aggressive when they're selling or it's just not it's just not nice. Whereas I see it, I've got a 20 years sales experience. So I see it as I'm helping someone. It doesn't make me feel gross at all. I'm like, I'm going to change your life. I'm going to change your life with my product when I was selling telecoms. Like that's a massive <laughs> stretch. <laughs> but I had to believe that, that I was improving somebody's situation. So, and for me, I'd never felt gross about it. And so, you know, I was good at my job until I hated it and didn't do any work. So I think... <laughs> <laughs> that That's always when, ruins it yeah <laughs> oh my god they expect me to work grateful <laughs> bastards i improve the office just by being you're here. here you're like yeah i'm here <laughs> aren't i <laughs> yeah. so yeah it'd be nice to get a perspective on both and um yeah so yeah just, so i just yeah, like talking about so i love talking about sales because i think it, it is really uncomfortable for lots of women um, and it doesn't really have to be. And I think it's all about how you look at the process. And I actually just had a call with someone this evening who, or this afternoon who needed help with their sales. And they're like looking at it so wrong. <laughs> like There's just like some simple shifts that we can do even about how you think about that process. So for me, it's a conversation, right? Like it's not this like gross process where I'm forcing someone into doing something or buying something that they don't want, right? It's, it's not, not manipulation. No. Yeah. <laughs> and I think because we all like can think back to a gross experience where we felt manipulated and then bought something or we had that experience at a car dealership, the typical car dealership salesman and we were like felt the pressure and it felt really gross. Um, that we just think that all people or all sales feel like that. And that's just not true. Like I'm, you know, a service provider. And so just having a conversation with someone about helping to me, it's just a conversation about helping them make the best decision for them, regardless of if it's yes or no to me. Like, I don't want someone to say yes or no, or I don't want someone to say yes to me if it's not the best decision for them. Right. Like it's, yeah. it doesn't have to feel so gross. And it has to feel like a conversation. Like I really hate programs that will give you a script because I think it's really unnatural and it makes people super uncomfortable and that they should be reading this script. And then, oh, the person didn't say what they were supposed to say here. So now what do I say? <laughs> like, yeah. No. And we've all like, been on the other end of a script. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like a call center sort of thing. And then they go silent and you're like, that's not a talk now. Script, yeah. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> And there's also manipulation tools, and I can't say that I haven't used them in my sales career, but things like going silent and, and letting the gap get so freaking uncomfortable. But I've had that done to me, and I had it done recently, and um, the girl said, so what are you thinking? I said, I'm thinking this is really awkward, and I'd like to get off the phone now, you know, like, <laughs> just really? Fuck off. And so I think, like, knowing and knowing what she was doing as well, I was just like, oh, my God, but there are tools that you can that you can learn and there are tools that are going to make that more comfortable without having to resort to tricks and tactics. Yeah. It's just a so natural think, conversation. Yeah, a natural conversation, but I think that it is important for you to lead that conversation, right? Like you have yes. to lead that conversation. So you have to be confident enough to lead that conversation. 
and I like having like a process. There's some, some things that I know I, I need to get out of that person or hear from that person to help them make a decision. But it's definitely not a script because I think that throws people off at, on both ends. You know, like I yeah. think if you're, if you're really uncomfortable with the sales process and then you use a script and things don't go the way the script goes, you're even worse off than when you started. And that's yeah. honestly who I was, I was talking to someone tonight, I'll spare her name or anything. Um, <laughs> but she was like, well, I was, I thought I was doing well. And then someone told me to use a script. And once I started using the script, like shit hit the fan, like it just wasn't yeah. happening, you know? And I was like, yeah, because you got to stop putting so much pressure on yourself too. Like this is not, it doesn't, it's not always supposed to be a yes either. And I think we put so much pressure on like, it's gotta be a yes, gotta be a yes, gotta be a yes. Yeah. And that's feel really got to screw up. Yeah. You've got to <laughs> screw up. Like I, like I've been in sales a long time and I remember on my first day in this job and it was cold calling and the owner of the company was standing there listening to me. I'm like, don't listen to me on the first day. I'm going to make a dick of myself. I'm going to call low, <laughs> low level people, get all of that awkwardness out of the way. And I actually said to him, you're actually just don't listen to me. And then on the yeah. second day, I nailed my patter, I had it down and was making sales. So yeah. just be prepared to make a dick of yourself and just put yeah. yourself out there, but do it to people that you don't care if they say yes or no. It's a lot of it's practice. You said a question totally. coming from Tiffany. Yeah. So you said, man, hitting on her. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Because my whole background is telecoms. So I had a lot of men hitting on me. And that's not even saying, that's not even bigging myself up because they were pigs, some of them. They're really like, and I went into this uh, office and the guy sat in his chair. I can't, I'm not going to show you because that's not nice. And he just sat back like this with his legs spread, showing me his goods. And I was just like, well, this is weird. And um, yeah, it happens quite a lot. And I just think, I, I actually complained to somebody when I first started in sales and I said, um, these guys, you know, I don't think they want my product. They're just hitting on me. And, and you just have to really, some of them are, and you just have to like, let them go. If, if they're not going to buy from you, I don't trade on my sexuality or anything. I just go in there as a, I just have a laugh and I would bring out the masculine side to balance that out because I worked with this girl and she flirted with everybody to get sales and then they stalked her because they thought that she wanted to sleep with them and everything was an innuendo and she was breathy and she was just like this. She was, and she'd be like, I'll bend over backwards to get this deal. And I'd just be like, Oh God. Yeah. The hair flick. Oh God. Hair flick and everything. And she'd wear like in the middle of winter, she'd wear a tiny little dress, but then a scarf, you know, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> like, Oh, you're really warm wearing that yeah, I'm so <laughs> cold but now I'm warm and you know but she made a shitload of sales but she also had guys following her afterwards because she'd led them on to get a sale and not I just worth really, it <laughs> no it's so not worth it so, so not much worth it yeah oh. so uh, in answer to your question Tiffany sometimes you just got to let those pervy bastards go and they're not your I don't know what you what are you selling like they're not your ideal customer if they're just gonna let you know leech all over you, event as planning a business services. owner, it's different. It's actually not different, you know, because if you set your standards of people that you want to deal with, a business owner or a salesperson, you're gonna start attracting those people. So if you're if you're just and I know, and I know that sounds like ridiculous because as a business owner, you're like, yeah, but I need the money coming in. But if you plan out who your ideal customer is, then you're going to start attracting those people. If you start dealing with lechy gross guys, then you're going to attract more of them. So you, I think you've really got to say who you want your people to be. What do you guys reckon? I want to, she says, as a business owner, I want to slap them. As a salesperson, I feel like I can run away. Um, I probably wouldn't slap them. But... <laughs> But a good put down never goes astray. And, you know, like I had, um, I had a standing up guy. for yourself. Yeah. yeah, exactly. A well-timed scathing look, you know, is just really just like check yourself, buddy, in your dreams. Um, yeah, verbally <laughs> call them out. Yeah, definitely. I had a guy and he was worth a lot of money in um, our business and he actually was very uh, instrumental in me doing very well. And but he sometimes would cross the line and he said once I was saying something about it's on my desk and he said I can imagine you on your desk and I just dropped the conversation didn't reply to him 
And then the next day he came back and apologized. I didn't have to say anything. I just left it and um, and didn't say anything. And then he apologized. And then we're out and my boss, we used to call him Fletcher the Lecher because he liked me. And um, <laughs> he, my boss said all of our um, emails are recorded and he never ever said something inappropriate again. So even as a salesperson or as a business owner, sometimes you can call other things in or talk about your husband, talk about your boyfriend. I've had a non-existent boyfriend on many occasions. Um, yeah, and just make that a really clear line. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Telecom I think it's full of gems. <laughs> Yeah, I used to be like one of the only females in my industry. So I got a plenty of that as well. Yeah. <laughs> and especially when you do well, guys don't like it when you beat them. And they're like, Roman doesn't wear knickers to her sales appointments. And I'm just like, you know what, say whatever you want. I just kicked your ass this year. You know, <laughs> you're on the board here. I'm up here. So knickers mm -hmm. or not, it's working for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, I just took us off track this there. That's, it's, <laughs> we're answering valid questions here. Yeah. That's, that's what the, we got to give the people what they want. That's what the blab exactly. is all about, right? Exactly. So what, what, what is um, question do you get asked a lot about? Like initial call and then follow up email then. Okay. Um, give the people what they want. So. <laughs> So um, I think for the sales process, do you want to answer that, Adrian? Yeah, I think it definitely depends on what you're selling, right? I think for me, if I'm selling like a high end, I'm a uh, consultant, coach, service provider. So my higher end one-on-one, -on -one, uh, that is going to be an initial sales call. Obviously, I need to talk to them first. I have like some questions that I pre-qualify them even for that call because I don't want to waste their time and they don't want to waste mine if if uh, we're not a good fit based on that even. So they kind of answer those questions first and then we get on an initial sales call. Um, some people will you know, decide right there. I hear a lot of people being like, I get people to give me their credit card on the phone. And for me, I've never done that. It just doesn't work. Like it doesn't feel good to me. So I don't do that. I want them to be really excited about it and be able to sign up the next day. I want them to still be excited the next day and not feel like they yeah. have to give me their card right now to make it a done deal. <laughs> so what will happen after that is I usually do a follow up email to and I tell them this on the phone so that they're not like, why'd she send me an email? We just talked. I'm like, I'm going to send you an email that kind of, you know, talks about what we talked about on this call, because I know that it's sometimes confusing to listen to someone when they're telling you my program includes this and this and this, and this is when you pay me. And this is like, it's a lot to get on yeah. a phone call. And so I tell them like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to follow this up with an email and I thank them in that email, obviously, and give them kind of a wrap up as well as um, I usually do some fast action bonuses because I do like people to make decisions one way or another. So if they decide within 24 hours or whatever it is that I've put on that, then, you know, they can follow up with, with their response to that email. Um, and then if they don't respond or if, you know, usually I try to get to a yes or a no on the call, but not making them pay on the call. Right. So I think just being indecisive sucks in general. And yeah. so <laughs> Like Definitely. if it's a no, it's a no. Like if it's a yes, it's a yes. And maybe they have to figure out where the money's going to come from, or they have to talk over with their husband or something like that. But if it's a yes, then we know what's happening moving forward. And if it's a no, that's, that's fine too. I think that's just as empowering is to have a yes or a no, right? Like, so that's really my goal on that sales call is to get a yes or a no. Um, I don't love getting an, I don't know, because it just doesn't feel like it's the right fit if they don't really know by that point. Yeah. So that's kind of like my process. And then if they have, you know, really the only follow up happens in terms of, you know, when they might be able to put the money together for our first payment or, you know, if they needed a, f I, I will offer like a follow up call if they have to go talk to husband or something like that. I'll say, well, you know, I'm happy to jump on the phone and answer any questions that either of you guys have. Um, on a follow-up call, we can do that on another call so that they feel really supported in that process. But um, that's for my very high end package too. Like pe people are investing thousands of dollars in me. I want to be <laughs> fully supported and answer all their questions before they do that, you know, for something that's 
a lower end product, I wouldn't do a sales call. I would just sell it in an email or on you my know, sales page. You know what it is as well. I think um, people think that the sales process, you're sort of starting out cold, whereas the sales process is a lot to do with your entire marketing. Well, I call it the love tunnel. And it's yeah. bringing people in and making them feel loved and getting them to that level. So when you start your sales process, that's why it is a natural conversation because it's just an evolution of the journey that they've already been on with you. It's not like you're starting out cold going, hey, well, have I got a deal for you? Because you, you've you already pre-qualified them with your marketing material and you're pushing them down towards this. So it's not like it's out of the blue. It's a surprise what you're actually offering them. I think that's quite an important yeah. thing as well. If you've done the pre-work, that's that's mm -hmm. your pre-selling sort of phase well and braun i don't know about you but how i would approach hiring a, an event planner is a little bit different than me hiring a coach mm -hmm. me hiring a coach yeah. i'm going to follow you know i'm going to listen to your podcasts or your webinars or your blabs your 25 like you know blabs. that person already yeah exactly yeah. and then i'm going to jump on a call whereas if i'm going to um hire an event planner i'm going to shop around Thank you. I'm going to talk to probably three, four, five, six. Okay, my number's five. I'll just be honest. I'll probably talk yeah. to five. And it's going to be based on something different than my hiring coach. So I see it being a little bit different how they need to follow up. Oh, yeah. Naomi, sorry, can I interrupt you for a second? Can, are you able to put a headphone in? Because it's echoing on every one. Yes, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I've got something in my eye as well. I need to go and get this thing in my eye. I've been trying to really, I'm like, I really need to rinse my eyeball. Back in a second, hold on. Talk about yourself. Yeah, so the question over here now is, can you repeat what you would do if they don't reply to, reply to that initial email? So I do think that what Naomi was saying is really true. And, and Joy, you can back me up on this too, if you think that's true. I think that for an event planner, you're going to shop around probably, and you don't have as much access as you would to like a coach or something like that to really follow them. <laughs> um, but yeah, like Sarah says, I'd be looking for referrals for sure. Um, that's kind of, you know, where I would even start is with referrals. Like who do I know that might know an event planner, right? I'm not probably going to trust the internet as much <laughs> with that. So it is like a lot of referral. Um, so, so I guess Tiffany answer in the box, in the, in the chat box, like on that call, on that initial sales call, are you, um, hearing like I'm going to shop around and then you send an email and then you don't hear anything back. Is that typically what's happening on those sales calls on those initial sales calls for you? Um, because there's some things that you could probably fix on that sales call. If someone jumps out, she can ask this questions on screen and that's, that's true. Um, Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, Tiffany, if you want to jump in, or I think um, I think after me, I think Lisa is maybe in here. Who is next? Megan. I have the sheet pulled up. <laughs> You'll be back in an hour and 20. Cool. <laughs> I'll be asleep probably. <laughs> it's nighttime over here. So I would, um, yeah, love to hear more about... Yeah, she will let you in when she comes back. I would love to hear more about kind of how that process is happening for you. Are they coming um, Are they coming back and saying, I'm shopping around? Or are they just falling off the face of the earth once you send them that email? Like really, okay. what does that look like after that call? So what I'm going to do is I've got two people that want to get into the hot seat. So Tiffany, I'm going to bring in just for a couple of minutes because then – for 10 minutes and then I'm going to bring Megan in because it's Megan's turn to talk next. So hold on, Megan, I just, I'll jack and jump off too. I oh, know you're all right. If you're, if you're happy to stay on, okay. Let me know. Um, but Megan, I'll bring you in in a couple of Tiffany. minutes. So hey. how cool is this? Hey, <laughs> what's up with Rob? Yeah. So it's really cool. <laughs> I'm actually like a true like salesperson. So event sales is a lot different from selling another product. I could probably yeah. bust into another uh, industry and actually probably be just fine because I'm a little bit heartless, um, which is why I like, you know, kind of, I think was it Naomi? I don't know. I like what she was kind of saying because I feel like I'm a sassy gal. 
But anyways, uh, <clears throat> really what it is is like I call, uh, I in, I'm informative on the services that I provide, uh, and then it's just kind of the information is out there. Now, I'm calling a variety of people, some people who may be having events coming up, some people who don't have events coming up. So maybe those are some of the pre-qualifying questions that can be asked. It's kind of like how you were saying in your initial call, you know, to know, which, you know, kind of where the, the strategic pipeline is of like what happens next, if then that type thing. Um, but I mean, that's kind of what I'm getting. I am, you know, I do let them know I'm going to send you an email with a little more information, things Sorry, like that. Sorry, can I but interrupt I, you? Sure. There's a massive echo, um, and so, uh, yeah, I think everybody needs to have headphones when they come on. Have you got headphones there, Tiffany? Um, I don't think it's a headphone issue. I think it's a blab issue, and I think um, we probably all need to refresh our screen. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I'm going to lose it if we do that. I think it'll, you'll lose, Brian, you will lose it. It will end it if you. Oh, okay. I won't do that then. Yeah, just try putting <laughs> headphones in and see if that fixes it. And I've still got something in my eye, so I'm going to end up with a big red eye by the end of it. <laughs> you're going to come back to the community tomorrow with pink eye. <laughs> Look what I did for you all. <laughs> Gouging my eye out. <laughs> oh I was gosh. just going to say something about sales. In terms of, I don't think we should be convincing anybody of, of buying our products. If you, what you've given them already isn't uh, like, like let's say someone gets my book and then they buy my ideal client boot camp, which is, you know, a couple hundred dollars. If that isn't, you know, the, in other words, your what you offer them at those low end prices should be enough for them to know whether they want to keep going with you. Like if you're convincing them to go further, you're going to be convincing them throughout the whole time with them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, think that's an interesting I just don't think sales works well that way. You know, I, if you should stand on your material that you're offering. I think that's an interesting point. I guess what I do is it's a little bit um, more abstract than that. You know, I offer like a ton of services. And I couldn't be like, I guess I could be like, oh, our services range from X amount to this amount or something like that. Um, but like, I actually sell event planning services. So like, so are you cold calling? Is that, are you cold calling? How are you getting cold these call leads? a little bit more? Um, but I do do a lot of warm um, calls. I do work off of my you know relationships and referrals and things like that. But like when I'm trying to get to that next level, you know, like, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, how do I get to that next level, which is why I, I came on to this um, broadcast, because I really want to know what you all suggest on getting to that next level. You know, I'm still in infant stages, you know, so how do I get to that intermediate stage? You know, like, do I need to make more calls? Do I need to do more social media? Um, like, what what is that? I think for you, it's um, how do you get there quickly and social media, although visibility is great, how often are people planning events? It's not very often. So if I were you and I was starting from scratch and I wanted to ramp my business quickly, I would look to see who I could partner with and and get in that way. So instead of you trying to find people that are planning events just by doing a blanket thing what other people have complimentary services that you can partner with and give a kickback to for putting you forward and your services forward. And that cuts out all the legwork of you trying to find people that are actually doing planning an event because it doesn't happen very often. Um, get in with big corporates and because they're going to have established relationships with event planners. But if you can try and do that, that's going to, you know, it's going to save you a whole I guess another lot. question... Yeah. Another question is, who is your end consumer? Are they like a uh, average human like me, or are they like bigger players that have events no, all no, the time? I, yeah, is I, that I've, I've got like a, I've got I've got different pipelines. I've got you know the venue pipeline who always has events rolling in, things like that. Um, I also have the direct you know corporate planner who's planning their event and they need some assistance. Then I've got just like your regular kind of mommies who are planning their kids' birthday parties, their mitzvahs, sweet sixteens, quinceañeras, stuff like that. So it's 
kind of I would that. almost I would almost be inclined to just focus on like one of those really hardcore like be known as like the person who plans venue events, right? Versus like, oh, I'm doing a birthday party tomorrow, but I planned this club <laughs> event yeah. last night. Like it kind of spreads you thin and doesn't give you like this expert name for yourself. Whereas if I was like, that's my wedding, like if I'm hiring a wedding planner, I don't want someone who's like done the children's birthday party down the street and also did a club last night. Like I want a wedding planner, right? Yeah. Like, and I think that's true for like anything is like really niche down and get like so freaking good at that one thing that you're like the go-to girl for that one thing yeah definitely that would be yeah. my advice to like bump it up <laughs> that's sound advice thank you <laughs> yeah yeah i like yeah. it <laughs> and, and follow us or follow me or join our group i don't know if you're in moxie um entrepreneur but like we're all it's in there group? You, like you can you can there's it. a facebook group that yeah. Braun, uh Posts I'll put the and, link. Uh, yeah, I put the okay. link to mine, and Adrian also has a group. So you put, I'll put the link to mine. You put the link to yours, and you can join our groups. And okay, I can't spell. I'm, I actually need glasses because I keep going like this, like glasses and a black eye, <laughs> which I am today. There you go. So there's some Oxy Entrepreneur, um, and Adrian's got a um, a group as well, which is yeah, they are amazing entrepreneurial playgrounds. Thanks, Lila. Um, yeah, so I think that would be that would be like my best advice right now to like get you to the next level is like really hone in and focus on the one that you like really love to do. I don't know if there's one that's like that's your thing, um, mm -hmm. but be known for that thing. Let okay. me find yeah. a stupid link. I'll put it in the chat box when I. I'm gonna make sure it's the right. Here we go. Yeah. Find this call. Uh, yeah. How did you find this call? I mean, it was just, it was already, I was in the list of things. I usually scroll through to see which one uh, oh, is most cool. beneficial to me. It's actually kind of hard because, like, there's, there's several that might be going on at once. But, um, yeah, like, um, I guess I'm, you know, female power, woman power, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're after. And you know so what it is, cool. is that I read so many books, um, and most of them come from the male perspective. And I was just saying to someone the other day, like, where are the female sales books at? You know, like, where are they? And, you know, when you ask a man about it, he says, oh, the sales technique is the same and blah, 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 blah. Which I understand kind of the building blocks are, but I think the hurdles are a little bit different and the different things that we encounter are different than what the, you know, uh, most men deal with. You know, like, it's okay for them to cuss out their clients, you know, but it's really not okay for us to cuss our clients out. I mean, maybe in some platforms, you know, in some markets it is, but... You know, not to say that anybody should be doing that, but I have heard. When you say cuss them out, what do you mean? I mean, be more aggressive and, you know, like say, you know, you know, are, are you going to do this or not? You have to go, you know, call your wife, you know, pick up, you know, put your, put your, put your, um, you know, big girl panties on. <laughs> Bron says that all the time to her clients. <laughs> She'll get off the top, basically. You know she can do not. that because she has an accent. For some reason, anyone I know, accent, right? Like, like you could say, like, you know, like anything. You're a piece of crap, and like it sounds like. Oh, and I'm right. like, sign me up. Sign yeah, me up. Sign yeah. Me up. <laughs> <laughs> You guys have an accent. I just talk normally. <laughs> Naomi said she's going to start using your accent, too. It even sounds pretty when you say fuck off. <laughs> it, does. it does sound really pretty when you say that. It makes me jealous. That <laughs> That's so funny. I've, I've put yeah. up with um, jokes about my accent for years. And, and when I was in London, they were like, Bronwyn, Bronwyn, say pen. I'm like, pen. And they're like, say fish and chips. I'm like, oh, piss off. <laughs> <That's> hilarious. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I'm glad you guys are doing this. I'll sign up on Facebook and everything of that sort. Um, and um, yeah, Adrian, if you do something where it's like kind of like you know more salesy things like that, I would love to learn more about that. Let's talk for sure. I'd love to. I'd love to connect with you. I think it's. I think you got to stand your ground. <laughs> Don't cuss anybody out but still be confident in what you do, because, especially if you're getting hit on, you know, I think that that is part of the, part of the thing. We lost Braun. <laughs> oh okay. my gosh. But yeah, cool. join my Facebook group. I'm in there all the time. So awesome. I'll, I'll connect with you in there. Awesome. Thanks ladies. You're welcome. Oh, you know what, Joy, before I go, I was going to say like, 
I, it's just an idea to throw out there, but I bet you could put that checklist on like Fiverr or something like that and have people come on there and they pay like, you know, five bucks to take the quiz. And it could also be like a leader into buying your book too, because they may want to learn more about that. I just I don't know if that would work, but just kind of throw that out. There. I yeah. love that. I mean, yeah, I love you can that. monetize on 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 you know what you can. So, and um, if, you look, if you're looking for affiliates, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I can push that for you. But I, I guess I need to read it too, so I'll go order that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love it. Thank you. Uh, no sweat. Thanks, Tiffany. Okay. And yeah, I agree. Like um, having an opt-in is far better than trying to, um, I mean, not for a book so much because that can be your opt-in, but having some sort of free thing. There's a free seat here now, Megan, if you want to come in. Yeah, having a, um, a you know, a lead-in. But do you have an email marketing program that you're doing at the moment? You've probably got a big list that you're marketing out to, Joy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, what, tell me the question again. So <laughs> she wasn't listening to you. Email list. Are you listening to the radio? Are you watching like TV or something over there? I, I'm sorry. Can I listen to it again? Um, so do you have a, you've been around for a little bit doing the Rock Your Feminine Type. So do you have a list that you right. mark it out to and how do you handle that? Like building your list? You know what? I, I, I'm, I'm technically, that's not one of my strengths, you know, to like, Build your list. I know that's what you're supposed to do, but I'm busy writing books <laughs> and just working with my people. So I got to be honest, you know, I mean, I'm, I have a list. I do telesummits and what have you, but I'm really just focused on um, working with my people. And yeah, sure. I, I, I do my, like, like, I don't know, sometimes when I go to my email, I see, you know, someone's doing it like two or three times a week. I'm like, I'm lucky if I do it two or three times a month. I mean, like, crazy so yes yes yeah no. <laughs> cool so um i think and nomi just said that's one of the ways yeah definitely there's a lot of ways to grow your business and um that's just one of the ways and you know social media for yeah. um for authors is amazing and if you've got a publishing house that can give you publicity as well that's also amazing so yeah, there's lots of different ways yeah 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 and welcome to the conversation megan hi hi hello how oh, are you, thank you. Um, what were we going to talk about? I can't actually remember. Let me have a look at my Excel spreadsheet. How to say no. Oh, I like that. Do you, do you want to know how I say no? I'm just like, no. Like I have a feeling you say fuck no a lot. <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> Hell well, no. Which I think is a very good option. Exactly. Yeah. Two hands even better. <laughs> no. You know, um, a big thing that I have learned um, is – to not explain when I do say no, it's to not explain. I'm just like, no, that doesn't actually suit me. I think that yeah. that's kind of like that's like high level knowness. I think. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. what I what I see a lot of uh, my clients do is they need kind of the beginning no, and yep. and you know like the like they need to kind of dip their toes in the no water we're so used to saying yes to everything including like i'm going to make cookies for the pta and the the bake sale and i'm going to you know i get asked all the time to volunteer on committees and um you know now my kids want to be in 16 sports or I have clients that want to pick my brain, um, those kinds of things. And, and am I echoing? Am I echoing? Yeah. Yeah. I have my headphone in. I know. I think it's weird. I think it's blab now. Yeah. Do you, want to re, do you want to refresh, Megan, and see if that makes a difference? Sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Naomi said, do you want to borrow mine? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh we've lost her. Just you and me. <laughs> so I still hear an echo, though. It's not her. Maybe it's me. Here she comes back. Can you hear an echo now still? Is there still an echo? Um, you know what? I'm actually going to kick um, Joy off. Bye, Joy. Joy. Because she's got poor internet connection, and that might have been what was doing it. I don't know. Can you still hear an echo now? I hear yes, an echo of you. Maybe it's I, Is it better or no? 
Which is still bad echo. I think it is you. It totally is you, bro. Sorry. 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 Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you're going to do this for like another <laughs> few hours though without talking. <laughs> Freshen up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what were we talking about? Saying no. Oh, the, lo your the lower level no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the, the dip your toes in no. I mean, Bron's obviously a star with the no. Um, but I think that we don't we don't say no enough to be able to say yes to the stuff we really want to do. And um, I think that we don't say no because we have this guilt factor. Is it still really echoey? Not on my end. I don't know who it is for them. No? Okay. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Echoey, yes. Everyone's saying yes, it is. there is an echo. Yeah. There's an echo. It's not just you, Bron. I think it's all yeah, of us. If it's, if it's for everyone, I'm coming back. I'm so sick of it. I'm so five years old. Okay, I don't. I'm gonna refresh. Hopefully, we don't lose everyone. Adrian's the only one not echoing. Refresh. Hello, everyone. Am I not echoing for you? <laughs> Thanks for the hands while I'm here <laughs> alone. Yay, no echo. I'll just do the show alone. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? It's way better. Like a boss. Is there an echo now? Hello. Is there an echo? Hello. 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 I got word from the audience they were ready for me to do it by myself. So I appreciate I appreciate you coming back, but it was really unnecessary. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> And yes, there's our strawberries in my water because I'm posh. <laughs> I worked so hard to get the damn time zone thing figured out that I, I messed aren't mine be here. <laughs> I tell you, that thing last night, and I did it last night and I was tired, and I had a spreadsheet, half started, and then I lost it. <laughs> and then, um, so I had to do it again. And I was just like, I don't even know if this is right, and I'm putting it out there. Everyone check their own fucking times. <laughs> I yeah. thought it was brilliant and a hell of a lot of work. And so yeah, thank you. And I think this whole thing just, I've been watching for probably an hour and a half. It's really cool. <laughs> it was really yeah. cool. To, and to see the people in the Facebook group that comment a lot and, and are engaged, like in real life is, is pretty magical. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's, that's why I really like Blab is because it's not, it's not about one person. It's like, and that's why I really like Facebook groups is because everybody has a superpower, talent, skills that we can all share. And that whole Together We Rise thing that I've just created recently, and I just think, you know, it's we all have things that we can help other people with, and that's why I love this platform way more than Periscope. Yeah, yeah Periscope can get so awkward. Um yeah it's just not as conversational as like and this just keeps good conversation going and it can go so many different places whereas even on a periscope like i like doing periscope for certain topics where i'm just like on and off you know because on blab it seems like i could be on here forever <laughs> because i'm just like <laughs> hanging out with my friends like i should just get a drink and have you know hang out for a while um but even on periscope like even when it's really engaging sometimes it's still like all right, I'm I'm done here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. <laughs> well, I've never done a Periscope because I felt like I would just kind of blather on and fill space. And so, as soon as I think you run when posted about um, Blab and how you loved it, and I went and checked it out, and I thought this is way better. This is yeah. This is. A conversation. But it can also it can also be way worse. <laughs> tell me more. Tell me more about that. I think that Braun and I like watched a few like really bad ones that oh, were like yeah. the same ones. And the problem is that we still have to understand that there's an audience here. And sometimes mm -hmm. there's the tendency to forget that when you're like in a room with four other people. And like I've been on labs where I'm like, what are they even talking about? Like what is yeah. what is the point here, right? <laughs> and I get bored yeah. and I leave. 
So I think that there's the danger of not remembering that there was a real conversation <laughs> to be had. <laughs> Tiffany just said, I think it's annoying when people don't follow the agenda. They don't follow that at all today, at all. Is that a hint? Because that's just rude. <laughs> yeah, screw you, Tiffany. We like you before. <laughs> Who invited you? <laughs> no, we love you, Tiffany. You're right. But we do have a good topic. Um... That's the point. I'll just jump off with no, with no uh, parachute. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, somebody said I'm wearing a beige top. This is not beige. It's pink and sparkly. It doesn't look it from over here. <laughs> it looks like you're it's naked not. a little bit. It's not the right light for that top. <laughs> and it, you know, it does just look brown. Exactly. Look at our it does look brown. Well, it's designer. I found it in an op shop yesterday and I was like, oh, that'd be good for the blab. Pink and oh, you bought it for the blab? That's so funny. <laughs> no, well, I bought it from the op shop. No, I, I was going to say that I bought it just because I bought it. It doesn't fit me properly. It's actually like like a crop top and I've got a belly. It's short. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not meant to be short. It's meant to be long, but it's too small. So it's like a crop top. And I was like, well, they can't see my belly on the thing. So it's, the per- it's the perfect top for an online entrepreneur because yeah. <laughs> you never see anything exact here. Oh, Adrian, was- you said earlier when I showed up in a dress and I was like. <laughs> oh, someone said we're starting to lose it. More than sex to other women. Here are my kids. Buy my shit. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like shit bitches. Yeah. How else do you um, sell it, right? <laughs> exact well, exactly. That's how you sell, Tiffany. <laughs> That's how women sell. <laughs> Book your event. <laughs> women women's sales is totally different. Let us show you how. <laughs> yeah. Starts with a shimmy. Sales it starts with a shimmy. So Megan, talk to us about saying no. We're obviously not very well, good at saying that's super exciting no. right now. After no, it is. It's really good. <laughs> no, when to say no. That was a um, that was a, an <laughs> advert campaign that ran in New Zealand. And some girls need to watch that advert again. Dirty bitches. So anyway, um, <laughs> talking about how to say no, I think it's really important because as women, we are people pleasers. And sometimes we've just got to say no. That does not suit me. Does not suit my plans. And I don't even like you. I think the fear of saying, the fear is that we're going to feel this tremendous amount of guilt when we do say no. And that can happen. But usually the relief over saying no becomes so much more powerful than that guilt ever does. And so it starts to kind of become heady almost, I think, with um, you kind of own your power in really small ways but when you say no to little things at first and it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger as you do it more because um if you start kind of with a low-hanging fruit um if you're if you're kind of one of those people pleasers or the woman with the book before joy i think was talking about nurturer and how things can kind of get away from you a little bit because you are a nurturer because you're you kind of subscribe to the people pleaser kind of thing and what happens is we fear more the guilt than and and we put ourselves aside for other people to feel better about themselves than we do about our our own selves. And Brene Brown has this great um, quote about a moment of discomfort beats a lifetime of resentment. Nice. And that's really what we're feeling when we when we say no is this moment of discomfort. Oh my gosh, they're going to be mad at me. They're not going to like me anymore. They're not going to invite me again. But really, when you think about that lifetime of resentment and how that can build up over time and how much energy it takes to feel resentment, yeah, it's time to make a choice. So, And you know what? It's actually not fair to the other person as well. I'm just going to say a quick question. Doesn't it have a lot to do with knowing your own boundaries? Yeah, definitely. But it's also knowing that other person, because if you don't ask, you don't get. And then if they ask you and you say yes, but you really meant no, and then you're like, how dare you ask me? And that's like then that's actually on you, not on them for asking in the first place. So you're being more fair to the other person by saying no than if you are by trying to please them and doing a shit job by saying yes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is, you know, you do a half-assed job and now all of a sudden you feel guilty 
because mm -hmm. not only did you say yes when you meant no, then you do a half-assed job. So then you have to feel guilty about doing the half-assed job. Yeah. And if you would have just said no in the first place, I can't, I don't have time. Sorry. But I like what you said too about not explaining that no does not, no is not, no is a statement. It's yeah. not the beginning of a statement. It is a statement with a period. So I think that the first time you do this though, it is terrifying and you feel this intense buildup of, oh my God, I have to explain myself. Who do I think I am that I can say no? And so I think that you have to have the wherewithal to get through that discomfort again. It's really yeah. about kind of owning that discomfort, saying it's going to be a little uncomfortable and it's not going to kill me. And I'm going to be able to be better on the other side of this. And Danielle Laporte, who I love, um, says that if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And so she kind of takes it even farther. So she's like the prima donna of saying no, where she's she a says, prima donna <laughs> She really says, you know, if if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And and it's that black and white for her. And I don't know that that's that realistic in our lives, especially with family, especially when, you know, your mom, you have these know, really ingrained, that, <laughs> <laughs> you have these ingrained relationships that just can't seem to be changed. Well, the only way those change is when you are the one who steps out of that, that dance that you do with people. And doing that is to start saying no. And you're going to tick people off, but Sometimes they're also going to understand like you. Also a problem with um, beginning entrepreneurs, especially, who, um, who feel like if they say no, it's also going to be a money block, um, to use a, an overused uh, term there. But <laughs> if I say no, I'm not going to make money or you know or I mean, I'm desperate for money so I have to say yes and yeah. there you set a precedent when you do that so you have to be really careful in the beginning I think not to set that precedent that I'm willing to do this for money now but when I make a lot of money I'm not going to do this anymore it's sort of like okay. um, in a relationship you have to make sure that anything that you're willing to do in the beginning you're going to be willing to do throughout and if yeah, I have a problem with that. <laughs> You can't sell something for 2000 I, I rode oh, on the back of the motorcycle three Ron. times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing your dishes now, so don't expect me to do them later. Birthdays and, and Christmas. <laughs> not even. For your birthday, I will buy you a dishwasher, and for Christmas, I will buy you somebody else. <laughs> no. But, no, but I, I really think that that's, that's a huge thing when you're starting out is this fear that one – People are not going to like you because you said no, and yeah. and you said no to money. Yeah, you know. And so now, when I come back with something else, they're going to say they're going to they're going to they're going to think that I'm either greedy or that I'm picky or that I'm this or I'm that. Nobody knows what your money situation is. So yeah. you say no as much as you need to, and if it is because you're desperate for money, people are going to smell that and you're going to resent it yeah and i think also I think your brand is so important who you align yourself with so when and somebody said no to me the other day as well bitch no <laughs> but um, <laughs> Wrong way, I'm but doing i this. told you about that i don't do that <laughs> we can't, not on christmas, christmas not on your birthday <laughs> oh, everyone yeah, everyone can dignity can see you but they can't hear you I but can tell you. I, I can hear you. I can hear you, but I can't see you anymore. You, you can't see me. No. No, bro. Like it's like you're the voice of Oz. Right. You sound like your God. Like, hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Listen, what? I've got my heater on and it's making my face shiny. Um, we can't see yeah, it anymore. Anyway. Oh, good, because it's a bit red. Um, yeah, it's I mean, fantastic, by the way. I've been meaning to talk to you about that outfit. The gray is. <laughs> oh, you're coming She's back. Coming back. Somebody good. asked a question in the um, the comments about why do we feel that we need to explain ourselves? And my first my first kind of thought on that was, I don't feel like I need to explain myself. But then I thought anymore, and I think that that's almost a habit that that we that we 
you know, the no is a statement, but then we always feel like we have to explain ourselves. But when you stop doing that and it really is a conscious choice, there's no like checklist or like, I haven't found a meditation and I haven't found any way to, to like not feel guilty in the beginning. But I think what happens is you, you stop needing to explain when you decide that you are worth more than what they're asking for. Yeah. And, and how do you explain that? Like, okay, no, Beth, I don't want to be on this committee. I mean, really, the full answer is no, Beth, I don't value your committee enough to be on it and to take the time to do it. That's not fair. So what we actually do is why lie. Why be on your committee? <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> we lie. We say, oh, I'm just too busy or um, I'm already on this other committee and I can't do it. So really, when you just say, no, I'm sorry, I'm not available. That's actually way more kind than the truth is, which is I don't value you, value what you're offering me and, and asking me to do. Now, in terms of clients and saying no to clients, you always get that feeling with a client. Yeah. That's going to be the giant pain in your ass. <laughs> usually they're one of your first clients and they're usually ones that you feel desperate and you take anyway. Please listen to that feeling. And even if you need the money, if you think you have that feeling with somebody, go get a job somewhere else if you have to. Yeah, then definitely. compromise your instinct and, and your gut feeling of who you want to work with and don't. That's not, you're not being fair to yourself and you're certainly not being fair to that client. So, yeah, there you go. Oh, hi. I'm <laughs> So, so Darren from Proggers here. Yeah. Yay. Hi, Darren. Got like a bit of fan thing, like, oh, come in, come in. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Darren. He has a has, has a juggling a four year old. So. How do you juggle a four year old? Carefully. Carefully. Health and safety. For the five and seven year old. <laughs> So the other thing like about saying no is that like that really helped me was in my personal life was thinking like, am I so narcissistic to think that like the event will be ruined if I say no to go like, no, like, and I think that yeah. we do that to ourselves all the time. Like, oh, I have to go to this thing because she invited me or have to go to her wedding. Like her wedding is not going to be ruined if you're not there. I'm sorry. Like, stop being so narcissistic and just say no if you don't want to go. I know Sarah was invited to a wedding where she had to pay to go, and she didn't go, and I think it was ruined. <laughs> I heard that. It was in the comments <laughs> for that one. My wedding was ruined because Sarah didn't go. Yeah. I, and sometimes it's good to do a clean out though. I said no to go to a wedding and then now we're not friends because I didn't go to a wedding. I'm just like, well, that's just well, that was crazy, right? It was clear out, yeah. yeah exactly. It's a clear out. Exactly. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Let's just so let I don't know if you guys down. noticed, but Tiffany mentioned, Tiffany asked earlier about um, her rush to whether or not she should be in a rush to get her business started because she does want to start a family in the next two to four years. So. I think you can answer that, Tiffany. That's a very personal thing, I think. It's only, it's everyone has their own path and journey. I sound like a life coach. I could be a coach right now. I think journey. that a lot of, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs <laughs> have babies, though. Yeah. I think a lot of people yeah. in business have babies. So I think that you can't, like, say that that's, that would be, like, a, a, oh. a block, like, to say, like, <laughs> if I have a baby, I won't be able to grow my business, right? Like, but it's a really good block if you want to avoid having a baby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, that's where I am, Braun. That's what I'm oh, doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not I've right. I've got the business to think of. I've got the cats. I've got the dog. I can't have a child. <laughs> <laughs> second oh, much. Yeah, yeah. You know, with the pressure. It's the same pressure you've had anywhere, just like Adrian said. It's, you were going to have that pressure anyway. So yeah. You got to do what you want to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you've got a good schedule so that, I mean, babies obviously are not going to adhere to your schedule, but you would know that. My, know, mine will. Mine's going to be on time. <laughs> on time for everything. But, you know, I'm there's, there's also, you know, children's cycle now, so you can get a lot of work done. <laughs> I don't have children, but I do advise people on it. 
Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm really good. Not to have them. I was with my friend the other day, and she, um, her kids were mental, like going crazy, and they're my god kids, so I love them. Um, so I don't love everybody's kids. Some kids are little shits, but their kids are brilliant. And their kids are brilliant. And um, just because they're white. Yeah. Oh no, nobody's on here that I don't like their kids. And um, and yeah, some of them are just like really, and they're just like Look at her, and I'm like, I am. And, I'm impressed. Anyway, so her kids were like jumping around and then she said, don't you regret not having children? And I'm just looking at her kids and I looked at her and I was like, no, like seriously, <laughs> <laughs> what are you like? <laughs> don't take They're advice saying, from Don't take advice from you. <laughs> I just have to wait and go. <laughs> uh, no, no, I will kill your plants. I, I will nurture your children and kill your plants. <laughs> Well, Tiffany um, asked another that. question. Morning routine. Yeah. No, I don't. I get up and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I do a couple of uh, coffee calls. Yes. Uh, I've, started, I've started working on <laughs> bed. I coffee. <laughs> Hook me up. I've started just leaving a laptop by the bed and I just roll over and I'm like, <laughs> that's the routine. <laughs> that's my routine. Like, I honestly, this is so bad for your brain waves. I sleep with my phone. <laughs> I, like, because I don't have a boyfriend. I'm just like, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And then I wake it's up in the morning. Horrifying. That's the first thing I do is push the dog out of the way and reach for my phone. Mm -hmm. Sad don't life. Right here. Pick another. Just <laughs> Sarah's I do a rollover have... routine. You can sell that <laughs> shit in the book. <laughs> It's true because I I actually am a morning miracle advocate. I do the morning mir miracle morning uh, by Hal Elrod. I love him. Um, so I am, you know, Tiffany, I probably have a better answer than everyone else in this room. Um, <laughs> if you do say so yourself. <laughs> Tiffany, you're reading uh, Miracle Morning. I actually had him on my podcast as well. I had Hal on the podcast because I just love his work. And I think it's huge for people who want, who want to get a good start on their day and have real intention in the morning, just doing something that works for you. So I do uh, practice the Miracle Morning. I think that that's really big. And I like to do exercise, at least some form of it in the morning. I'm not a big meditator at all. Like my brain just doesn't work like that. And I think that's, that's part of my podcast is like really unveiling that success habits are very personalized, but like really doing something for you in the morning versus like letting the day run itself sometimes and doing the rollover routine. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> but it's working for lots of people too. I think that knowing your day and knowing your energy levels is really powerful too. Like if you're not a morning person, well, maybe you're an evening person or maybe you have <laughs> the rollover routine is money. Maybe you have um, <laughs> something that you do later in the day or something to like really take that time for you. But I do agree with like getting the, uh, the blood pumping, even if it's just like one minute of like jumping jacks i don't care right like it's proven to to or be coffee. more powerful for your day i do coffee as well but after i'm sure hal doesn't have four run to hal the actually <laughs> does hal has uh two small children actually so darren maybe you need to talk to him <laughs> does he have a nanny I, I think he's a stay at, i think he's a stay-at-home wife okay i want to bring darren in so um who am i kicking off i'll pop out i can go Look, we're all okay. getting close to Darren. Oh, yeah. Darren. Darren takes up the space of three women. Nice. <laughs> You're a wanted a next, Darren. Do yeah, ego boost. Right. Somebody leave. They all leave. <laughs> bye. Somebody Everyone's like, bye. Get out. With several children. Okay. I'm going to have to leave soon. I have to go watch a zombie show if I have time. <laughs> Darren, we wanted you on, but you're not as important as a zombie show. Darren, you oh, even got your mic ready. Look at that like whole right setup. Look Sorry. at us losers you, with our head things in, and you're I like know. a professional. I oh, know you've got. Are you recording well. pro lot pro blogger right now? Sorry, I missed that. Are you recording? No, no, not now. <laughs> <laughs> Although this you has should, been very funny. We would be amazing on your show. We would be incredible. You guys could be my oh. after party next time on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're no, a different color no, no. one that stands out more on camera. I'm just learning this stuff. Very cool. I, I, 
when I came in, I was lurking actually before and I came in and you were talking about not doing things at the start of your marriage that you wouldn't want to do at the end and I was just like hooked. <laughs> <That's my job. laughs> I that yeah, don't, don't go into it, right? <laughs> I did the business that at some point you just can't take it back. So yeah. I used to make, I had this boyfriend when I was 20-something, uh, not that I'm not 20-something now, people. No, um, five years ago. <laughs> but again and again until somebody laughs at me. Um, but I used to make him bag lunch. I would wake up before he went to work and I would make him a bag lunch. And one day I decided that I was not going to do that. That's not a weird, that's, that's not a weird term for something, right? Like that's yeah. really, that really no. happened. No, yes. <laughs> Let me bag your lunch, baby. <laughs> baby, I told you I don't like bag lunch in the morning. <laughs> No, but and then one day I slept in. Bagged it every day before work. Like, Where's my lunch? And I was just like in the fridge. And he's like, "Well, no, you make it for me." I was like, oh, "No, I don't." And he got me like this. And then I just decided I was never going to do that again. And I think that that's. I mean, and I had the same thing with a client where I did something for the client at a reduced rate, and then when they came back to me for the exact same type of thing. I explained to them that was a beginner's rate and now we're into real money. And they were like, uh, you know that I can hire somebody in uh, no, China. No more monopoly money here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could, but you're not going to get me. So you're going to get what you paid for, except, you know, the first time where I gave you something that was worth more than you paid for. But other than that, <laughs> you're going to get what you paid yeah. for. It's you building know. value into what you do because I've done that before and I had a client and I um, stayed late. I used to work in an agency in London. They work you to the bone and um, I would stay late. I'd just go the extra mile, not that extra mile, like the other extra mile. <laughs> and um, <laughs> just did so much for this client and we had a really good working relationship and they were with me for four years. But when it came time, I said, hey, can you write me a reference? And I made him get on LinkedIn because he wasn't on there. I was like, write me a reference. And he was like, she did everything with a good heart. And I'm like, are you serious? That's my reference? I've given you a years. <laughs> write something better than that. Bloody hell. Yeah. Are you um, juggling children over there? Yeah. Yeah. Are you just yeah. pushing them out of the way of the camera? It's just like, like go, them go. A bit? <laughs> You don't want to hear these ladies. Yeah, you're like, you can't hear this. It's <laughs> not safe for children. That's all right. That's fine. I was just thinking about my morning routine. My morning routine is him in my face like this, Daddy. I'm like, there's no rollover routine going on here. It's like, I need porridge. You don't even get the chance. Yeah. How many kids have you got, Darren? Three. Three boys. Three? So. Oh, God. How many does your wife have? <laughs> three as far as I know. But... I don't know. More of it's DNA. DNA. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, He's like, what did I get into here? Your hair. <laughs> I'm being I'm being dragged out of the room, so I, I better run. Nice chat. Oh, oh. Darren, nice to have you. <laughs> yeah, nice to be It's like, what did I sign up for then? So, yeah. Jesus. No, it's about next time. <laughs> good good exit, Darren. Good exit. That was clever. <laughs> yeah. There's like, there's like yeah. fake children on the side. <laughs> That's a really great article that Darren put out. Not that he doesn't always put out great articles, but Darren put out a really great article about changing his business model. And oh. something that is really worth watching, uh, really worth reading, that um, that he went from from one way of doing business to another. And it was just, it was beautiful because it was really open. It was really honest. And he mentions money without being gauche. And I just thought it was really, really wonderful. Nice. Okay. Props nice. to Darren. I do like Darren. He does <laughs> pro blogger events as well. I haven't actually been to one, but um, it's on my list of things to do because they're in Australia, so I can go to it. Is that why you a podcast to? listener. He's a podcaster too, which I'm loving his podcast. You got to come next year, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Adrian, do you want to put your podcast go. in the, can you put your oh. podcast in the um, thingy so people can follow you and your Facebook group as well would be amazing. Yeah. You know, I'll just put the link for, um, the podcast is called The School of Self Mastery. And I'll put the link for that. And then... The link for the group. I have a Facebook group, which is uh, sort of awesome, not as awesome as bronze, but you know, we can't win them all. <laughs> we can't always be like me, except for me. I am an Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm out of here. I gotta go, gotta go, gotta go.
Have a great like day. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Lila. Lila, I always say your name wrong, I think. Sarah, <laughs> I would love to have you on, but I need to get Lisa Carpenter in as well. So if Lisa Carpenter's here, because it's her slot um, at 12.30. Who else do you need to get in? I'll pop out. I'll pop well, out. Lisa, I don't mind. Lisa Carpenter. I just, I got brave. You just got <laughs> here, Lila. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Right, so Lisa's like, I'm like moderating shit. I'm like, yeah, no, not you. <laughs> you. Bronwyn, get out. You're being really annoying. Listen, All right, I'm out. Good night. You're Good out. Night. Bye. Good night. Martini, chin, chin, cheers. Oh, did you notice oh behind me? Like, there's alcohol and a juicer. <laughs> <laughs> that is a balanced life right there. I this like it. Kitchen. This is my kitchen. This is how I, I work. like it. It's my morning routine. I've drunk all my alcohol. I have none left. I have to replenish my oh, uh, trolley. I always get dressed Thank up you. for you guys. I know. Thanks for making such an effort. Jesus. <laughs> that, okay. I know. Like, I, I was like, you said my name, and I was like, my name? What? My name? Say my name. Um, Say my name. I'm That's pink, my, and this is also God. pink. This is my pylon top. It's the color of a pylon. What's a right? pylon? Know, like a traffic cone. What the hell do they call oh, them? No, they them? don't call them that. Yeah. <laughs> no, we call them a traffic cone. Pylon. Pylon on top of each other. Oh, Sarah, <laughs> I'm, I'm back on with like you. I know. Housing. Is it true that if I, I drink I, ice water with lemon, it will flush out the Your the No, frosting? but it's good for you, right? What Water won't hurt you. <laughs> Here I am in my living room. That wasn't the answer. Everybody well, knows that lemon melts fat cells. It's, everyone knows that. Yeah, I mean that's really when you buy my program, buy my stuff. That's what I talk yeah. about. Just drink lemon water, oh, and it'll be shit. one and done. Eat chocolate, drink yeah. lemon water. You're one and done. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> um, I'm sitting here trying to write my email that has to be in the queue tomorrow morning because people like Bronwyn are a full day ahead of me. Mm -hmm. So when I start, yeah, like when I started my, my 10 days of you challenge, I didn't, yeah, like the ninth is, anyways, live and learn, live and, I should have said to them, you guys are a day behind, but instead being nice, I'm like, oh yeah, the ninth is the ninth. No, no, to do it on my schedule anyway. So I got the fancy hair on for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. You like it? I like it. Yeah. Like man. Oh. It's yeah. Yeah. real life, real life and action here. Yeah. You pin it on like onions? Oh, it, and then and it's like not real bold. <laughs> what were we going to talk about? Like if we can get back onto our agenda now, it's 12.30 and we're right on time. So it makes me look really super organized. We're going to, um, I wrote this for you, Lisa. We don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Oh, now I've lost her. Mm -hmm. Audio only. She's still video. She's still there in audio. Oh. I wrote rewriting for you to talk about rewriting the rules of diet, health, and happiness for I'm empire still, builders. I'm, bringing that I'm, back to a tenuous link back to business because, um, as entrepreneurs starting out, most of us don't take care of ourselves and we grab the quickest crap that you can eat, um, and that doesn't do us any good in the long term. Lisa, have we lost you totally? What's happening? Re Refresh your screen, yo. Hey, hey, Lisa. Yep. She's going. The she pressure can. got too much and she flaked out on the side. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Come back, come back. Who else have we got on here? Oh, my thing's not working. Come on, oh, Blair. Hi, Deb. Yeah. We'll see if Lisa can come back in. Hey, newbie Jenny. Let me follow your ass. Um, <laughs> my thing's not working either. I think I might be kicked off soon. I don't know. It's not don't, there. don't leave me. Um, <laughs> so maybe Lisa's really, that's what he said. <laughs> um, <laughs> move over, Oprah. Okay, just bear with us, callers, while we sort out this little technical difficulty. What? Maybe Lila wants to talk since she just got on. What do you got? I have giggles. 
Um, they're really unassuming giggles. You think that you're laughing, and the next thing you know, you had an epiphany. So, hey, look, Lisa's back. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. I like giggles for epiphanies. That could be like, um, you could do that as a course. I could do that as a course, how giggles lead yeah. to epiphanies. Yeah, mm -hmm. you need to Ron, laugh you in yoga. I way more often than we do. I need your brain. <laughs> <laughs> I have mommy brain still, so yeah. Do you? Yeah. For sure. <laughs> I like how you've done your letterings now. Letterings, good England. Yeah, I redid it right, so you can actually read it. Nice, yeah. nice. I like it. But well, now oh. I'm crunched down because my head is too tall. So I'm like. <laughs> This yeah. like the guy on Home Improvement, the neighbor. Oh. It, it, it never showed his. Well, I don't know that show, Bronwyn, but the show TV show over here where. Uh, what is but, it? Oh, home it's, Improvement. Home improvement. Well, oh, yeah, we've got Home Improvement. Yeah, so he never shows his face. Wilson. Yeah, Wilson. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I am right now, Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Deb Lisa, um, is a loser time. with no friends on Twitter, and she'd like people to be her friend. So. If you can find Deb in the menu up the top, just slip by, you can put your cursor, mouse thingy. Yeah, you can click on it. it. Click on her and the then chat. be her friend, please, because she is a loser. Yeah. Don't feel bad, Don't feel bad Deb. I it's got happened you, to all of us. Deb. We all had to start somewhere. Hey, Bron. Um, yeah, Bron, what was your question for Lisa again? Um, I thought Blab followers automatic auto automatically added to my new Twitter, and I don't think they do. I don't know. No, Maybe. I don't think I they follow do. you, Deb. See if I'm following you on Twitter now. I just follow yeah, I, don't know what's, I don't know what's happening with Lisa. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. But I tell us know. more while, while we're sorting that out um, and Blab's catching up. Tell us more about your giggles for epiphanies there. Um, giggles for epiphanies. So what yeah. happens is I love to facilitate powerful conversations. So we'll start talking about... Anything. We start talking about shoes, and the next thing you know, you're like, oh my God, that's why I have daddy issues. I don't really know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> it just works. So, it just works. Yeah, I haven't figured out how to bottle it yet, but I'm working on it. Yeah, I'd sell that next to your essential oils. It will be amazing. Yeah, you can and I for that too. Lemongrass and giggles. It just lemon works. Lemongrass and giggles. <laughs> There's an essential oil for everything. There really is. There, there are some essential oils for entrepreneurs. Oh, tell us you about this oil. oil. Yeah. If you, <laughs> you need essential to, oil, I just smell like money, and it. Comes. Oh, this we is have what I've one got. called abundance. What I've do you? Got infinite abundance. Infinite and abundance. This, yeah, See? I just shower in this shit basically, and you spray it on you, and Absolutely. it's. Um, <laughs> Manifest and receive on all levels, and it's got Australian bush flower, lang lang, mm -hmm. rosewood, grapefruit, quartz and citrine crystals, high vibrational water, and sacred geometry. That oh. might have something to do with why you end up crying, bro. Um, why end up crying? Where? You lang, you lang. It's a horm It's a hormone balancing oil. Oh, is so. it? I love it. It's my favorite. Yeah. Hi, Lisa. Can you guys actually see me now? We can see you and hear you. Okay. Yeah, we see you. Okay. And Are you serenading us? No, I make up for you going missing. No, who's playing music? That's not me. Who's that music coming from? <laughs> it could be me, like from the TV. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, it's probably me. The okay. TV is playing music because, um, yeah, I had to put my headphones in because of all the swearing because the baby's in the room now. So <laughs> I don't think that would be good. And I don't want to give her night oil because I'm not. I'm not <laughs> give her what? Night nurse? No, night oil. Um, night oil. Yeah, Tanya. So if you had some yeah. peace and calming, you could slather it on her feet and she'd be out like light. Oh, that'd be nice. All right. Well, I should go because or a she's pot really or something. She's tired and it's not right. I got I, I gotta bail now. Even though I clamored to get back in, I gotta bail. Well, it was nice having you back in for a short amount of time. Yeah, maybe somebody else can jump back in. Deb's back. Maybe she wants to jump in. Yeah, Bye. Deb might want to.
Nyquil is awesome. Yeah, I'd, vodka, whiskey, whatever works to get kids off to sleep. Just do whatever works, you know. Um, who else wants to jump in the hot seat now? And then we're going to talk about we're going to talk about what are we talking stuff about? that Lisa wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you decide because it's all about. Okay. I I, I always I always wait before we start chatting. I have to go too. There's a man on his way to um, spend time with me. So. <laughs> Check you. Bye, it was wonderful chatting bye. with you, Brad. It was beautiful seeing your face, Lisa. Bye. 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 Put some of that lang lang on for your sexy time. Enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kim. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, Kim. How are you? How are you? Good. How are you? I love it. <laughs> I love getting Chinese food delivered. I think that's a euphemism. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Here you're loud and clear. It's amazing. I have Good headphones, open but I have three children and everybody's home, so you just never know what's going to happen. It might end up in California. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Hi. 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 So, um, yeah. Welcome. <laughs> I love this. Like, this is that. not vodka, by the way. It's water. I'm being good tonight. You, this is oh, oh hello, Robert Stern. Nice to see you, Mr. Stern. <laughs> wow, we've got Robert Stern in the house, ladies. I was watching him the other day, actually. He <coughs> owned Periscope there for a he while, didn't he? He owned Periscope, and now I think yeah. he's over oh, he is coming in. Okay. Yeah, he's in here. Come on in. All oh, right. I thought I was coming in. Robert, have you got, have you got strawberry water? <laughs> Strawberry water? Oh, that sounds delicious. Welcome yeah. to the blab of crazy. Well, Lisa, anything yeah. that's got your name on it, I wouldn't expect anything less. Right. <laughs> right. We we've gone crazy together. And then you we you know you went on your trip and I'm back. I know, and I love what you're doing on your page, by the way. And I'm in I'm in I've another on the page. Have you? Oh, that's what? right. It's pretty crazy in there. So I think I Ron wanted me to the, um uh, thing the other day too. Yeah, it's just it's it's nuts. So I think Bron actually wanted me to talk about self care while um, launching, and since Robert never sleeps, yeah, you're everywhere <laughs> all the time. You're like, He's like a vampire. I'm like, hey, dude, can you get some sleep? It's not. I do. I, I actually, I'm I'm part of triplets. So we take eight hours uh, awake. There's three of us. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> I said I used to tell everybody I'm part of a triplet. Yeah, oh. <laughs> and we each take eight hours. Right? So this way, there's one of us always on, and everybody's like, "Don't you ever sleep?" Totally. No, we don't sleep. How did your Periscope Summit go? Has it gone? Next Has week. it happened? Next it's next week. week. Is Periscope oh. Summit. Wow! And I'll be, I, you know I'll what? Be scoping from it. Okay, I haven't seen you on Periscope as much lately. We were just talking about the difference yeah, between blabber. Periscope and Blab. <laughs> I'm 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 down to about one or two times a day on scope where I used to be seven or eight. Yeah. Uh, wow. But I'm Why hosting a Blab every day. Okay. Cool. Um, I also am doing a meerkat every day. Oh, look at you diversifying. Yes. You, what, you, you, you must have, have a schedule. One. You because, must have a schedule. Because <laughs> I have a strategic organizational <laughs> skill put together about organizing myself. And I I'm have a calendar. I'm, I'm, ready, calendar. I'm ready for that. You know what? I actually asked my VA the other day. I'm like, okay, let's write out some sort of timeline and i handed over a bunch of stuff because i just can't keep up with you? all of it i know right i've been forcing you to do this for four I months i know <laughs> yeah i know i know and now I it's do. clicking going you know something you know what here's you need to do it yeah the last time i did my launch i literally like had to just kind of do it as i went and this time in the middle of my launch i am a lot more um yeah, I'm a lot more organized, but that's kind of how I learn. And I've had to just be okay with the fact that I learn by doing. And then once I figure out what works and what doesn't work, then I, you know, then I'm like, okay, I'm ready to progress now. Um, I just, I can't force my resistance to disappear when it's there for a reason. So <laughs> I knew I'd get there. You're still on my, you're still on my radar. So don't worry, I'll be back. Oh, and we're, I, we're I, I, and I knew you, still. I know. And I know you've had a gazillion things going on as well. Right. So. Oh, I'm. Uh, I don't know if you had heard about the tour we're doing. A Periscope tour. Periscope no. Tour. No. Like a, a, like a world life? tour. Like a U.S. tour. Oh, I'm in Canada, man. Well, Canada, Canada will be on next summer. I know where you are. I, I, I'll, I'll come. 
Um, actually, <laughs> we are here. What am I coming to? Well, you know, <laughs> Vin, you, do you know <laughs> Vincenzo Landino? No. Okay, he's he's in social media space too, and okay, we te I, he teamed up with me, and we are going on a twenty-five plus city tour in eight months. Wow, are you and going to Arizona? Doing, yes. Yay! Scottsdale okay. in Tucson. I'm in Tucson. We already have it scheduled. Yay! Uh, okay, fact, so it's going to be me. Um, it's going to be me, Vincenzo, Dave Shrine. Awesome. And one other, I forgot who it was that'll be speaking at that one. It's a small. It's the rubbish one. <laughs> it's a social media for small business um, summit. It's called. And okay, well, put, put the info, the type in your info so we can all, yeah, it, it was kind of, it was a last minute jump, like Brahman called my name and I was like, oh shit. And then I had to run upstairs <laughs> and I had to hardwire in and now I'm watching the battery drain and I was going to yell at my kids oh. and I thought that might be inappropriate. And then I remembered that this is Bronwyn's blob and <laughs> anything goes. <laughs> Anything so goes, yell away. I'm lying That's on the, the link. Phone. It's got all 25 cities with info buttons in each awesome. one of them. Awesome, okay. Um, it's, it's a five and a half hour um, summit each time with lunch, and it's only $99. Woo! Sweet. When yeah. is it in Tucson? When are you here? Do you uh, know? Hold on, I'll pull the link up. <laughs> I mean, I, I, can, I can do the link. I'm Tucson just is January 12th. Impatient. January 12th. Oh, I'll be, I think I get back from Costa Rica the next day. I want to go to Costa Rica. Come, come to Costa Rica. Everybody, it come to Costa Rica. Amazing. You're going to have to then fly on uh, January 25th or 26th. Although you're all over the place, right? So yeah, that's because that thing. 20, January 25th and 26th, we're going to be at the Orange County in San Diego. Oh, yeah. I, I drive there. I, I go that way in my car, so. Yeah. In awesome. fact, that one we got Mitch Jackson's going to be speaking at. Sweet, yeah, I need to attend one. I can maybe I can bring like a Tucson posse that's going to Costa Rica. We can all go to California. Definitely, it's, it, that's the whole thing. Um, it's it's going to be travel, fun. Travel. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of people along the way that are that have joined in. Uh, Amy Schmidt Towers joined us on a few. I, I, I mean, you go down the list, and it's like you know. Towns galore. I mean, sweet Detroit, oh, Houston, man. Austin, Scottsdale, Tucson, Orange County, San Diego, Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, West Palm, St. Louis, Kansas City. Wow, a lot. Cincinnati, a lot Louisville. I mean, just down the whole list, and we're just starting to add more cities on the back end. Okay, amazing. So sounds well, yeah. good. So if anyone wants to have a look at that, then follow that linky dink, and, and it'll help. It, and it'll help you grow your business. Stuff. That's right. Yeah, we all we need that. that. In your yeah, mind, I like that title, but you know, Lisa's kind of on the fence, depending on her. You know, situation. we've all lost our minds. That was. Oh that my was god! Look at that. We got, we got chocolate Johnny in the Johnny. Johnny. Wow. And somebody wrote Australia. Yes, I will be in Australia. I'm going in May. You're going to Australia, and you're not coming to Canada. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, going right? to Australia because I'm going to um, go to Periscope Summit in Australia. Oh, wow. Look which is that. in May of 2016. Hey, so go, Bron. Falls out of favor. What happens if you don't like Periscope by then? If, like, Blab becomes your new favorite main squeeze and then you're like, <laughs> they're completely Periscope different. So they're completely yeah? different. Yeah, the, the, I think they are too. I really like Scope me still. On the on, me on the community. And I'll give the I'll give the analogy. Periscope is like a yeah. transportation device. It's like on the go. You can take yeah. it on the go. It's your traveling way of doing things. Lisa does hers outside by the lake, by where she that special place where she likes to think. I forgot the name of it. <laughs> the bathroom. The river. <laughs> Down by the river. You have that area. River. Yeah. Down by the river. I do remember things. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you know, you it's, know. A, it's a great place. Like go go going to events, showing things. Yeah, Lab is like the destination. You're yeah. there. It's for us to yeah. talk about the journey there. I agree. That's how I look at the tool. Yeah. For for me and my business, Periscope, a, a lot of the women that I'm connecting with, there's no way they're getting on screen. Like they're just not there yet. I mean, it took me yeah. years to get visible. And that's where these women are at. You know, they're 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 not ready to be visible, but they're quite comfortable getting on Periscope and communicating with me that way. So I like Blab to talk about business, connect with colleagues um, and other entrepreneurs, but not as much 
I would, I actually, after doing that blab last night, as, as fun as it was, I don't think I would do it again with my clients. I think I would rather, you know. <laughs> but you could come <laughs> on here and do a health discussion. In I would. I would. That's what I mean. Did this have anything to do with it? Was that's... it part of the reason why you weren't doing it? Did I miss yeah. something last night? Oh, my God. I did. I did a blab for my business, and it ended up for my challenge. And I ended up in here with Bronwyn and Sarah and Lisa Sharp. And it was just, oh, my God, it was funny. It was, it was funny. And as I was driving to my event afterwards, I'm like, oh, please, God, did I not record? I hope that that blab is not just flying. It was crazy. It was awesome. I yeah, totally it needed was, it. I it needed to crazy. laugh. I needed to laugh and have fun. <laughs> it wasn't for your business. So that's the thing. Yeah, I didn't realize that it was what you were doing. And I came on and cleared the room. <laughs> no, by then, by then I already. Lisa, you connected. didn't put it on the record. No. Oh. I totally, you know what? I totally forgot to record it. It was great, though. I, it was awesome. My girlfriend's texting me, are you coming? I'm like, yes, I'm coming, because I was supposed to be I'm somewhere busy. else. Yeah. yeah, I did ruin Lisa's okay, party. Hey, it was Robert, good. can you tell me if um, about these labs? I'm so I'm recording this. I'm just going to go okay. get my card. I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm recording this, and this is going for, like, ages. So how does that work? Um, You're going to get an email back. Code? You're going to oh, yeah. get about 20 minutes to a half hour after it's over. You're going to get an email back. In the email, it has three things. Within a week, it's going to have four things. But right now, it only has three things. Yep. The first thing is it's going to have two download buttons. One is going to say download for your video, and it will download it to your computer as an MP4. Okay. Okay. Then it's also going to have a download button next to it for just the audio, an MP3. So if you do a oh, podcast and you want to grab snippets or edit it or something else, you'll be able to just get the audio stripped out and just have an audio one. Cool. The third thing you're going to get is, what, what is this? Changing? At least I have to do the same thing. I got to get my cord. It's like a switcheroo. <laughs> Go get your cords, everybody. Like I, thought, I thought she did a wardrobe change, too. <laughs> I just took <laughs> off the pylon. I just took off the pylon. My... Uh... So you get the MP4 is the video. You get the MP3 is the audio. That's automatically yeah. sent to you. But you also get an embedded code that you can put on your website of a, a pre-recorded blab. Oh, brilliant. So you could so take this blab that you could now take it about a certain thing and put it on your website. Excellent. Oh, that's cool. So if you did something with a bunch of colleagues that was good quality content, not that this isn't good quality content. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. <laughs> but it's cool. like I that. also wanted to let you know, you see the little thing in the lower left-hand side that's got the little sounds? It looks like a sound button. Everybody, Every box yeah. has one. Oh, yeah. You can mute those people for, that you don't have to listen to them. So as Lisa makes those kind of <laughs> remarks like I just did, I can't hear a word. I can't hear her giggling. I can't hear anything she's saying right now. Oh, so awesome. you can read out the one that you want to mute. Oh, that's brilliant. It is brilliant. <laughs> I, I brought you back. I just but missed the whole the thing. There's on the lower left hand of the box, you see the little sound symbol? Yeah. You can also, you guys anybody. can't see that. Oh. So, so I could, we can I could, all. So anybody can mute anybody. Yes. Like if so, I didn't want to hear you. Oh. So if I'm that. talking, you can't yeah. hear me if you muted oh. me. Oh, wow. Control. Okay, I see that too. Now. That's cool. Bronwyn's got the ultimate control. Of course. I think she's people off, eh? You see the little X that's <laughs> and that's up how there? she likes it. Oh, do you guys not get the X? Oh. I only have the X for me oh. to leave. You have <laughs> four <laughs> Ah, oh, excellent. So when Lisa starts to mouth off and say the wrong stuff, you know how she could oh, be. Stuck. I feel like Simon Cow now. I'm just going to pull my pants up a bit high. I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're off. You're done. <laughs> you're gone, bitches. Oh, my God. That's awesome. It's, it's the oh. X Factor. Oh, Welcome I have the X Factor. Like that. So now they're Sorry. going to be adding an extra thing very soon to the download when you record. When you record the MP, to get the, the MP4 back, it's just the video, you don't get the comments. Yeah, oh, okay. They're going to be adding a description, a transcription of all the comments already oh, wow. set up for you. Oh, wow, that's cool too. That's cool. 
you're going to get four things soon that are going to be doing that. Oh, yeah, actually, that's yeah, a good thing. Retrofit Austin just said, does the mute affect the end result? Like the exported downloadable blab at the end is not affected by anyone muting anyone else, only by muting oneself. The self. only one that it might do is if um, Bron does it. Oh, Me okay. muting Kim for whatever reason, I would never do that to her because I would only do it to Lisa. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've missed you. I've okay. missed you too. You turned me on to Zoom. I did get you on to Zoom. I know. Are you using it for webinars too? Yeah. Or, yeah, I, you are. I pay my 49 a month. I paid ever since oh, yeah. I, I you, you introduced me to it. I've introduced a lot of people to Zoom. I should you, be on You need an affiliate link. I know. You need an affiliate so, link. So if I, I was to mute her for Austin's thing, I don't think it affects because that's not Bron doing it. Ah. Uh. I think if you were to mute somebody, it might affect your recording. I just result. don't know. Because it's your blab. It's not ours. Yeah. Excellent. I love learning new things. This I, I did try Periscope. I even did a 30-day challenge Periscope in my Moxie Entrepreneur Facebook group and did about 10 days and didn't do all of it. So I decided I'm not going to do any more 30-day challenges. I think I did like them. five. I, yeah. I tried that too. I was like, eh, not so much. Yeah, and yeah. I've done I've done a lot. And my numbers keep growing now, so I just I do. I, I just need to, to do it. it. It's like everything else. Yeah. Screw it and do it, you know? Yeah. Quit thinking about it. Yeah, I started I just out with like it. small the numbers, and now, and now it's much bigger numbers. I've it's stopped the challenge. I'm going for the money now. Yeah, <laughs> Ross said, um, my 30 I see that, the 30-day challenges. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I love that. No more challenges. 30 days is a long time. I mean, I, I'm in like a 10 day one right now and I didn't quite make it to day seven. And I was like, man, it's still going. Like I saw day eight and I'm like, ah, yes, oh, I think I need to stick to like the five day, five days good for yeah. me where it's like doable and I can be engaged. And then maybe someday I'll do a 10, seven, 30, yeah, but yeah. for now, five is good. Yeah, I feel like everybody else is so busy. Right well, that's the thing. I'm in the middle of a 10 day right now, and uh, it's going really well. But me it's personally, going amazingly well. I I would have been like at about seven. I'm like, okay, I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm getting tired. It's a lot. It's the it the is. It gets a lot. I am so um, loving the guys coming in right now. They're sitting there going, "What the hell did Rob fall into? We've got three gorgeous women about him." <laughs> I was like, I don't think Rob <laughs> or any you know. of those other guys. I got this blab. <laughs> you know what we've been watching some of the guys do blabs and they've been like real snooze fest so we thought as Boring Moxie, we make we it an amazing we would hop on and just party yeah. just but you still invited me on i noticed yeah i know yeah. well you well, were you're, you're special on. yeah Aww. now Br <laughs> Br where are you calling in from because i know where lisa is so melbourne australia you're down there and kim yeah tucson we went through okay. this, remember? Oh, that's right, Tucson, that's right. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. so we're but no, I could do Scottsdale too, by the way. I was thinking, I'll have to look at the calendar, but I'm close to Phoenix. It's like an hour and a half. Go the Aussies. Aussie, Aussie, yeah, Aussie. but the problem I'm really, is, I'm, Aussie. I'm a Kiwi, but it's it's before. Tucson is the day after Scottsdale, so you're not oh, that Oh, shit. Yet. So, yeah, I, I'd rather be in Costa they, Rica. They all do no Monday and then Tuesday, and then we take a two-week okay. break, and then I do a Monday and a Tuesday. So... California yeah, is fired about like three months ago. I started looking into doing something. It started with one city, then it went to three, and then it turned into 25. Wow. So I'm going to be on the That's road crazy. a lot. I'll be scoping. I'll be Snapchatting. I'll be doing it Are you it bringing all. your daughter and with you, or what are you, what are you doing with Not on those trips, but I am bringing her to Arizona. I mean, I'm to such a, a nosy now. Like, what about your kids? I just, I'm following you now, so you'll have to do the same so I can know what's happening, too. Well, I'm already following you for some reason. Oh, right here. cool. <laughs> I'm following all I'm of you. I'm easy to already. follow. Are you? <laughs> okay, so let's talk about let's talk about some sort of healthy Moxie. stuff. Oh, yeah. you want me to talk about self care? Okay. Yeah. How so, how do you? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll I'll talk about I'll talk about my my experience because first of all, I don't generally work with entrepreneurs because they take crappy care of themselves. Yes, we do. Okay, so I am in, you know, I'm running my own 10 day challenge right now. That's all about helping women reconnect with their bodies and change their relationship with food. And 
I had to be very uh, specific with myself around what my self-care boundaries were going to be in this because it can be all consuming, right? Like I have 3,300 women signed up for it. The Facebook group is close to 1,500 now and I could lose myself to my business over these 10 days. So I have really had to set boundaries around how much time I'll spend in my Facebook group commenting. I've had to learn to just let go that I can't be everything and do everything. I make sure that all my fridge is stocked with healthy foods so I don't have to think about it. It's not fancy, but it's kind of grab and go because I'm busy. Yeah. Making sure I'm getting into bed at a reasonable time because Facebook is like, just five more minutes, just five more minutes. And it's the group is so engaged. I have to unplug and I have to give myself at least an hour off before I go to bed. Otherwise, I don't sleep well. I'm not a great meditator. So I was talking about my ear injury because I was sleeping with my headphones in. <laughs> So I can just listen to something that kind of winds me down at the end of the night. Um, and I was actually thinking that, you know, oh, maybe I'll start trying yoga now when my challenge is done because uh, I need more like calming things in my life. So self-care can be whatever you want it to be for you in your business, but you have to know the things that you love to do that make you feel happy, that make you feel grounded that you know you're taking care of yourself because you can lose yourself in your business so easily, especially if you're a passionate entrepreneur and you love what you do. So, you know, I have to get outside every day. Like that's just a non-option, non, yeah, not, op not optional for me. Mm -hmm. And I have to get in yeah, some form of exercise, but you know, right now is not going to the gym and have an intensive workout because I already have so much stress going on. And what people don't understand is, Although exercise helps you manage your stress, it also elevates your stress levels in your body if you do too much. So if you're doing too much so as a woman, we have to balance out like our adrenals are stressed out, strung out. And I've done that. I've done the whole, you know, work till you drop around the clock, you know, earlier in the morning and late at night. So Adrian was on earlier talking about the miracle morning which is great. If you're going to get up earlier, like I personally like mornings, everybody's asleep. I get the house to myself. I can work out, but that doesn't mean I get to burn the candle late at night. I have to yeah. go to bed earlier. And what women tend to do is miracle morning. Oh my God, I get two extra hours and they don't go to bed any earlier. And, uh, you know, I think another big one is asking for help. So during this launch, my family knows like, I need your help. So how can you pitch in? Like, Pick up your shit. <laughs> Pick up your shit. Stay out of my way. If you see this look on my face, just move. Um, <laughs> Don't know, talk asking, to me. Yeah, like and, asking. And sometimes for help. I cause that look on her face. Right? Early on. Yeah. Asking for help, and I have had to learn in my business to, you know, one of the things I teach is helping women learn how to ask for help, and it's not a sign of um, weakness. It's actually it's a much more powerful stance to ask for help getting help with my launch. So what am I not really good at? And what can I pass off? What do I want to learn to do? What stuff do I love to do? What stuff don't I love to do? Um, and this time a lot more organized because it actually is making it easier for me. So how, you know, is, it, how is it better when we were talking that first time? Was it June? Oh my God. Yeah. Way we back. Did the, we did the 10 day challenge in June when I was working oh with God. you then. Yeah. And then doing it now what do you see a difference in you also had a question somebody just asked i saw her in there a little while ago thompson she wanted to know what's your open rate on your emails yeah i was talking challenge. about uh they're up over 50 percent okay so the, i just wanted to make sure awesome. that she got her that but yeah what they do you see the difference of what you learned that first 10-day challenge that you did in june when i was working with you a little bit and now your 10-day challenge now the first time I did it, I only, I shouldn't say only, but it was a much smaller size. Uh, so it was kind of like dipping my toe in because I really did most of it myself. There was way too much, um, like I had to learn how to structure it all. So I really had to build it out as I went. Whereas now this time I invested a lot more money to find my people and, uh, 
I had, I have to be a lot more organized. I have to be at least a day ahead of the game. Now I was saying I'm almost like two days ahead of the game. So there's still things that I'm doing as I go, but because the templates of the emails were already built out, I'm not writing them from scratch. Whereas I was writing them from scratch last time because I was doing it inspired in the moment. Mm -hmm. This time I stuck to the same game plan. I go in, I revise the emails based on what I see going on in the group. Um, but the, the structure of the challenge is already set up. So I've made it a lot easier for myself. But she's totally. also seeing the organization we discussed in the first time. It doesn't have to be a week out, but it's just that having a little bit of organization makes a big difference. It does. But you know, I've also, like I said, I honor the fact that I learn by doing. So for me mm -hmm. to actually try and say, okay, I'm going to write seven days of emails before I even launch this thing. That like, that's like asking me to I don't know, I'm with my eyes closed. I can't, I can't, my brain doesn't work that way. And I used to really beat myself up for not being able to do it that way. And, you know, part of my entrepreneurial journey has been getting in my own lane and not beating myself up for the shit that I'm not good at. Let myself learn the way I need to learn and know that I'm constantly going to be growing and changing. So this launch is really big for me. The next one will be, you know, it'll get every time it gets easier but I don't help myself when I beat myself up for things that I can't do or thinking I should be able to do in another way. So I learn to do things when I appreciate their value, right? Like I never, I was never good in math at school because I didn't really appreciate what I needed all that stuff for. Now numbers are really important in my business. I want to understand how they work. So it's just, yeah, when things are applicable to what I'm doing, it's much easier for me to move forward. Yeah, that makes sense. Anybody, right? yeah. So I think one thing that you said, Lisa, that I, I would love to, you know, just kind of say like my two cents, whatever. Um, you know how you said self-care, right? It's like so important. It's one of the things that I teach as well. And I think it really does come down to that personalized, right? Like I call it intuitive self-care because for me to tell somebody like go for a run, if they're not a runner, they, they're they going to be like, hell no, I'm not going for a run. You know, I'm like, exactly. you just, it has to be like having that conversation. Like you're in a place where your intuition is telling you it's time to chill out a little bit. I think I want to try yoga. I need to, you yeah. know, do different. And I, I almost tell people the word meditate or meditating or meditation. Don't even use that word. You know, it's like I do, you know, guided visualizations for people and um, body talk throughs and walks it. Like I just call it something else, but it's almost like when our head is fighting it from can I, sorry, what can you're I interrupt, to sorry, be doing. Just super quick. Can I interrupt? Howard, mm -hmm. oh, Howard Stern, Robert. <laughs> 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 can I kick you off? Because I've got to get Naomi in here because I'm trying to kick to my schedule of people. After so. calling me Howard, yeah, you can kick me off. <laughs> are, are you, <laughs> yay. <laughs> All right, uh, Lisa, we, we still got to finish up, so we'll talk yeah. another time. Howard Stern, here we go. I remember that, Bron. Don't worry. I will remember that. That's awesome. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks for coming on. Bye, Robert. Bye. Bye, Howard. Yeah, you know, self, that was actually the, what what day am I on in my I'm challenge? In um, that was what it was today was getting everybody to think about what things do you love to do? What lights you up? Yes. What makes you feel really good and having them come up with their own list that they can. And I said, like, write it out, post it somewhere. So when you feel like crap, you can look at your list and say, oh yeah, I love to color. I need to go color. Oh, I like to walk the dog. Mm -hmm. I need to go do that. It is so individualized. So it's, it's not what anybody else, very much like business, right? Who gives a shit what anybody else is right. doing? Figure out what works for you. Stay in your own lane. Don't judge yes. it against anybody else or measure it against anybody else. And yeah, just, it's all about, and I think feel some good, of it yes is that no. idea, like you said, it's like, who cares what everybody else is doing, right? Because it really is your own self. It's called self care, not somebody else care. And yeah. so it's like, do what you want to do, but also who cares if, like, I think there's an, a, an ongoing kind of misconception that if what someone's doing self care or taking care of themselves or what I, you know, work a lot on is loving themselves. Yeah. Um, they're spending hours a day in the bathtub and they're out by the river meditating and they're, you know, I don't even know. Like I just think picture people picture these amazingly hour long, you know, caring sessions. And it's like, that's such bullshit. Like I do yeah. maybe five minutes at a time because 
Yeah. I have three kids. I'm running a company. I have, you know, a house to take care of. Unfortunately, right now I want to like get the house cleaner. <laughs> That'll happen. But you know, it's like, you got, you got to fit it in and it is, it's intuitive and it's what works for you. There is no one size self care fits all. No, yeah, it's exactly. about, it's about figuring out what works for you and making it mandatory, a little bit mandatory every day. It's the consistency, yes. it's everything, right? Like just get consistent about something. I don't give a shit what it is, mm -hmm. but get consistent with something so you, you can support yourself because, right. you know, I say self-care isn't, isn't selfish. It's, it's the foundation of your self-worth. It's, it, it's showing yourself that you matter in your own life and in your own business. And if you're not willing to matter right. in your own life, how do you expect to make a difference in someone else's life? How do you expect to show up and be the best woman for your family or, you know, the, the man you want to meet or whatever it is, right? It, it all yeah. comes back to self. Kim, you and I are like, I know. Yeah. Well, and it's well, funny because well, well, one well, time well, you, well. you said something one time and I saw that self-care isn't selfish. And I had this, like, I used to do this talk, right? And it was like, self-care isn't selfish. It's necessary. Yeah. And so when I saw you, said, I'm like, what? Like this lady has my brain. And then, you know, now it's more like the self-love because yeah. really when you're caring for yourself, that's what you're doing is that's showing right. yourself love. And it comes back to Absolutely. being worthy and deserving. And so now my whole, you know, kind of focus is, similar, but it's like self-love isn't overrated. It's a necessity. You have to love yourself first or eventually. And I know some people have a hard time with this, but eventually things will fall apart. Yeah. And like you said, entrepreneurs are the worst. And it's funny because I yeah. actually work with them, but it's a little bit different, you know? So, yeah. um, and that's the thing, you know, like it's, everybody is going to find their way to self-care eventually because you fall apart eventually. Like that's the end. Yeah, right. So, you know, I'd love to say that, oh, I work with these women that have had this enlightened moment. Usually shit hits the fan and right. it's like, I'm depressed. I can't get out of bed. I hate my life. Like, I feel like things crap. are, yeah, things are shit before they decide to pick it up. And right. even with me, like I've always been big on self-care and, and taking care of myself, but I still wasn't seeing what I wasn't seeing. I was working long hours. I burned myself out. You know, I'm chasing around kids and busy life and all that kind of stuff. And I'm still um, unraveling the consequences of that. So that's part of why I'm so right. so passionate about it, right? I'd, I'd prefer women not hit that point before they make a change. But the reality is that, that that's, there always has to be a catalyst for change. There always has to be that where you get to that place where it just yeah. sucks so badly. You're like, okay, what do I need to do? I'll yeah, do it's it. the whole pleasure that's, and time, isn't the, it? Right? It's the unfortunate thing, honestly, because when you think about the whole concept of, I mean, life, you know, if you want to get deep, whatever, but you're here to live, right. You're not here to struggle and suffer and hustle and, you know, make as much money as you can while you completely fall apart in the meantime and have your family not know who you are and not even recognize yourself in the mirror. And it's like, aren't you here to, to live? I mean, that's really what you're here for, whether it's touching lives or, you know, whatever, but if you're not taking care of you, then how the hell are you living? You're not living. You're just, no going exactly. through the motions or, you know, unfortunately pushing yourself so hard that like you said, something eventually Absolutely. does end up happening usually, or it's that epiphany, like, Oh shit, I'm having a heart attack. Well, I guess I should do something about it now. Exactly. Like, you know, like yeah. it's not funny, but it is like very ironic that that's the, you know, the way that it has to almost become before somebody's like, Oh yeah, I should probably take care of me. Yeah. And yeah. that's, if you don't you know, know that the whispers of your body, it'll scream at you. Totally. And that, you know, that's why I wanted to do this launch so differently. My back I, I, you know, I, wa I want to be able to come back and show other entrepreneurs that it doesn't have to be this strung out, stressed out thing. So, you know, yeah. I'm not going to say that it's been like, you know, sunshine and roses and fairy glitter every day. It hasn't. Like, why? Hey, I know, right? I've run the gamut oh, of emotion. Shit. I've run the gamut of emotions and I'm still in it. Like it asked me in an hour and I might be in a puddle of tears again. However, I am very, very mindful that I need to be paying attention to how I'm treating myself through the whole process and so not be, you know, if I'm in tears, I don't need to beat myself up over that. And right. Like I said, making sure yeah. I'm going to bed and making sure I'm taking care of myself. I went to see my Reiki lady today and she made like weird noises over me and waves shit over me. And, <laughs> That's and I was like, this is awesome, man. I love this. Bring it. I don't know what you're doing, but I love it. Reiki's beautiful. You know I love Reiki. It was so funny. She said to me, she's like, you know, you 
<laughs> so she like she totally scolded me my reiki lady she's like you need to make sure that you're grounding yourself properly and she talked about you know bubbles and put myself in the she told me to put myself in a gold mirror ball which really spoke to me i'm all about the gold yeah. wearing disco <laughs> hat can I, yeah can I, have, can I wear my stilettos too uh -huh. um, but she was talking <laughs> whatever about works that, right right whatever works she was talking about how i have to be mindful and this is what i wasn't prepared for was the energy of all these women, all these women who are not feeling great about themselves, they're coming through the screen at me. And so here yeah. I am, you know, taking care of myself and I hadn't realized the impact that I was gonna have on them or they were gonna have on me energetically. So it's still a learning as I go. So she's like, so we like took 300 pounds of energy off of you, Lisa, how are you feeling? I'm like, right, yeah. Yeah. A little raw right now. I think I need to go home, lie down and have some water. Right, yeah, <laughs> let the shift crazy. process. It was crazy. So still learning as I go. Yeah. And it's, it's really important. I think, you know, whether you're an energy person or not to really shield yourself, you have to create those shields. That's what I call them. Yeah. It's like this energetic shield where it's okay to be there and hold that space for people. Cause that's really what you're doing, whether you are an energy person or not, you know, you're holding space for them to transform and shift and their stuff to come up and them, you know, to, like you said, it's like, you're getting all of their stuff. And so if you have that shield for you, it, it really does help energetically not take it in. It's like it, I also, also picture like, a, I don't know if you call it, it's like a bubble, you know, shield yeah. bubble, whatever you want to call it. But it's like these things kind of, it's like a permeable thing where it comes at you and then it just bounces away. You know, it's like, it doesn't have to attach to you. It doesn't have to go within it. Just, if you just create intentionally this bubble, it's amazing how your energy can just be a little more protected. Yeah. And that's, that's what she was talking to me about. So I'm really, yeah. Like I'm even more curious about that now because well, once you yeah. feel something impact you, it's kind of like, it's oh, that it's wake up call again. Right. Yeah. I, told, I totally believe in energy. Like I said, it just hadn't really crossed my mind that this was all going to be, I really didn't. Well, I think you kind of picture like, right. You're doing the challenge and you're putting all this info out, right. And letting people interact, but we almost feel separate, you know, like you're behind a screen, you're over yeah. here doing this, but again, it is all connected, you know? Absolutely. So, well, and especially yeah. I think if you're putting your fully putting yourself into it, of course that Absolutely. energy is going to be there with yeah. screen mm -hmm. or no screen, because you're opening yourself up to give fully. So if you're opened up to give fully, of course, that's going to come back in. Um, I love the fact, Kim, I'm not, I'm not a huge um, picture of bubble kind of person, which is funny since I'm a visual, but I'm, <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I'm also very tactile. So I keep, I do more rituals that are actual physical. Like I've got my medicine bag that my husband made mm -hmm. um, and he always makes me a grounding tea. If I'm going to have to be in a group where nice. there's a, a bunch of energy, super simple too. It's rose hips, chamomile and sage. Oh, that's um, cool. And it just, for me, it helps. I'm an extrovert, but if I've got all this energy, totally understand what you're saying, Lisa. It's just like, Oh my God. I now, if I got on the scale, I'm sure it would weigh, you know, say I weigh 500 pounds yeah. plus from all of that stuff. Yeah. Totally. But yeah, we totally feel it. And I think that's what, you know, almost like a misconception that energy is just there and it's no. not, it's not real. And it's like, well, really that's what we are if you want to get down to it. But again, you feel it like, just like anything good energy, you feel it when you have those thoughts that, you know, memories of this amazing beach time you had or whatever it is, you know, and you literally fall into that moment and you feel it and you're like uplifted instantly. Same thing with taking on other energy. You feel it. It's heavy. So, oh, I love what Ross put. The only energy I think of is when my kids leave the lights on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a lot of lights in us too. So, <laughs> I can't Just believe can't I'm lying it. on the floor. Oh my God. Blab is so informal. I love it. I know. I'm like right. sitting in my bedroom. Like, cause I'm like, so, if I'm out there, right. it's total Hi, chaos Kim. with the children. They're all awake. And How old are your kids, Kim? Um, 13, 10 and six. Okay. I got about 15, 13 and four. Oh, awesome. Crazy, right? Yeah. Crazy. It's yeah. It's, it's oh, life boys? is never boring. So, boys and girls are a mix. Two, two boys are older and my girl is my, she's my fairy, my little princess. Oh, I didn't get a girl. I, you know, I even switched hubbies and I still got another boy. <gasps> Dang it. No, I, <laughs> it's like, my, one of my friends is actually having her fourth boy. Wow. And I just, when she gave me the call, I was like, oh my God, like she was crying. She's just like, 
I just want to be happy, but I just can't be happy. <laughs> I'm like, I wouldn't be happy either. I'm like, no. can you t take it back, transform it into a female? <laughs> we, uh, we found out the sex of my third. I needed to know because I didn't want to like burst into tears and be disappointed at the hospital. So I needed oh. to be like a climate. Yes, you're having a boy. And I was like, okay. <laughs> well, because when my second one was born, I was sure he was a girl. And when See, he came that, out, Oh, that was my second one too. Right? And, and I was up the nurse yeah. and I'm like, you need to check it. I looked at her. I'm what like, you thing? need to check again. <laughs> oh, right. No, my midwife check even, again. because we, I wouldn't find out either. And my midwife brought pink blankets and hat. I mean, she thought he was going to be a girl too. We were convinced this baby was going to be a girl. Right. And he came out a boy and we were like, shit. Like, you know, you're, but it was, he's amazing. He's, yeah. he's my sage and that's his name. And he's literally like a wise man in this body of, just such heart. And so for my girl, I had to find out because I was like, I don't want to go through that again where right. I, yeah, I'm worried and thought. think, oh, I'm having a girl. And then I'm like, shit. So, okay. So did somebody say that you're running a, a yoga retreat or you've got a retreat or something coming up? Can you Yeah, talk my about big that? retreat is, um, it's in Costa Rica. It's in oh. January. So it's the very first week of January. So the idea is that you kind of come in with all of your shit from the year before and um there's myself and there's like do what we leave our shit in costa rica it's a good place to leave it yeah it transforms right? it falls into the earth and the ocean and oh poof there God. it grows beautiful trees but it. um no it's just the whole idea is wrapped around um bliss so it's this bliss goddess retreat it's just for women so um sorry guys that are on here but it is um it's just, it's going to be amazing because every day there's practices that are really focused on um, self-care, self-love, body image. Um, like I had a horrible growing upness of, you know, horrible self-esteem, bad confidence, just hated my body, hated myself, ended up sabotaging myself for like 20 years. So I've been on a healing path for a long time. And so when I take these women, they don't have to have, you know, issues, but we all have secret all pain, issues. you know, like something inside that's either, you know, from childhood or whatever. And so the idea is that you come and you're in, first of all, paradise. I mean, there's like freaking monkeys, you know, flying around the, it, it, they really are. Well, not flying monkeys. But <laughs> I think you're probably selling it a bit. Thick, um. <laughs> Wait a minute. Not flying monkeys. But they are over your head, you know, jumping from tree to tree. Uh, and at first you're freaked. Uh, have you guys ever been there? No. Okay. Because there's these howler monkeys and they sound like this like gigantic bear lion thing. They're like, Ooh, I can't even do it. But anyway, they have this crazy noise. I, I'm not trying it again. You Google it, okay? Howler monkeys. And so they're, they sound enormous. And then you look up and they're just like a monkey, you know? But they're, this is, I don't even know why I'm going into this, but their balls hang down. And it's really kind of <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> That's why you're going into this. I'm there. So go yeah. to Costa Rica and see the monkey balls. Oh but God. no. Um, That's a draw it's card. just you amazing. Like, page. <laughs> How have we not connected before? How have these retreats come up? It's like, I cannot wait to get there because I really love holding space for people. Cause I, well, when I'm there, I teach yoga every day cause I'm a yoga instructor. I do e energy healing sessions for the group, sometimes private cause I'm a Reiki master and just love a it. lot of like work, you know, that it's like fun for them. And for me it's work, but it's also so beautiful to watch these women come in, like literally this one person and they leave just like, hundred pounds lighter and they might not look like it, maybe a few because you're just eating amazing food too. But, um, it's just, it's awesome. And it, it becomes this like connection, you know? And I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of women, they don't realize that's going to happen. They kind of come in like, okay, this is for me and I'm going to do this retreat. And then they like become friends with everybody. And it's just, it's powerful. It's really awesome. Crazy. It's cool to watch. That's what I'm seeing. Um, kind of come alive in my group and it's pretty amazing to stand back and watch people don't understand the power of connection for healing connection. right yeah. yeah yep well yeah. okay yeah, it's, well, it's exciting i have to hop off because i have to write this email <laughs> yes do your homework <laughs> and then and then i've got to get off the computer i've got to get it queued off and off the computer by nine so i can have at least an hour oh, yeah. down time I'm gonna 
Let me put the link in because I don't know. Yeah, put the link in for your retreat. Yeah. Does this I'm eating banana bread. Sorry, I've been on here for hours, so I need to eat. My <laughs> blood sugar was going and I was just starting to get all shaky and weird. How long, have you, how long have you been live for now? Mm. Three and a half Four hours. hours. Oh, my gosh. Four, four hours? <laughs> are four you and a half. Is this like, are we trying to break? Is there a wor Guinness World Record for, for um, black? Not yet, oh, but we'll make it today. No. But I saw people, Red Warrior needs food badly. <laughs> um, <laughs> there were people on the weekend doing 48-hour marathons. And by the end of it, though, they weren't saying anything. And then the girl was, like, sleeping. And I was just like, what are you doing? Weirdo. Go, but the weirdest thing, the oh weirdest thing was that I sat there watching them for a little bit. And I was just like, who's watching this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, me. Oh, my God. Crazy, crazy. Well, thanks for hosting it, Bronwyn. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Naomi. We should connect yeah. as well because I think we've got lots in common. So it's kind of cool to, yeah. Thanks for being here, people. Lisa. Yeah, I've started stalking yeah. you, Lisa. So are you guys stalking me? <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yay, cool. hey, Kimmy. You've got. You should be in my. You should be in my Facebook group and seeing what's going on in the challenge. But should totally shit. in your real house. Shit. No, I'm just kidding. Should a <laughs> shit. Should a shit. <laughs> Check it out. When people tell me to do things. I want to. I know. Them. Unless you're like me, in which case I like don't watch what anybody else is doing because it can totally just throw me. It could send me into that place of ah. yeah. No, we'll we'll connect. Yeah, you just connect. find me. I mean, we're, I will we're find we you. run in the same circles per se online. Yes, I'm going to be in my gold disco ball inside my gold <laughs> in your stilettos <laughs> in my stilettos inside yes. my gold I'll bubble. Sleep in it. Pop pet. I, love, I love Reiki. It's my new It's pretty amazing. It was awesome. I was actually worried for her today. I'm like, are you going to be okay? Are you going to be okay? I'm like, she knows how to shield love. herself. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to caretake you here, but it sounds like there's like bad shit coming out of me. Are you okay? <laughs> Big black cloud. <laughs> Talk about uh, howler monkeys. I think she was making noises kind of like that. I, you but, know, I, I'm not known to do that yet, but you never know. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe later. Is that normal for Reiki healers? Like all the kind of like. You know, like I've heard the craziest stuff. Like I, I don't do anything weird. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I should. But um, I knew that this late, this one lady that she's a massage slash Reiki person that she would burp, and she told people ahead of time oh, so they. No, I do that. I've I've been to healers and they burp a lot. And when you're processing, I've sat burping as well. And well, and for you, but see, I've seen out. it with the person getting it done, but I haven't really been around someone that is working with like, you. That's it. So I think everybody, like, I really create these things that I throw energy to. You know what I mean? So that for me, it, it's I just fling it. It's and it goes in these little angel buckets. So I don't burp. Maybe yeah. I'm missing something there. <laughs> yeah, so. it was. It was. I was. I was seriously like, "Wow, this is this is this is bad shit going down right now." now. I have <laughs> had like the, I guess, kind of like the yawn, you know. And it's not a yawn, but it's you do it's like, energy, it's kind of got, like an open mouth exhale where I have to like, you yeah. know. But yeah. but I do a right, lot. Little fella, you are gone, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> who did you? Who did you kick out? The same guy you kicked off yesterday. Oh, little fella. Oh no, he's oh. not. I don't know how to kick little him off. Fella? I'm, I'm I, don't know how, I don't know how to do anything. How do, you guys little are fella, my, tell me, how do I kick you off? <laughs> you're my leader. <laughs> how do I kick you off? I don't know. He likes gingers, so though. Maybe he's like, he's in yeah. here. He saw I don't you. Know. He I don't know anything there. about this. I couldn't even so figure out how to get on, and it's because all of us were full. So I'm sitting there Facebook messaging Braun, like, I think it's my time, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Welcome to the party. <laughs> okay, well, somebody yeah. else can hop on and uh, have fun with that. Oh, Millie's cool. in here. Um, and Naomi, we're talking about eating for Millie. energy as well, or we're freestyling whatever we want to talk about. We'll bring Naomi in a little bit. We're freestyling, right? Freestyle. Freestyle. Bye, lady. Um, Bye, Lisa. Free. <laughs> and I've got Melly and, well, Christine Tremolay was going to talk to us. Christine named Facebook. No, she didn't. She named um, WordPress. Christine named WordPress. Yeah, thank you. The banana bread hasn't hit I'll my be brain the other brain for you. Brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my brain says, I was all like really, wah, before and now I'm just a bit like, get me banana bread. Um, so do you need me to hop off, Bron? 
No, I don't. Okay. I need to kick that guy off because now he's insulting me. Scary woman, you won't go far. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, he wrote black. How do I fucking delete him? How do you? Yeah. Um, if anyone can tell me how to delete little fella, then just tell me. You can't. Little Look shit. at us. We're all new blabbers. We're like, I don't know. Uh, but I'm, I've got some white head. out. <laughs> he's, you know what? There's a little thing. And now it's like I'm favoriting him. Now he's he's saying, I've got code. Face your demons. <laughs> oh, let's not give him any more attention. But it's go. just really annoying me that I can't delete him. Because I'm sure somebody deleted him yesterday. Um, anyway. I don't know how to do that. Him. Yeah. So how's um, banana bread and your energy doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting better. I'm getting the feisty back. <laughs> You're not hangry anymore? Right. No, but that's what I started getting. Like, I started getting all shaky and shit, and I was just like, all right, well, that's no good. Mm -mm. A little um, spacey. I saw, I saw Sarah's note to you asking you if you were starting to, to kind of come down a little bit, and you did have kind of this little <laughs> bit of a blank look on your face. <laughs> like, so, which isn't, isn't typically you, you know? So, exactly. Yeah. Melly, do you want to come in? Melly, you can you can join the party if you like. Yay, yeah, Melly! Yay! I love her painting. Yay. Love really? her work. So yeah, I know that you and I talked a little bit about the whole food thing, and I found it really interesting. Some of what Lisa was saying too. Hey, Melly! Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> that she Melly. purposely doesn't work with entrepreneurs. And for me, that's one of the things it's like, I'm big, you know, give me some Sharpies, a little bit of glitter maybe. And I'm going to make a picket sign because I really don't think that as entrepreneurs, we have to have this whole, I'm burned out. My adrenals are shot to hell, et cetera, et cetera. But like Kim was saying, you have to be connected. I spent two months this summer taking care of um, kind of playing Mary Poppins to my best friends kids and when i got back i got sick for like five days and i purposely while i was there carved out time for myself because i knew that that was going to be more draining kim i'm guessing that you would probably agree that when you raise them from when they're babies you kind of get accustomed to who they are and how they are versus if you're thrown into a situation where suddenly you've got yeah. kids that you're taking care of so I carved out that time and I got back and my husband did some, um, this is probably going to sound naughty to somebody like Ross over there, but um, <laughs> my husband did some body work on me and he's like, well, your adrenals are burned out. You kind of taxed them a little bit. And I'm like, but I was taking care of myself. And I think that's, um, for me, that's one of the big things. And Kim, I know you and I talked a little bit about that too, is is really having to stay connected, not just from here up and what's going on in our business, but from here down and what we're taking in, how does that help serve our business? How does that help? Because what you put in your mouth, it's gonna impact what comes out of your mouth. Yeah, and it's it all comes again back to that. It's not just self-care as in that big hours a day. It's like really taking time to love yourself and honor yourself and when there are things that are from the past, heal yourself. And I think that's why I'm so big on doing what I do. I don't just do like, um, you know, I'm not a wellness coach or a health coach. It's more like a transformation coach with a healer mix and, and also, you know, figuring out where, where are these things coming from? Because we all have thought patterns, right. That either tell us, well, I don't really need to do that because it doesn't really matter right now when really we know in our heart and our soul that that's what we are. We are, you know, supposed to be taken care of. Um, right. So again, it always comes back to that, like honoring yourself, you know, when you honor yourself and your energy, energy is everything. So when your energy is in alignment and you're also aligned with your relationships in your life and your boundaries and all of, you know, the, what you're allowing, and then you're also really showing yourself love and also not just yourself, but you know, when you are around those positive people in your life, um, it has such an impact. You know, I think there's a lot of people that they are in a certain place where they, they want to do good and, and feel good and, and make things happen, but they're around a lot of negativity, negativity and negative people. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like, you really have to like be picky. And I know Bron, you've went through it. We've all went through this where 
eventually you just have to say, I'm done. Like I can't have your energy around me anymore because yeah. I'm in a new place. You know, I need to be there for me and take care of me. And, um, it's just, it's crucial. It's not like, again, wait till something happens to start taking care of you or showing yourself love, but actually showing yourself love on a daily basis and getting out of your head, you know, because yeah. that's yeah. probably like most of our 90% of the problem is, you, you know, everybody's up here. Do you have bugs? Yeah. But that's the thing, we're in our heads more than we are grounded and in our bodies, and I think we forget that sometimes, and I used to go to a healer, and she'd be like, you're just in your head, you've got all your stories, and everything's staying in there, and just get out of it. Yeah. You got to do it. Screw it and do it. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm free. laughs> but, you know, I think it's like, you know, we have to have – we're all where, um, and I think Lisa was talking about asking for help. Like we all need to ask for help sometimes, you know, and especially I think trying to be like super women where you are like taking care of kids and running a business and whatever it is, it's hard to be all these roles and take care of you. But again, you have to put you at the, the forefront because how are you going to be there for clients or, you know, family or friends or whatever, if you're just completely, you know, in adrenal fatigue and can't move. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yeah. There's that part of you that starts to slowly or maybe not so slowly die and not just the, the adrenals and the actual physical organ shut down, but just that, that part of you that you're not nurturing because you're so busy taking care of everything and everyone else. Right. I talked about that today on um, Periscope. That it's that whole, and what you were saying, selfish is different than self-centered. And we have to be really connected with what that self is and honor. You used that word and it's a perfect word for it. I think Kim honoring the self, honoring what's going on, honoring what it is that's in our heart. It's not just, it's funny. People will say, well, you're a health coach, so you're going to make me eat kale. Well, no, because frankly, I don't give a shit if you eat kale or not. Right. <laughs> you know, if you like it's not kale, one size fits eat. all. No, if you like kale, fabulous. If you're not sure, try it. And then if you hate it, great. I'm not going to force you to eat kale because I don't care about that. I care about are you doing what's going to honor you? And so much of it is that whole, are you honoring in here? Are you honoring the self? Mm -hmm. And part of that's, yes, the physical, but more of it is really just where we're at. And like you're saying, Bron, if it's all up in here, and I get that way a lot, total detail up in my head, up in my noggin. And I had a fabulous call. Those of you who are on here, I had a fabulous call with Kim. Um, God, it's been, what, almost three weeks ago, I think now? Yeah. Or two, yeah. And she's just really, really brilliant. And I think I've actually had a call with all of you now that I'm like, hey, we've all, <laughs> hey. we've all, done, you've all done my thing. <laughs> And it was awesome. And, and as a coach, it's like part of me was like, oh, my gosh, you know, here I am feeling completely disconnected again after getting back from, you know, crazy kid land. But <laughs> I think children. we are. God bless them. They're really awesome, awesome children. But oh, my God, I own plants. But it, it's just really great to have that space, somebody outside of you who's holding up that mirror, who's saying, OK, let's come back to center. And so, Kim, I just, I want to say thanks, first of all, for that. that oh, you're so welcome. Rock. So if you haven't followed her, go do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If people are new, no. you can click on people's names and follow them. And it's a nice thing to do. Yeah, I, I love what I do. And I think that it's, it's necessary. Again, it comes back to that. Like, it's not just like you said, oh, go eat kale and be healthy. It's like, and even with Melly, it's like when we are really connected to who we are, like take away all of that, what you look like, what you're doing in your business, who you're like, take all of those layers, being, even being a mom, take it all away. And you really go into who you are. You are energy. You are love. You are a part of God of, you know, a creation. You are, um, you know, passion and movement and, and flow. And it's like creativity, all these things. And we just, I swear, we just like, we shut it down. You know, we're like, I'm too busy. I, just have, I have to shut everything down and it just doesn't serve us. And that's when we start feeling disconnected and sometimes getting sick and mm -hmm. not knowing what to do. And again, a lot of past stuff comes up and that's when you really start getting in your head because you start believing. Um, it's funny. I was, have you guys heard the ego term of like edge got out? The ego is where you edge got oh, yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, which I think is really 
really true, right? Your ego is that part of like self and me and, and it wants to suffer and, and be attached and all these things. And really when you let go of the ego, there's God, right? It's your, your spirit, your energy, whatever you want to call it. You're connected with your highest self or the divine. But for me, I've been thinking ego in terms of it's like end gossip once and for all. Like for me, that's what the ego is. It's like that little annoying freaking my, I had this, I did this, get the bitch out of your head challenge. And mine was Betty. And she just like bitches. And she's just like mean and ugly and just horrible. And she just gossips and you hear it and you listen to it. You're like, God, that's like, you know, my butt's too big. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do this. I don't. And you just hear all this crap. And when you let go of that whole ego thing and just go within and whatever practices there are with me, it's a little bit of meditation. I'm not the best meditator, even though I teach it. It's like, I have to have my own visualization. You know, I do goddess readings. I do uh, writing like uh, automatic writing. I listen to guides. I, you know, do all this other stuff, but it's like, when you have that happening, you're reconnected, you know? And I think Melly is a huge one to talk about that creativity coming out too. It's like, that's connection, you know, it's like, whether it's dancing or moving or meditating or I don't know, I guess, uh, that expression. Can, yeah. It's, it's an expression of heart and soul. And, and sometimes we need help, you know, it's hard to know why all this old stuff is playing in our head when, we're just like, wait, that's connected to that from 20 some yeah. years ago. And this is why I believe this. Whoa. <laughs> and then, and then it while you're it. get rid of it. Yeah, definitely. Well, and especially on, online when we're, you know, trying to start our businesses, trying to make authentic connections. Sometimes it's hard to tell. I mean, I think at an energetic level, we can tell who's authentic and who's not, but with all of the noise going on and you need this and you need to do this and you need to create oh my gosh. that and I'm doing this. So you should too. Like it's, it can be hard to come down out of the ego because the mind just starts swirling and like, Oh God, what do I do next? Where do I go? Where am I falling short? You know, as opposed to just bringing it inside and, yeah. you know, taking action once you do get recentered. But I find myself caught up in the fray and I can't, I can't spend too much time on Facebook, honestly, anymore, because I just get so overwhelmed. And then I start yeah. reading through threads and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not doing that. And I'm not doing that. And I'm not doing that. And like, and it is that it's like a distraction and a disconnection. Like, how much are you on Facebook and just connecting inside and feeling your passion or living and doing what you love? It's like you're just looking at everybody else's shit and you're just falling for, again, the shoulds and, and the, you know, like. Oh, this person did that. Oh my God, I'm not as good as I should be. Or, you know, the comparing thing. And it's like, get back again to yourself and that self, you know, love. And it's, I think it's that self love word can be overrated and it's, it's not really overrated. It's, it's true and it's real. And we all need to take care of ourselves. Yeah. When things get reflected. We always get told, you know, there's the reflection that when we're not loving ourselves, that's when we get, you know, the negative feedback from outside of ourselves. So it's always, you know. Yeah. And I think some people think it's like vain, you know, like showing yourself love or saying that you love yourself. There's like something wrong with it. And it's like, why, you know, like it's so indulgent or something. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I had a friend post recently and, and something her son had done, um, which was, it, it was a really amazing accomplishment. And secretly, I hope she's not on here. Um, her, <laughs> her son had all these medals that he had run from all these, all, won from all these different races and like both arms just covered. And it wasn't a ha ha, look at me. It was just honoring the work he put into achieving that. And she's like, I know I, it's, it's bad to brag. And it's like bragging is you're being an asshole about your accomplishment. Right. Yeah. It's like you're not being a jerk about this. You're just saying, I'm so proud of my son. So it's like, where does that come from? Now, I happen to know her background and I know that it's, I know what it's rooted in for her. And I, but I think sometimes it's cultural. Sometimes it can be, I know for my own background, it was my religious upbringing because you, that's vain, that vanity piece. You can't have that in there. And I think it comes from different places, but how can we then toot our own horn without, it, it's that intention behind it. Am I trying to be, belittling right. to you or am I just celebrating who I am because isn't that what it's about yeah actually um Pino PR just said in the comments excessive ego is to self-love what greed is to success and money both are the point of too much that it becomes a negative and that's yeah. so true it's yeah. so true I love that yeah yeah very good quote 
Yeah. Did you just make that up? That's pretty good. I love when yeah, you just like, like, like Wow, like, yeah. everybody gets quiet. We're like processing. Ooh, taking that in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go and yell at my dog because it's barking in the backyard. It's kind of going to Was that you? <laughs> well, and I think and one of the will start too. We'll have a whole chorus of them. I think Kimmy. I know we will. What you were starting to say too, and I know I've found it when you you guys are talking about being online and and how much more disconnecting that is. Melly, you might be able to speak about this a little bit because I find I'm an extrovert, so. Like this, I'm digging the whole blab thing. Cause it's like, oh my God, we get to interact. Yay. Yeah, right. Periscope, it's like <laughs> I might as well stand and look at the painting on my wall and talk at it. Or, you know, type it type, type, type on Facebook. Gosh, there's no comments. Okay, let me type it type, type, type some more. Shit, still no right. comments. Type it type, type. Fuck, no goddamn <laughs> comments. But this is an interaction. <laughs> and, and then it's like, oh, and then go write your email. And now I've got two newsletters to write. And oh, there's two articles due by Friday and all this stuff. And all of a sudden it's like, go be creative and paint well fuck that there's, there's no creativity left so my question this is where i think melly you stepping in is is beautiful how do you keep tapping into that creativity and i think some of it is the avoid the burnout on the other end mm -hmm. but then how do you cultivate how do you personally cultivate that i think the i mean the biggest thing really is giving yourself permission and um, I mean, it sounds so simple, but it's so hard because of all the shoulds and all the things, you know, that can be on the list. Um, but I know, like, I'm a big fan of Hillary's work um, with Epona Rise in Canada. And, and I just really resonate with the way she talks about, you know, you don't have to have a big email list. Like, you don't have to have regular newsletters. You don't have to update your blog regularly. It's all what you feel inspired to do at any given time. And another teacher that I've had has said, um, you know, you kind of make a list of all the possible things that you could do. And then moment by moment, you evaluate them based on fascination level. Like which one am I most drawn to? Which one would give me the most joy right mm -hmm. now? Don't worry about deadline. Like, don't worry about, you know, <laughs> all this kind of stuff. And I found, and it's hard, it's hard to start implementing, but I have found that as I let myself start implementing that and start doing the things that bring me joy first, other things start to flow in without me having to micromanage them. Like when I'm in my most creative state, when I just let myself sit and like, I'm a big, um, like I'm always learning. So I'm always like, I've got like a yoga training going now. I'm doing like great learning Reiki. I'm learning this. I'm learning this. And so when I just let myself learn and then stop in pain and walk the dogs, then out of the blue, I'll get like three calls from people who are like, oh, I want you to do my branding or, oh, hey, would you design this for me? Or, oh, hey, I'd like to join your Oracle course. And so it's hard because it's the whole um, detaching from outcome thing, which I have a hard time with because I'm like, but I have, I'm supposed to achieve these things and there's a certain amount you know, of money that I need and things like that. But when I give myself permission to do the things that really feed me first, like out of the blue, somebody will call me or out of the blue, like tonight. I mean, all I did today, literally, I did a Periscope live painting. Um, I started making these little cards. Oh, I should show you guys these little cards. So I'm doing this um, inspirational card swap. So I started drawing these little raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> so I drew raccoons Aww. all day <laughs> and I painted all day. And then out of the blue, I got an email tonight and somebody's like, hey, I want to hire you for my logo design. When can we get started? And I'm like, I did nothing today that was lead generating, that was like official business stuff. Um, but I got myself into that flow and I gave myself permission to get into that flow. And for me, it's for me, it's painting or art or something like that. Um, there are some people who and I, I mean, I like movement, but I'm more of a hiker yoga person than like a hardcore I used to play a hardcore competitive rugby and you guys were talking about um, frying your adrenals. I put myself into stage three adrenal exhaustion. Mm. So, um, I'm no longer like, I don't know, high intensity exercise person, but for some people it's movement. Um, for me, it's painting. If you find that thing that um, gets you into that flow state, um, then you'll find that if you just let yourself get absorbed by that state, other things will start to happen. So it's, it's so rough. you it's you totally hit the nail on the head, Melly. I mean, it's you know, I think what you're really talking about is alignment. You know what I mean? When we are 
in that flow, your vibration is high. And, and it's right. funny to me, I see, especially in the online world, and I don't know, I mean, we're all online, but for other people that are business people, like when you're in the online world, again, it's all that, like, it, it's massive, right? The amount of stuff happening and challenges and this and that, and it's just like, go, 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 go. And when you step away, and you just allow it's again, it's that living in the flow, letting your vibration open, allowing things to happen, tapping into your creativity, you know, like that whole vibrational aspect of it is what's so beautiful because when you take that time to decompress, de-stress, whatever, care for yourself, whatever you want to call it, you, you are in the flow and it starts attracting energy to you. That's good. Instead of like pushing it, it's like that idea of the, the old, like I think Chinese proverb where it's like, you're in the river and you're going for the leaf and, and you're pushing it more forward, right? You're just like pushing, yeah. pushing, pushing, but I got to do this. I'm so, it's so busy. I, I can't stop. The other ladies are online and it's like, you're just pushing it away. But when you like go around and just get in front of it and allow it to come to you, then you're like, Oh, that was really easy. You know, yeah. I feel like Leaving everybody needs that easy button. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our vibration needs, you know, I, 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 I don't know how people can't live somewhere where they can be in nature you know, a lot of the year because it, it, nature is a part of like who we are. And, you know, when you're in nature, it's like instantly reconnecting, instantly lifting and opening your vibration. And um, again, like you said, sometimes it's creativity, sometimes it's movement, sometimes it's whatever, but it is living in that flow. Like you're open and yeah, then it, it just comes definitely. effortlessly. Yeah. yeah. It's just, we need space and we need, Otherwise, and the thing is, like, sometimes I, I'm actually the worst person, like, for just working through. And I never thought I'd ever say that because I've been a bit of a lazy bitch in the past. But I sort stop of it. push myself so much. And, yeah, I get to the point where I'm just like, oh, my God, it's when I stop that wicked stuff happens. And then I think next time I'm going to remember that. And then I sort of like, and it's, it's kind of like a control thing, thinking I'm going to make this happen. And it's just like, I'm just like falling down this wall with scratches and everything. It's just like, just let go yeah. fall, and then come back up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It happened with my Oracle card course too, because I, I tried to launch it back in July and I got no sign up. So I was like, okay, well maybe, yeah, maybe this is kind of a bad course idea. I'll just shelve this. And then in August, I had one person inquire, and they were like, oh, I thought you offered something. So I just on a whim, I put it back out there again, and I had 24 people sign up. So I went I from zero to like 24 people when I had just put it on the shelf because I was like, ah, I don't, I guess it's just not the right time. And out of the That's blue, so cool. you know, it was bam, 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 bam. So it's like when you just let go, and I had this plan for launching it, and nothing happened then I let go of all plans like it was off my radar and all of a sudden you know things fell in so it's it's that funny balance where we you know we need motivation and we have to you know keep moving forward but at the same time we can't get we can't grasp too tightly to anything that we're doing Nine. really Nine. Right. totally Do totally something. requires action of course yeah, yeah. mm-hmm yeah, you can't just sit meditating on a mountain and expect it to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can, Bron. No, <laughs> if you have everything you on automation, you can. No, you have to go to Costa Rica yeah. to Kim's retreat. Yeah, you have to go to Costa Rica yeah. and there. It is amazing, though, when I, you know, see people that allow that to happen, or even when I do sessions with people, like, two weeks later, they're just like, oh, my God, like, all this stuff has been happening, and, you know, now I'm manifesting or whatever, and it's like, you just had to, like, clear out the – the crap and and again give yourself space and time and connection and then it's like it's, I'm gonna it's move beautiful it. uh -oh. Oh, God, i don't know what that is hello bron it was bron i was like wait what's <laughs> happening is that aliens i heard a robot <laughs> uh oh we lost our host is the most is I hope she comes back. I know she will. She'll come back. But yeah, it happened earlier. Yeah, it happens. It's it's flat, you know, right? It's, it's internet. About the um, the, the like letting go too, because even like I've had you know healing sessions and stuff too, and I find myself after the healing session like waiting for something to change. You know, like like all right, I just had my healing session now. <laughs> When, when are things going to start happening? Like, What's going to happen? They're falling from the sky. Like, when am I going to feel amazing? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's always refreshing. And I feel, 
you know, I feel empowered and I feel something changed, but you hear all those stories all the time where people are like, oh, I had a session and then magically like my life fell into place. And I was always like, oh my God, it's hard for me to relax and just let whatever's happening happen. Cause I'm always like, oh, well, where's this, you know, where's the magical transformation? <laughs> right. Um, like overnight instant right. transformation. <laughs> yeah. I think again, it's just, and, and that's the whole other part, right? That being open and allowing however long it takes, you know what I mean? Because we, even as you know, humans, we're shifting. When you have something like energetic happen, it's a shift. And yeah, something happens almost instantly, but you have to also process that. And then things start coming up that you've shifted from. And it's like, and that's one reason, you know, when I work with people for 90 days or whatever it is, you know, some people think, well, I had a session. That was amazing. Why would I need 90 days? But it's because you keep working on things that show up. And then, and then it's like, that's what's so beautiful about the process is it just keeps getting better and better and better. And then they keep having like more tools and more healing and more new things. It's like peeling back those layers, right? Where you're like, oh, this was really fascinating. And then something else shows up and you're like, okay, what do I do with that? You know? So it's always a process. <laughs> oh, do I hear Bron? No, she's not back. Our bra and left the building. Um, nah, we'll hold the fort down. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> we got this. Oh, yes, we will here. connect Real Food Ninja. Yay. Lisa got her email off. Good for her. Yay. It's good to get <laughs> things done. I think, you know, some of that, um, what Braun was saying about, you know, what you were saying, Lynn, when you see this stuff online and and, you know, she was like, I need to do this. And, and you feel like you have to be in that presence all the time. It really comes down to fear, right? Like you're afraid you're going to miss out. Like, what if I miss out on that one great client that was going to see my post today? Or, you know, what if somebody else is doing this and I'm not online right that second and I'm missing out? And it's like, again, when you just let go and allow it to happen, the right people are going to find you when they're supposed to find you, you know? So right. we really got to decompress well, it's the alignment like we you know in um like the manifest now thing and a lot of things say you know you have your to-do list and the universe's to-do list and really <laughs> right. the biggest thing on our to-do list is to stay in alignment is to stay receptive is to get centered so that things can find us because when and we're, we're so time, big on time as humans we're like it's i said in 90 days i would be at this point in my business or whatever. And it's like, why do we put such a strict, you know, constraint on time? Like time is really not real. We're the only ones that make it real. But if you look at the big picture and okay, what if it took nine months instead of 90 days, you're still going to have you and you're still going to be at the core of what you do. And you're still going to have those people that are right. you know, with you. So that's one thing I've had to really work with is that I, I swear it's going to happen by this time. And okay, now I'm going to do this and that's what's going to make it happen. And it's like, again, you can't make it happen. I mean, yeah, you can take action and that's great because we all need to do that. But I'm all about just being open, open to receiving, open to lifting your vibration, open to letting go of those stupid gossip things in your head, whoever, whoever she is. Mine was Betty, but she's gone now. So, <laughs> yeah, I had to give her a name and write. In that challenge we did, it was kind of fun because we wrote eviction notices to our um the inner critic or bully or bitch whatever you want to call her and it was so cool looking you know watching these women go through this challenge and write their their eviction notice of like why they needed to let her go and what they've been listening to for so long that they couldn't even believe you know when you really step away from it and you're like wow i've been letting myself say that to me for that long like that's insane Yeah. And coming back to your own, you know, your own voice, like who, you know, who you are and what you feel versus what, like you think you're supposed to be feeling or what you're feeling because of mm -hmm. external input, you know, is always really huge. Yeah. And I think too, so, I like the whole eviction notice piece that to me, that's, it's such a great visual um, and seems pretty damn final. Um, and I yeah, think it's <laughs> pretty powerful. Yeah. In addition to that, also acknowledging what was what was that 
persona, that voice, that what was that there for? What was because there's a reason it's there. At some point, mm -hmm. it was designed and developed and created by us to protect us from something. And that and that's really what it is. They feel like they're protecting you because mm -hmm. if you do get out of fear mode, you might go be amazing, and then that might just like be too much. <laughs> you know, it's like for whatever reason, there it's the, it, the ego. That's what it really is. It's the ego. Like I need to protect you, but it doesn't really need to protect you. You know. Right. Right. And a lot of times when we've constructed those things, it's like, okay, if that's something I constructed when I was six or when I was 12. Oh, I know. Right. Okay, maybe at 12, I did make that sense. protection, but not yeah. at 47 anymore. Now I can address that. I can acknowledge it for what it, what it gave me, what I learned, what, what it helped me create and allow it to go on its way. Because it's mm -hmm. no longer, you hit a point when it's not serving anymore. I love that exercise, Kim. That's beautiful. I Thank you. I I think that it comes to that letting go of that, um, like stepping outside of it. You know what I mean? Like it, mm -hmm. the same way we do with like a friend. If they tell us they're thinking this or saying that to themselves or what, we'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, what, but when you, you step away from it, instead of being engulfed in it, that's when you can kind of look at it with, oh, that doesn't make sense. Or, wow, that's been going on for however many years. And why am I still believing this? And, you know, all those things that come up when the thoughts are are overtaking you. And I think that's when you have to really step into that self where you take care, you know, to really say, okay, why is this showing up? What you know, where is it coming from? Again, it could be from when you were six years old. So why is it still there now? Like you're not the same person. Right. So it's definitely yeah. letting go, <laughs> you know, I feel like that's like the theme is letting go and taking care. Well, and the more you do, I think the more you can tap into that creativity, which to me, that's always, it's funny. That's Melly. You're one of the first people I always think of just because I've seen so much of your work online and it's absolutely amazing. So the more we can let that go, mm -hmm. what comes yeah. out, what comes out. Yeah, it's really cool. I actually did last night just for, was it last night? Yeah, just for fun. I did a um, uh, an online like intuitive art class and then I put on music. So we were just all kind of, where we were kind of dancing and um, there were two people who joined me. And it was the coolest thing because the prompts were all about getting out of your head and not trying to produce anything specific, like focusing on the marks or focusing on the music and noticing how your body or how your hands wanted to move based on what kind of music was on and just all kinds of different exercises I threw out. And they were amazed at the end of the hour what they had created because uh. there was no agenda. You know, it wasn't like, I'm going to draw a tree and a lake and <laughs> <laughs> you know, a sky. It was like marks and colors and smearing and all kinds of stuff that you wouldn't think wouldn't think would make a pretty picture. But when you take layer after layer and you're just moving with the flow, letting yourself get into that flow and out of your mind. I mean, one of my um, one of the girls who came, women who came, she's actually thinks she's going to end up using what she created last night as the back for her new Oracle deck, which oh, is that's I so mean, cool. You know, because she let herself go and she just created and it's really, it's, it's magical. It is. <laughs> you know, into that state and can let yourself. And I find even the same way with movement. Like I used to be really big into, you know, fitness classes and choreography and all that kind of stuff. And lately it's more, for me, it's just more about moving, like moving intuitively. You know, maybe mm -hmm. I'll do some sun salutations or maybe I'll, spin around or maybe I'll roll around on the floor or maybe I'll, you know, go for a walk. It's more about um, not having that agenda of, Oh, I need to walk for five minutes and then I need to run for two minutes and then I need to rest for three minutes. <laughs> right. And then I have to do 700 squats, followed by two push ups followed by like, that's not part of it anymore. You know, it's all about, um, you know, getting the goals out of it and just moving for the sake of moving, you know, what feels good in your body. Um, you know, what movement patterns do you feel like working on? Um, you know, how do you get back in touch? You know, whether you're doing it, you know, from the perspective of aligning with the chakras and the meridians and all that stuff, or you're just moving because it feels good. You know, some people like to run, some people like to stretch, some people like to, um, 
really when it's that whole follow your fascination thing. When you right. follow what is interesting to you and what feels good to you, that's what you need. It's not about somebody else throwing the prescription on you and right. saying, this is the way to health. This is the way to um, flow. It's finding your own flow. Um, I mean, it really is listening on a moment by moment basis. Were you guys here when Lisa was on, when we were kind of talking about that intuitive self-care? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, it's like that with that whole, you wouldn't tell somebody to go run who's not a runner. Like, why would right. you, you know, you can't expect someone, it's that expectation. Well, I'm supposed to be active. Well, then I guess I better go to the gym for 30 to 60 minutes. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, what is the point? You know, if that's not, if it doesn't resonate with you and it doesn't feel good to you, then why are you going to do it? Because I think some of that actually ends up what I've seen even with my body is making me sick. Like I literally will get like a, like a cold or get sick after I do a super intense workout or something that my body just didn't want to do, you know, or I ha- get an injury. And I, I don't, I've had so many freaking injuries and that it, it does suck when you have, you know, a body that's been injured over and over, but most of those times it's because I wasn't moving how my body really wanted or needed to be moving, you know, or I did something and overdid it and wasn't listening. So, you know, when you're listening to your body and what it needs and you're just moving because it feels good. I mean, that's, I teach yoga, but I don't do one specific, you know, yoga. It's like people are like, what do you teach? And I really, I mean, ideally what I teach is a vinyasa flow because that's what I love because you're moving and flowing and breathing. It's like a dance almost, but some people that's not what they want. Like they want to hold a posture or they want to, you know, do things really slow and breathe really deep. And we do, you know, I'm huge on breathing because that's, I mean, something that you can't live without. Right. So we have to breathe or we're going to die. But, you know, deep breathing can really like tap into that energy and the vibration too. But I think it's huge when you think about moving how your body really wants to move, you know, and everybody it's different. So moving, creating expression, it's like that, all that like throat chakra, right? Where you're like express in a way that's true to me, you know, for me, it's expression through writing, through creating, which Melly, we've talked, I need to do my creation time. <laughs> I'm thinking a schedule would be a good idea, you know, like, so I can put it on a schedule. Um, Cause it is hard for me to just, you know, if I'm taking my time for me and doing other things to say, well, now I'm going to go have creation time. Cause I know that can turn into like three straight hours, you know, mm-hmm. which can be also really beautiful at the same time. So I think a schedule would be good for me. Right. I'm the kind of that same way. If I don't actually have it on the schedule, it may or may not happen. But I find, and I don't know, Melly, you might have a really good um, handy way of dealing with this as well, is sometimes I find if I've got it on the schedule instead of creating when that inspiration hits, sometimes that's when it starts to feel more forced for me. I'm thinking of the painting. Well, of course, my husband, he, I, I have an art degree and he's like, art school ruined you. <laughs> but but when it is forced when it is like that how do you snap out of that how do you recommend the people that you work with how do you recommend that they let that go even if they have to calendar it in because of how they structured their lives I think it's more about I mean even if you have to calendar it in when you let yourself do it you know be be in the moment with it you know it's again it's not like even if you carve out an hour and this is my hour to do it during that hour, you just have to let yourself create. And one of the ways that you can do it is like force yourself to make something ugly. Like at the very beginning, tell yourself, I am going to make the ugliest thing I can possibly make. Cause then you get it out of the way. And then from then on, you don't have to worry about making something, you know, ugly or pretty because you already made something ugly. So, you know, now it's time to just see what flows out. Nice. Um, I know for me, like for me personally, I tend to suggest music for people, like putting on music oh, that yeah. you like, because if you let yourself really get into the music, you'll start to feel, um, you know, that whole like raising your vibration thing. You'll start to feel which way you want to go, what kind of marks you want to make. And it's really about, 
I mean, it really is about letting yourself follow your intuition and taking the agenda out of it. You know, like if you, if you sit down and say, well, I really love doing landscapes. So I'm going to do a landscape. Just don't, I mean, don't make anything in particular. That's why I love abstract so much because it is so pure in my opinion. Um, you know, you're just slapping down color, allowing yourself to develop the layers. Um, this earlier this summer, I actually took Flora Boley's uh, Bloom True e-course, e which was really cool. Um, and the thing that I liked most about it is, you know, she specifically said there is going to be at least one point in the life of your painting when you absolutely hate it. Um, you know, it's like, they call it the ugly teenager stage where you're like, this is hideous. I don't even like, I just want to go throw it away right now. But you just keep letting yourself add more, add more. Um, just add a mark, just throw some color on there, let it dry, you know, add some more. And it's about the process more than it is um, the product. You know, I mean, we hear that a lot. It's the process, not the product. Well, and I think that's that I hadn't really thought about that from a painting standpoint before, because of course, <laughs> Professor Wolfram would not have agreed with that, <laughs> you know, but that's it's just like, oh, <laughs> shit, of course. Why, why wouldn't it be the same thing? But right. there was always this deadline, this need to get it done. And Kim, like you were saying, time, the whole obsession with time that we have um, as a culture. But I may have to actually try, pull out the paints and try that. I like that. The painting is the process, not as the end result. Yeah, it really is. I mean, and I didn't go, you know, I didn't go to art school. Why? I mean, I quit art back in high school because people told me I wasn't an artist. Like I was, I was always a dancer. I was always drawing. People are like, you're not a dancer. You're not an artist. And I believe them. Mm -hmm. And here I am almost 20 years later. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> you know, and people are like, oh my God, I love your stuff. And I'm like, well, wow, I wish I would have heard this, you know, 20 years ago. Um, but that's all part of, I mean, that's all part of my journey. And I feel like why I'm so passionate now about, um, you know, especially with kids, like encouraging them mm -hmm. to do something for the pleasure of it, not because of the outcome. Like with my son, I'm like, yeah, go ahead and paint. I don't care. You know, I don't care what you create, just paint, just create something, just go out and play. Um, you know, because there were so many times in my life when I was specifically told, I mean, one, one instance that's been popping up recently, which I feel I need to start putting in some of my messaging, is I remember very specifically when I was in fourth grade, we had just moved to this tiny town in Kansas, like halfway through the fourth grade year, and um, my teacher pulled me out of the classroom one day, and she specifically told me, like, you are not special. How dare you think mm -hmm. you're special? Because I was just, I, oh, I mean, I was horrible. a smart kid, <laughs> and they had some new, like, gifted program they wanted to try me in, and she was like, you know, I don't want you to let this go to your head. You know, you're no better than anybody else. And she very specifically said, you are not special. And that's what I feel like, like that's part of my messaging. That's why I'm so passionate about everybody is special. Like everybody can paint, everybody can draw. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's what you get out of it. It's the place that it takes you to. It's how it gets you better aligned with, you know, your authentic self. Cause I'm so passionate about, the authentic self and especially like I've been trying to bring that into the whole you know visual branding and graphic design piece because there are so many people and I just want to like beat my head headed against the wall in these Facebook groups where people are like oh I have these 20 horribly generic logos that somebody designed for me which one do you like and I'm like none of them <laughs> because none of them is you you know you're getting something turned out of a little coin machine and it has nothing of your essence in it um, you know, you're special. Your graphics need to reflect that. Your presence needs to reflect that. You need to own that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's why, like, I created this little um, five-part audio series on my website so that I can lead people through getting in touch intuitively with, you know, what visuals come to mind, what fonts come to mind, what colors come to mind, and bringing it all together. Because even if you do it yourself, your essence is going to be reflected in that it's going to be authentic and people are going to feel that. And I think that piece goes missing so much when people say you have to look professional, you have to look a certain way. Um, you know, you're, I mean, everybody now is using a gold, you know, gold texture and the same like script font. It's not about being like everybody else. 
it's being yourself. And when you're creating something from your heart and soul, I mean, it could be a freaking stick figure, but people are going to feel the underlying resonance. They're going to be able to tell that your energy is in that and they're going to be attracted to you. I mean, I'm not even kidding. Well, what's (laughs) funny is I used to have a logo that was a stick figure. (laughs) What I was going to say, Mel, what you're, you know, what shows up for me in my, like the light bulb ding, ding, ding is like that whole why is there an expectation, right? Like the whole like sitting down to paint or sitting down to draw or like, why do we expect that when we do it, you have to have a final thing and it has to look good and it has to be perfect and it should be these colors and why, you know what I mean? Like that's the whole, why does it have to be anything? Why not just let the expectations go all the way out the door and just do, you know? And then it's like, you create whatever comes out and there's no, maybe there's never an end to it. You know what I mean? Maybe it's something you always go back to and and change and whatever you want to do to it. But it's like what you said about that, you know, being afraid to even go do something. Cause what, what if they don't create this masterpiece or whatever, you know, it's like, it's always an expression and an extension of the person. So why does it have to be, you know, perfect? Yeah, well, and there is no perfect except perfect no such for you, thing. you know? And that's what's so perfect is that it is. It's not, and it is. <laughs> right, perfectly imperfect. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Well, and that's what's, I, you know, I've been having so much fun with Periscope, which I was very re- reluctant to join um, because I feel like the more I do it, the easier it is for me to release expectations mm-hmm. um, because I am, you know, I'm painting in front of people and <laughs> I mean, what happens is what happens. You know, if I drip something here, smear something here, if it looks horrible, it looks horrible, but I'm going to keep going. Right. And, um, it's, it's just been really curious to me that the more I do it, the freer I feel. And, I, and I'm noticing in my artwork that my artwork has like a freer quality to it as well. Yeah. Uh, which you would almost think the opposite. You know, you'd think that you would get self-conscious and kind of freeze up. But um, I think especially with Periscope where you can't see the other people, um, you can kind of just forget that they're there (laughs) and, um, you know, just create and realize. um, I think the most important thing for us all to realize is that we never know who we're affecting. We never know who we're inspiring. We never know who we're encouraging. I mean, there could be one person that happens upon my scope, um, you know, three months later on catch or something. And suddenly says, oh my gosh, I just remembered I love to paint and I'm going to paint, you know, and if I've inspired one person through that, even if it wasn't my specific intention to target that one person, I've got paint all over my hands, (laughs) 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 Um, you know, then I've, I've done something, I've contributed something and it served a purpose. Uh Uh-oh, Brown says she's screwed. I'm going to 